can't stop us.
Trilogy fans, we're in for a good one. They ain't ready for you. They ain't ready for you. MW2 is going to be a ridiculous year. It's just been insane. Dallas is hosting the major baby. They ain't ready for you. This is bound to be a spicy series. Let's find out, ladies and gents. I know you say you want it. Now you gotta get a bone in it. Whoa! There is no place to hide. They ain't ready for you. I cannot believe what I am witnessing. And that will be the game. It is over. Welcome to the Call of Duty League Major Number 3 coming to you live from Arlington. It is time for the Optic Texas Major live at the Esports Arena. I couldn't be more excited from what I've heard. Texas knows how to bring the heat and so does Optic. We got a sold out house all four days and I can't wait to get it started. This arena's lit. We also got some things going on next door too that you can get a part of if you're in house. But if you're at home, we do appreciate you and we love you for joining us. I'm Taylor Reflection Snowball. I'm going to be filling in for the legend Puckett. He got some things going on. He had to be the best man at his best friend's wedding. You can't hate on that, but hey, he's going to be on the beach having a good time. And I'm sure he's going to be keeping up with the major action. But of course, I have the usual crew. I've got Ton over here joining us from the casting desk. Alley Cat as well as Nameless. Nameless, great to be here with you, baby. How you feeling? Hey, man. First of all, welcome. This is going to be a crazy tournament. We've been talking about it this entire time. So many different contenders, but this is Arlington. This is Texas. And Optic won the last major here. They're looking to defend their title, and the energy in here is going to be insane, Taylor. Alley, the energy insane. It's going to be incredible. And uh, were you here last year for this yes, major? Yes, I was here last year for this major. I was here when we had kickoff as well in this crowd brings it like no other. That's right, Ton. Great to have you. I know you had a long travel day, but you're looking bright eye and bushy tail, man. It's going to be a wonderful day. I'm feeling good. <laughs> I might need to get hooked up to something to get me through the weekend, but I'm feeling good about today. <laughs> the crowd will give me the energy, though. I'm feeling I, they'll get me on board today. That's I'm, I'm right. Well, from what I heard, London's the best crowd out there, but I think Texas, we can outdo them, all right? So let's see if we can do that this weekend. But hey, we had three weeks of intense action. Some ups for teams, maybe some downs for others. But let's walk through it nameless, right? Now. Three weeks of qualifiers, what do we get? I mean, my biggest takeaway, you know, it's sort of sitting on the fence here, but it's like there was no clear-cut favorite. You know, we saw every team go through this stage, and, you know, they had some tough matches across the board, right? When you look at Atlanta phase and you look at the LA Thieves, those are the two teams that looked like they were cut above the rest. And, you know, while they still were solid, they get the winner's bracket spot. They really didn't have that dominant of a performance. I guess the team that impressed me the most, I would say, is Seattle Surge. Just a huge turnaround from their Surge and Destroy, finally going 4-1 in the online qualifying stage, and now cement themselves as one of the contenders here in Texas. And I think to that point, it was a very sound decision to say, you know, we don't really have a clear-cut winner, but I think the crowd here in Texas might have a different opinion when it comes to that. This is going to be the home major for the Green Wall, and we know how loud they like to get, even if a player just reloads their gun when it comes to the green side of things. So, <laughs> Texas, a lot of pressure on their shoulders, That's though. Right. It's going to be our first look at Dan Ghosty on land here in his first official major tournament in the CDL. Todd, we take a look at the standings. Optic Texas, we just saw some recaps, right? Barely skating through, taking number seven over LAG. They beat FaZe, but they made it to the winner's bracket. Yeah, just about get themselves there. A very shaky group stage, of course, coming through in the qualifiers. Dead themselves to land, but when that's all said and done, as long as you get yourself to the winner's bracket, as long as you're here, you have a chance. Matters. But they're in a good spot. They're in a good spot. That's right. Seattle Surge taking over number one. Boston Breach there. We look at our overarching storyline, though, for the CDL points. We are at the halfway point of the season, Nameless. 65 points goes to the winner. That tells me this is do or die for some. Yeah, I mean, you said it great. This is definitely make or break point in the season. Those teams that are in 9 through 12 starting in losers, like, you have to try to make a run here. You can't go down in points. At the end of the day, we just saw what LA Thieves got. They got those rings, and that's what all these guys are playing for at the end of the season. Right. Very important to get those points. Of course, the major, it's got to feel good to be here. Let's take a look at our bracket, because it's generating a lot of talk on the timeline, Ali, and yeah. we've got some absolute bangers. 
I mean, obviously, I have to look at that Atlanta phase LA Thieves matchup. I mean, that's a rematch from our Major 2 Grand Finals. We got that rematch during Major 3 qualifiers, and it was LA Thieves that got their revenge. And now we're here back again in winner's round one to get that matchup one more time. And again, everybody else is also going to be looking at that Optic Texas versus Boston Breach. Definitely not the easiest pull for either of these teams. Calling yourself a major champion is one thing, but taking home 200000 for first is another. Okay. That's the cherry on top, baby. Nameless, we know we love our money. Hey, man. That's profit, right? You have a good season. I mean, these guys already get paid a lot, right? So you get this extra cash with these majors, it has to feel nice. That's right. It's got to feel incredible. And uh, this is one of the best events to win out there. Let's take a trip back in time, though. Our first major over in Raleigh. We had the New York subliners. A lot of people didn't think they were going to come out as champions, yet they did nameless. Yeah, I mean, New York, I feel like they were just kind of ahead of the game. When we look at that major, nobody was predicting New York subliners to win, right? right? And it was almost like the perfect storm. It's a gamble in the offseason when you form these rosters. When the game comes out, you're not sure if the meta is going to exactly fit your team. Well, they made a team of some pretty versatile players. You look at Kismet and Priesta, both those guys can run either weapon. And coming into that major in Hardpoint, they were unbelievable in Search and Destroyer, just a flurry to deal with. And this New York team, I feel like Major 2, a little bit of a lull, right? The Search and Destroy wasn't there, but New York has figured it out. And they look pretty good, right? Didn't go unscathed, but they look pretty good coming into this major. Yeah, and then we have to talk about the Atlanta phase. I mean, their search to destroy has just been literally disgusting since that Major 2 run. They went undefeated. They continued that into Major 3 qualifiers, and that's continued to make them a terrifying squad and possibly a favorite heading into this Major number 3. I will say, though, their respawns are struggling, so there's a lot of opportunity here for some teams to take off yes. the map. Well, them. Atlanta, defending champs, so they're going to be the ones that they have to dethrone. But looking at Seattle Surge, you know, we talked about one high point for search and destroy, of course, that being phase on a hot streak. Seattle Surge, though, Nameless, seems to be a little bit of a rough spot. Yeah, listen, when you look at the season as a whole, Surge, it's been a struggle for its, for the Seattle Surge, but during this split, they have figured out their S&D. These guys went 4-1 and one match count, 4-1 and one in Surge and Destroy. Mac on offensive rounds is sitting at like a 1.8 KD with the bomb, right? So he's the guy who's really stepped it up for them, and this is a team that's never shaken when it's when it comes to the hard point. Like, top two hard point team all season long, and now when the Surge is figured out, they're immediately a contender uh, coming into this weekend, right? I feel like they're very confident in what happened last year at Major 3. I mean, they won Major 3 last year. It was the Seattle Surge that came out on top. They ended the qualifiers the same way that they ended them this year in a 4-1 split. And when it comes to the Seattle Surge, you know, I talk about teams having safety nets. Their safety net was always that respawn, right? And yeah. now their Search and Destroy is also getting added to the puzzle as well. So definitely it's a contender for one of our winners. Well, talking about LA Thieves, a favorite, I'm sure, to many out there to maybe even take this entire thing. LA Thieves being champs themselves. They, number two in hard point, number three in control. Ton, it seems their respawn they got it locked down. They're so solid, and I think it really comes down to how Octane has been playing across the season. And seeing them actually put up an all right performance online as well is a good thing to see if you are a Thieves fan. You've got to be feeling good coming into this land. And of course, last event, the only team that really competed with them was FaZe. If you can come in and bring that kind of level again, they're going to look for a good chance this week. I mean, this is a team that's cool, calm, and collected. I mean, when you look at the last tournament, I think it was just as impressive as FaZe winning it, their losing bracket run. Like, Crazy. go in there 3-0, 3-0, 3-0 like that, make it all the way to the finals. Like, at some point, you run out of steam. But this is a team now that, in this game at least, has, like, the most land experience after that run. And, you know, online, they put it together. We've seen Envoy have some pretty special search and destroy performances. They're just sound in all three game modes. I think they're comfortable going up against anybody in this turn. Well, Toronto Ultra sitting in the number one spot. At least when it comes to control, they're going to absolutely be a threat this time around. But I love that consistency from LA Thieves across hardpoint as well as control. But let's start talking about some of our matches today. Starting off with number one, we have Toronto Ultra facing off against New York Subliners. This matchup, Valley, is going to be a great one. This is probably one of my favorite matchups simply because I feel like both these teams play incredibly similar. The last time they matched up, though, it was Toronto winning in a 3-0 fashion, and that was just last month. So some recency bias may be here from my stance of things, but the New York Subliners obviously get better on land. We're talking about our Major 1 champions. They had a little bit of a hiccup when it came to Major 2, so heading into Major 3, I feel like a lot of eyes are on them to see, you know, if that dominance really comes through that they love to preach and talk about. But I'm worried when it comes to Toronto because since adding Hixie, I've seen 
some a lot of consistency sure. from Kleenex specifically. Right. So I think that'll be a tough matchup for Hydra. Thank you, Will. Be I know Mama Priesta though. She's going to be out there supporting her boy. Boy. Hey, let's talk about today's schedule though. We start off Toronto Ultra versus New York Subliners. Then we move into oh, that could be a dicey one. Number one versus number eight Seattle Surge versus LAG. Then Boston Breach versus Optic Texas. I know that one's going to fill the house out. And then we have the good old Grand Finals rematch from last major. Atlanta Phase versus LA Thieves. One you don't want to miss out on. And we got a lot more Call of Duty to get through. We're still laying down the groundwork for the major. Headquarters will continue after the break. about to go to the Cedar Hill State Park. We're gonna touch some grass. The Call of Duty League is presented by the GMC Hummer EV Pickup, the world's first all electric super truck. Upgrade your game with a scuff the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Oh my god! Top maps, top maps, top maps. Oh my oh, god! No, dude! Oh my dude, god! Dude! 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 Oh no! He hasn't missed a beat. No. Yes, I have played against that. Man, that's just brought up some dude. nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was a sniper. He's just always taking weird angles, but oh, I love seeing everybody playing ranked, man. It's been so fun, and ranked play is out now. If you haven't played it yet, what are you doing? Hop in ranked. Try to rank up. That's right. Rank up, dude. But speaking of which, you actually had a little bit of a tussle with one of the players during your ranked matchup before you traveled here. Oh, yeah, here. bro. Toronto got slammed. No, That's no I mean. your ranked no, matchup, bro. You uh, got slammed, oh, yeah. and then he said, have a nice trip. Oh, you're talking about the, yeah, there's a kid in uh, ranked play, and I didn't want to re relive this, all right? Taylor, how did you know what you're doing? Texas in the nicest way possible. Shout out to that guy. I appreciate you. Hey, love it. Hey, crowd, shout out to you. I saw you out there getting hyped up. It's only going to get better and better from here. But let's talk about a matchup that's going to hit at home. And I'm talking about Optic Texas facing off, of course, against Boston Breach. I think this is going to be a tough one, in my opinion. But Optic Texas, last year nameless, they took it all. They took the championship, major one. Now they're back to do it again. Yeah, perfect storm. I mean, dude, these guys came into that major absolutely frying. Uh, Scump had a hell of a performance. Dashy as well. Like, this is a team in front of that crowd. They just get to a level. That crowd was amping them up. We saw them absolutely go off, but this is a new team, right? Scump's right. not at it anymore. It's going to be a bit different. We're going to see how this team fares in front of the green wall, right? Shotzi is now the vet. Shotzi dashing now the vets on this team, so it's going to be interesting. Well, Ali, there was a lot of talk about the new roster. Illy being removed, of course. Ghosty now joining into the mix. The rookie looking to make history today. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of pressure across the board, right? It was a lot of pressure last time. They were on their own home stand trying to make that run, and it's going to be two of those players that was a part of that run in Shotzi and Dashi. So I'm expecting the newer players here, Hook and Dan, to be able to lean on them a little bit heavily when it comes to this home stand, especially their first matchup being against the Boston Breach. The Optic Texas do have that edge on them if they have beat them so far, I believe, two times now this time this year. And even with the new roster, they have beat them. So they have a little bit of an edge, but the Boston Breach with their new player in the likes of Beans has been looking better specifically in those maps two and five. So Optic Texas can't come out flat. Well, Ton, you got Beans on one end on the other, you got Ghosty. Let's take a look at the records, though. In Boston Breach, they are looking strong, Dave. Boston looked really good. I got the chance to ca uh, catch a couple of their games in terms of commentating them, and Beans really has stepped up to the plate. Shaky start originally, but since then, he's looked really, really strong. This Boston Breach team are no joke. A 4-1 record, of course. We all know they're a solid squad, but 
I think we've got a good chance up against Optic here today. It's a hard match to come into with the crowd, of course, behind Optic. is going to be a big factor, but Boston cannot be counted out of this series. They have a really good chance, especially, like I said, it was really that search and destroy that I feel like solidified those wins when it came to Optic versus Boston, and it was specifically that Uli would drop a 1.83 in the last time these two teams matched up, and it was with that sniper in hand. Now I'm worried with Optic Texas that they don't really have that consistent sniper being pulled out. I believe Dashi has two on the season, so he's going to have to be going against Fiends, who already has 13, and he just got put into the league. He has 13 hit shots when it comes to the Boston Breach in those maps two and five. We got three rookies looking to take the stage, and not rookies to come, but rookies when it comes to Major. Let's see if they can enter into the Proving Grounds and make history. Beans, Ghosty, Hixie. There's only been six COD pros in the past to win their first land. Last time was Scump and Bobby, and what well, you know all about that name. Yeah, I mean, I lost them, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> lost them in the finals of that tournament, right? So it's definitely a special moment uh, in this Major. Like, it almost feels like champs, right? How just the aura in here, it's going to be crazy with the amount of fans. So much pressure on these players. We'll see who can rise up to the occasion because this could very well much be who's Rookie of the Year. That's right. Clear. The Rookie of the Year would definitely be uh, something to take home. Let's talk about another matchup taking place today. A rematch from Grand Finals of last major. LA Thieves, Atlanta Phase, two powerhouse teams. Yes. And Thieves, well, their hands are going to be a little bit heavier this time around. They managed to get their rings ton, and uh, hey, that's got to be a good thing. They look pretty nice. All the coaching staff got one as well. I love how they all had their names on there, and it's all like draws at Kenny, and then you've just got Shane written on one of them as well. I just thought <laughs> it was quite funny. Uh, but no, I love to see Shane and the squad looking really good on the coaching side of things. But these boys, they've got to be feeling good after this moment as well. Yeah. It's a nice feeling. I ain't going to lie, man. I get an iced out ring like that. I'm coming in delusional <laughs> the next day in the tournament. And I'm like, we're the world champs. Everybody's trash. But, you know, this is a team that's in a great spot. They made the crazy losers run, like, one of the best of all time. If they were to top that off, that would have been the greatest run ever. But, you know, after that, I think they felt comfortable with themselves and their gameplay. Just a couple things they needed to work out. Uh, and coming into this stage, they got to be extremely confident, man. This is a team that knows that when they hit a, a tough patch, they can figure it out and get that championship. Ooh. And look, you can see right here, the product of keeping their roster yep. through all the tough spots last year, they get back-to-back -back chips. And look at that. This team continuously amazes me at their effort. No, let's take a let's talk about their loser bracket, or excuse me, elimination bracket run. They lost to Optic Alley in tough game number five. But then 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-1, 3-0, and then ultimately we know what happened in grand finals. But that lose or excuse me, elimination bracket run was absolutely insane. One of the craziest things I think that I've ever seen. I mean to go down an elimination number one, and it wasn't that they were pushing these series to game five, they were 3 0 ing teams. It was like a proving ground to be like, we should not be down here and we will make it to Sunday. And of course they get to that point with the Atlanta phase and grand finals and you know no knock to phase their search and joy has been looking phenomenal across the board since that major but you gotta think the LA thieves I mean they were exhausted after doing something like that after making a run like that so I think heading into this major they don't go down that early easily a team I can see making it into grand finals once again yeah and for me one big point around that game against the Atlanta phase thieves were at something like an 8-0 in control of that losers bracket run it was something ridiculous over the last few games that they went through they dropped those games that's gonna be something that looking towards against space to make sure they take those controls. Well, let's go a little bit more history. Let's take a look at grand finals that ended up taking place. And of course, between Los Angeles Thieves and Atlanta Faze, it was close. It really was, especially that Mercado 250 to 248. Lord almighty nameless, that's close. Yeah, I mean, well, one, it's going to come down to the controls, right? Because yeah. when we look at this team and this LA Thieves versus Atlanta Faze matchup in a best of five, like, Thieves have the massive edge when it comes to the hard point. That's right. Like, Atlanta Faze, by all means, has been a bottom four hard point team. And you're going up. I mean, on land, it's obviously a different story because they have players you can just pop off and take over, but that's not going to happen for LA Thieves. They're so sound. They're ahead of them in that game mode. Top three all year. Uh, it's going to be a tough one, man. The search and destroy has to remain on point. And for Atlanta Faze, when you look at the split, search has been great, but the respawns have still been tough. So they're still figuring some things out. Uh, but this team seems to always turn up on land. But Slasher, right, coming in, being that uh, vocal figurehead of the team. Slasher, you cannot discredit what he brings to FaZe in general and what he can truly do as a player with the experience, Allie. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, you know, everybody had a lot of question marks when Slasher was initially brought into this roster. Of what is he truly going to add? Well, it was that search and destroy. You look at it now, a 1.40 right now, and a BZ right next to him with that 1.48. But he's been solid in just about every game mode now across the board. I feel like he's at that point where he's gone a lot more comfortable. Yo, I just gotta say, can teams start trying to play Embassy again against FaZe? <laughs> like, Asilo no. is no. dominant, man. People <laughs> keep testimonies like Pick Your Poison. Let's just see some Embassy in this tournament. Bring out all the stops. Well, from one grand finals from last major to now a tough one,
potentially the number one seed going against number eight. I'm talking about Los Angeles Gorillas, Seattle Surge. This one is going to be a tough one for at least one of the teams out there nameless. How do you think it's going to go? I mean, I think you got to be kind of crazy if you say anything but Seattle Surge is given how they've looked. I mean, I think the only opportunity here is if Seattle coming here, look flat and search and destroy once again, and LAG can steal those search and destroy, somehow get away with a respawn. Like, we've seen the SMGs and LAG have these pop-off moments, but it's just been so stressful for this team these last couple of weeks. Not sure if they can get it done. I mean, you talk about the interviews, even with them, they're like, it's been a roller coaster, right? Like, all their places throughout the season thus far, I mean, it's a Seattle Surge roller coaster, even when we talk to Fred, but, uh, you know, it hurts because it's like, you know it's a championship caliber team. You know what these players are capable of. We're all, they're all in the gas at the same time. And it could be like a repeat of last year. They won major three going into it in four, one in qualifiers. Their search and destroy isn't looking anywhere close to how bad it looked at the start of that. Look. But Jeez. yeah, that's the roller coaster we're talking about. I mean, 12, 6, 16, first, back to 12. I mean, it's been chaotic. I mean, look at the alternating. So it's a great place, but I didn't do for no one here. But let's dial it in a little bit further. Let's talk about accuracy a ton. I'm going to pass this over to you, this man. He's a deadly uh, man to be on the battlefield. What can we expect from him? Uh, we expect the leadership. We expect the experience coming from accuracy. Gets a lot of flack, but the man has been putting up some decent numbers, especially in the search and destroy. If you're getting a 0.96 out of accuracy, you're golden. That's fine. He doesn't need to go with the crazy numbers. You got Pred, you got Sib, you got Mac for those kind of moments. Whereas accuracy, if he's just consistent, if he doesn't have any bad games, then Seattle look really, really good. We know he is prone to having those bad games, but for the most part, look good in the major I mean, but how, how many kills do you really need? He doesn't need them. That's right. a Good at the respawn all season long. But really just a search and destroy. He had a big improvement there and Max yeah. also. So I just really think it all comes down to search and destroy every single time for this squad. I mean, they're number one seed, right? So you, accuracy, you can get a lot of flack, but at the end of the day, he's on one of the best teams coming into this tournament, right? So that's something to hang on to. Now let's move in and, you know, change our story a little bit to LAG, the number eight seed, barely skating by, qualifying for winner's bracket. Nameless, what can you tell me? About yeah, us? you know, I was just talking about it. I'll say it again. Like, I'm just not sure if these guys can get it done. It's going to be a tough one. They drew probably one of the worst matchups for them in round number one versus I mean, the Seattle well. Surge, right? Like, the SMGs, like, when you look at the side of Seattle, just so explosive, such fast-paced players. But on the other side of things, like, if you have an LAG team that we've seen be pretty good at search and destroy, like, coming into this one, you look at it, it's like, okay, maybe we see a Mercado search and destroy, maybe in a CeeLo. Those are two maps that LAG have a ton of reps on, and they've been good at, right? So I just really think the search in this series has has to be where they find success. With tough ones with LAGs, I almost would say they were a little bit blessed when it comes to this winner's spot, but honestly, I don't know how blessed you can be having to go up against the Seattle Surge that has been looking as on form as they have as of late. And again, I love talking about each team having kind of that net of a game mode that they can lean back on. Look at these stats across the boards. LAG just does not have one of those. Their search and destroy looks all right, but it's mostly based off of one player doing well and having a standout game mode. I've yet to see any of these players kind of being on the same page, specifically the sub duo. I think we have yet to see Exceed and Joe on the same gear. Agreed. I will say, though, in the last couple of matches, the hard point has been a tad better. And Assault, for me in particular, has been playing out of his mind. So if he can sort of bring that into this event, like, they have a chance. Like, it's right. not all doom and gloom. Like, they do have a chance. <laughs> Well, hey, I know the competitors, they're competing for something, but you at home can also earn yourself a little something as well. Of course, I'm talking about what you're watching earn, and I'm loving what I'm seeing. All you have to do if you're watching from home, link your Activision and Switch account to earn the rewards all weekend long. I I'm a fiend. I'm literally collecting every single thing that is released, <laughs> including all the double XP stuff that I love. But we also have some other things going down, including our watch party. And I got to give a special shout out to my boy, Dandro. Hey, he's casting all the Warzone stuff out there. Love him to death. He's going to be uh, at least covering the action from home. But uh, who else do we got on the list that you guys are excited about? <laughs> well, there's, there's a few at the top there on the, that are in, in person here as well. Excited my to see other the team, My boy, oh my God, I know. Well, we got Scott. Hey, how's <laughs> Wait, hey, hey, how's Phoenix doing a watch party? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> the coach. The coach of Seattle Surge. Hey, and, uh, the coach knows everything, right? So, I mean, it's the perfect guy to do watch party. Plus, Scump, he's going to be in-house doing his own thing. Look, we are about to get into our first matches. I couldn't be more excited. We're going to take one more final break. When we come back, the matches should be getting underway.
the story. I was born for the glory. Do the heat in the rain. Can't deny and ignore me. I'm bred for commitment. Signed up for a mission. Yeah, it comes with the price. It's all in the description. My time has arrived. I can't hesitate. Nothing is in my way. Knocking down barricades. On a different type of time. Dreams are never late. From the jump. Major here at the Esports Arena, Arlington. Hey, our first series is just moments away. I can't wait to get started. That video pumped and hyped me up in oh, general. Lit. It's lit, absolutely lit. <laughs> but let's start dialing it in, and let's start off at least, Ali, I think, with our hard point stats. I want to look at a little bit of the average objective time per player, because yeah. I know you love your stats, and, <laughs> and that's where you really do get your full story. This is one of my favorite things to look at, specifically because I feel like when we show these stat leaderboards, a lot of times it's, you know, those KDs, those KPMs per 10. And this is one of the things you don't see that often. It's your objective players who's soaking that hill Time. And then you're looking at our matchup coming up. It's Insight leading it right now with a minute and 48 seconds. When it comes to the league, maybe not your ranked games, that is a lot of time. So that is going to be your man on a mission. And not only that for the Toronto Ultra, but on the New York Subliner side of things, again, Skies, it's going to be your main ARs that are trying to soak that hill time and let their Slayers do their job. So keep an eye on those players in this series. All right, well, we got two dancers ready to go at it. Let's talk about our first one. New York Subliners coming in, like we said, winners of Raleigh. Yep. This time around, they're looking to be champions once again. We'll see if they can do it. Let's dial in on the roster name. Yeah, you know, this is a team that, you know, they won that first major. Just unbelievable pace that these guys set. Hydra has a case to be the best in the world. Uh, if not best, he's top three, definitely in that conversation. And Kismet, this guy was the MVP of the first major, That's right? So they have players who can pop up literally anywhere on the map. Uh, I think this team is extremely dangerous and coming into this matchup like when we get to maps and modes they have an edge in a couple of these maps as well and they've been working on their search and destroy this team went three and two in s d uh looking at the last split they only won lsc low search and destroy so they've <laughs> added some maps to their map pool as a top contending team should now it hasn't been all great for them they did have some tough performances but when they needed that dub especially versus optic they got it done in some in a highlight fashion that's right well let's dial in on hydra because you said it best right in contention to potentially be one of the best players Unreal. in the world ali what do you think I mean, I, I mean, uh, he's so right. I mean, Hydra has a 1.43 in search and destroy right now. There's not a game mode where he doesn't have a standout statistic, and he has one of two 1v4s on the season. And what did he? Who did he get it against? It was against the Toronto Ultra on Hotel during Major One qualifiers. So this is a team that can definitely push it to the limit when it comes up to this matchup. But Toronto Ultra does historically have that 3-0 coming into this. All right, Toronto Ultra historically 3-0. They're a team that looks like to beat at least in this case number three coming into this major. So let's dial it in. Toronto Ultra. I'm liking this team, and I think they always bring the energy in general. Nameless, who are we looking out for? I mean, we're looking at Scrap, right? This guy talks so <laughs> much trash, man. But it's I like, love his trash talk. It's like one of those unique scenarios where, like, he talks so much trash, and he can still back it up, right? And 
you know, even on the management side of things, they're making some moves. We saw them bring in Hixie to this squad, and, you know, it directly benefited. Kleenex was the beneficiary of sure. that. He went up to 1.12 in hard point, 1.2 in control. He's been frying in the respawns, and they found success, right? They've been really good since Hixie joined the team, and Hixie's only had a 0.82 since so he joined. So he's just playing the objective work, doing what he needs to do, and you can see the proof is in the put in here. Yeah, and there's just a couple of worrisome results there, though, you want to say, losing to the Royal Ravens, who have, of course, been getting better. Yeah, yeah, sure. But then, of course, you beat Optic 3-0 and Subliners 3-0, so what kind of Everyone side Everyone had a performance like this. Yeah, team. very true. You know, very it's, true. It's weird. It's hard to pick who's going to really come through and just dominate this tournament. Uh, but I think both these teams in this matchup, New York versus Toronto, it's about as evenly matched as it gets. That's yeah. right. Well, Scrap, our player to watch, obviously, like you said, he talks to trash, but he backs it up, Ali. He really does back it up since the beginning of this season. And again, another one of those players where it's across all game modes. And I think I think it's really going to come down to the respawns when it is in this New York to Toronto series, simply because they're so close when it comes to search and destroy. Both these teams have very talented, clutchable players. I mean, Scrappy alone has eight clutches on the season, five of those being in 1v1 situations. So a player you can count on for sure as well. And again, in contention for Rookie of the Year. All right, well, I'm ready to get this going. It seems like everything's getting set up pretty quickly. I know the fans are going to be happy for that one. So let's start dissecting this series a little bit more. Nameless, I'm going to start with you. Let's take a look at our maps modes. Yeah, let's get it, man. You know, I was looking at this, and I was like, all right, if New York are going to win this, they're going to have to get it done in four, right? Uh, we look at that Mercado. That's a map Toronto's 4-0 on. Most teams veto when they go up against the Toronto Ultra. Uh, but for New York, though, last time we talked to them in interviews, Sky said they've been working on their Mercado, and the last time they played, they did win it. So there is hope as it goes to five. I think the the biggest difference in this one is that hotel control as well. It's going to be very important. Both these teams, 8-3 and, and 9-3 and respectively from both squads. It is going to be a square up. Whoever takes that has a good chance to take the series. Ali, anything else just real quick? I mean, I'm just looking at it. They're squaring up on that hotel. Both okay. these teams prefer that hard point, so I think that's going to be a big decision maker in this All right. series. Like I said, things are moving quick. Let's do our predictions, get them out of the way. For me, I'm actually going New York. I think they're going to be all right with Mama Priest in the house. I think I'm obligated to say that. Big fan of her. Hey, look, it is what it is. Ton, who are you going with? I'm going to go Toronto Ultra 3-2. to two. I think this is going to be highly contested, but as we said, that map number five, solid record for them. I think overall, they're looking pretty good. I'm going to Toronto. All right, Allie? Highly competitive, but I think I'm going to go with Toronto Ultra here. I think I really oh, no. like the consistency out of Kleenex. All right, so it seems like a mountain number. What about you? Man, it's so hard to call, right? But I'm going to go with New York, man. I think New York okay. coming in and they take it. Hydra is unreal. All right, we're half and half on the desk. Curious what you guys have to say, but we got a special figure on the desk. Let's kick it over to Bryce to get things started. All right, welcome to the first game of the day. Oh, Texas is beautiful. I enjoyed it last time I was here. But what's even more beautiful are the two teams waiting backstage. Our desk has called it competitive. There's only one way to find a difference. Let's throw it to our first team then and meet Toronto Ultra. <laughs> Pay me in respect. respect. Once I do it big, what's to follow is a check. It's a I check. need a honey page, nothing more, nothing less. And the eyes feel away, cause I'm next. I'm a threat. Oh, oh yeah. Really, y'all don't know this, y'all in danger. I'm a threat. It's a threat. Gamble with your life, cause you know that it's a bit. Yeah, gotta run up the next one. Point to the sky with the one up. I'm blessed. I'm young, rich, and black, so you know I'm a threat. Please give a warm welcome for Toronto Ultra. Scrap, Pixie, Insight, and Kleenex. Your Toronto Ultra. I feel like these guys still need to answer the question of whether or not they're championship ready. And what better way to do it than versus our major one champion? They got New York on the other side of that stage. Was Hixie enough? Is he enough? We'll find out. Let's bring out New York, Bryce. All right, thank you very much, Nameless. Yes, one team has taken the stage. We're going up against them. And the major one champions, let's say hello to the New York Subliners.
Please welcome to the stage the new York Subliners! Hydra, Skies, Kismet, and Priester. The new York Subliners! The Major One champions looking to possibly get a second chip on this year. They were struggling this stage, but they still hold the number one land hard point record as well as control. And for the love of God, they have Hydra on their team. It's the New York Subliners, and you got to stand clear. All right, New York Subliners. Oh. All right, well, the game is ready. The players are sat. It only remains to hand it over to the maestros of the microphone. It's Merck and Maven. Thank you. I, I, I like that a lot. The maestros of the microphone. Let's have some fun. Ready to get rolling. This weekend is going to be packed as it fills up over the weekend. We have going to have a sold out crowd, a ton of incredible Call of Duty matches, Joe. And uh, excited to be here, buddy. Let's have a great time. Yeah, I, I think uh, when you look at this matchup, this sort of desk kind of talked about it. I mean, uh, a banger, right? Some of these teams or you know, these two teams have been competitive from the start. New York, they win major one, but also they have been a, a competitor all year long. Yeah, and this is just, I guess I'm waiting to see, I, kind of like Nameless said, like, can Toronto be a championship caliber team? Because sometimes, like, online, like, their records have been there, they've looked really good, yep. they get to the event, and it's like maybe day one they look good, and then something falls apart, something comes off the wheels. Now can Hixie be the difference? Because I know with him in, I know his numbers haven't been incredible, but there's been boosts in other places. Yeah, I mean, you obviously talk about Trappy, the consistency he's had all year, but then Kleenex has really been the key, yeah. right? He's turned into the monster that maybe we saw at times throughout Cold War, just trying to get back to that form. He can play with such pace, but it's sort of with, you know, Stanley, you know, hitting the bench. It, it was just a question of, was that the right move? Maybe the, the guys felt like this was going to take them to the next level. I think uh, we have a lot of questions, and this weekend it's going to be answered. Well, this is just a sensational matchup to kick things off. I mean, I think outside of what, your your Thieves phase match, this is one where it's two teams that you realistically think can make a run. Maybe not win the whole thing, but it's possible, and they can certainly make a deep run into Sunday. Yeah, I mean, they're on the opposite side of the bracket, right? So yeah. you have that going into it. But here we go, Hotel Hardpoint coming on up. First match of the tournament, first map of the tournament. And for these, both of these teams, this is a map they know and love. 10 and five for Toronto Ultra, New York nine and seven in Ultra. They're on a three a game win streak. And remember, they played in the major three qualifiers. It was a 3-0 for Ultra. So maybe looking for a little bit of vengeance here if you're NYSL, but Hydra, maybe the best submachine gun player in the game. We start with his POV, but quickly over to the Bulldog and Kismet, who's going to get shot down. Right back over to Hydra. Just controlling middle of the map right now. Toronto Ultra just trying to do what they can, but Hydra almost finding that second. Hixie able to take him down, but Skies taking that long route. You see Ultra spawning Kitchen. That's not where they want to be. They have to work through Chandelier. A good couple of kills to give them in map control. We'll see if they can start to work out. Funnel across the map. You get the smoke from the nade. Difficult gunfight there from Hydra's POV. At least takes down one before he gets chopped down, but now back over to Kismet. Just Biden his time. Looking to push forward, wants to rip him off the desk, and that's a big one. Get him out of one of those strong positions that's tough to deal with. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you get behind that desk, so hard to deal with, and now you can get your teammate in that location. You have Sky blocking down P4 over towards those double desks. Inside, just waiting to toss out of the map for his teammate. That's going to be scrap, and this is going to be a push from all angles. It's a bit of a pinch here from Toronto Ultra on this first break attempt. This Priesta trying to just lock down these back steps. Kismet with a big two. It's looking like that first push is going to be dealt with. And there we go, Priest and Kismet able to take down all four. Yeah, no one was able to leak through the back. So you still have those safe spawns. If you're in YSL, you now build up to a 20 point advantage. Back to Hydra's POV, who's five and three, but that's three kills straight through for Toronto Ultra. But still, the safe spawn there for NYSL. They're able to continue reinforcing and this is close to a perfect kill. You've got 15 or so seconds left. There was a bit of a contest, but now let's talk about the fight that we're Yeah, this is a big one-on-one -on -one going on right now. I just trying to play his life. There we go, the reinforcements come in, but if he was able to catch inside on that rotation, maybe get inside a kitchen, you can make plays there. Show those snakes off as our pros always do on this hill, but a great hold by NYSL there at that second hill. You need a response here if you are ultra. Let's see if they can answer back, answer the call, and get right back into the swing of things, but 
Speaking of the snakes, they are out. It's Kleenex just playing for info. <laughs> the push is starting to develop. There's the first pick. Now you see maybe starting to go behind this, but not yet. Maybe wait for the fourth player to get involved. One's going to spawn out from Toronto Ultra. So far, so good. Clean for Ultra. It's Kleenex. And inside, able to lock it down. The first pick opens nothing from YSL. Yeah, and I like that play, right? You just have Frieza proning in the contest mount right outside of Frieza, forcing Ultra to push on through. Kleenex on a 5 screen. This is what we were talking about. This guy, he is playing with aggression. Now over to his sub duo on rotation. Four and seven, but right back into the game. They got the hold inside a kitchen. Now, can New York set up here at P4? It, yeah, sort of feels like the numbers aren't always there for Hicks even. But Kleenex is getting back to being that demon on the map. Like, all right, if it's leading to wins, no. you're getting the results. Who cares? Yeah, 100%. And I mean, Kleenex is that player, right? I think when you watch some uh, of our top sub machine gun players, you know, Pred, Hydra, those who come to mind, they're pushing out cuts constantly. That's what you want from this man. But on rotation, you can see on the right side, it is all New York. That is going to be a clean four dead. This has just been back and forth. Who is going to find a break in these setups? And it's five in a row for Kismet. But yeah, there's been like no break, right? It's Nothing. just been locked down. Get to your spots. I know you've been on that rank grind, and the more you play, you know, you've rocked the sub a little bit in ARs. Like, both weapons are insane if you get to your spots, right? You get to your positions, you can take over the map. Yeah, you can make so many plays happen with this fast. Seven, now. Seven now for Kismet. Looking for number eight, able to find it on rotation. Maybe now an opening for NYSL to chain two hills together. Kleenex, the last player in position, I love that. Now you have Hydra and Sub Duo coming to help them out, but Kleenex was able to read the first one. Priest is here now. This is a great job by Kismet on rotation. It is not going to be a clean setup for Toronto Ultra. And now a 50 point lead from NYSL. That was such a clean P4 hole. 14 and 6, Adam Kismet, the Bulldog just popping pieces all over the map. 40 point advance on NYSL. Kismet right back into the mix, up to 16. Is off spawn, just soaring right back into it. Look at the kill feed, lighting up purple. Is Hicks seeing Kleenex there for the plays? Skies, though, tries with a snap and free fire, but not able to hit. And look at me, you look at the engagement, like, it's a relatively the same for NYSL outside of Kismet, who is just rotten. Yeah, 16 and 8 for him, but still, again, another good hold by the team on rotation for yep. first, right? Yep. It's ultra this time, only down 20 with 20 seconds left. Left on this hill, as Scrap just trying to watch over his teammates, so still a very close game. Now we're going to rotate all the way over towards that bottom left side of your map. Over towards Patio, Kleenex trying to work through Kitchen with his teammates. You are going to have inside spawn out and set up a bit of a pinch. They might have to wait for him. So a lot of times, it's like... A break comes because of the game for the setup team. You're, usually that's the case. And with how good the whole advantage is, does it feel like one of those games where it's like, who's going to make the mistake first? Like, who's going to have the big blunder? Yeah, or who's going to make that individual play? Yeah. Already a, a nice start here. You find the kill. You're not earning time, but you're at least stopping New York from getting it. Let's see how long they can keep them out of it. Insight with the angle. Insightful as ever. As he connects onto the shots, and Nate towards the back has a little bit of help. He'll get dropped up by Skies. But you've got some numbers here, and now a chance for a lead change if you are Ultra. Can you rally together two hard points? One of the better rotations that we have seen. And keep it in one, out of it. But Ultra trying to make the rally, looking for the lead change out of the hard point for now, but still going strong. Let's get to a listen in now with Toronto Ultra. Is uh, the debuff one of time? I want to the one of time. Don't close to engine attack. Right, give me a sec. I spawn Kitchen. Yeah, well, dead. Kitchen as well, I think. I don't see this guy's crap. Dead? I'm dead. Okay. I'm dead. 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 I'm I'll see you guys. Look for on. one. Yeah. He's quite couch, 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 right there. I'll see this guy. He's definitely useless. He's definitely useless. Yeah. I don't know where they're spawning. Useless. One D2. There's 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 one D2. Right. behind the square. Let's go square now on the window. Yeah. One step pillars as well. I'm just about to win that. I'm connected in. Give me a second. I'm just going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Square the time. He's catches. 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 Weak. 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 Catches. Let's go, guys. Can we double push? Can we double push? Yeah, I'll get it. Nothing I'm going to try and go new. I'm useless. There's one in the middle. 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 Only one new then. He's in the middle. Only one new. Only one new right now. Play for this and go right. He's not behind the engine. Small low bed. I'm playing for the guy old then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, land on left. Let's see if he has captures. Let's see if you're right. I'm going to stand. All three of you go right. There's nothing D1, D2 yet. He's going to be lobby. I need your D1. Yep. He's pointing out kicks, by the way. He should do anyway. I don't see a lobby. 
I enjoyed that a lot. It's not not real frantic, just a little, little small talk and calming. Yeah, we expect that from the Ultra Comms. It was great. Yeah, always just very calm. This time, no, over to P2. We talk about how well New York were able to hold it, but this time they just go right through double deaths. They're able to get spot control, and maybe this is the break that we were talking oh, about oh, in yeah. the game. Right there, a clean break for Ultra on the New York, and now you have inside scrap set up. Kleenex finding that kill. One more player left in Tisman. Maybe able to make the play. Snaps on to two, and it's just down to Hixie. Yeah, it's just, it, you know, you think you have a freebie, but then you remember that in this game to mantle up and get an angle, it takes about 45 seconds. So <laughs> it's up taking him out as well. But where you thought there was the moment, there is a quick answer here from NYSL. It's been a big part of that. But you get right back into it, so maybe not the blunder quite yet. Just good job staying calm, regaining control. Priest is POV for now, and he's starting to light things up at 18 and 17. You might have a big couple of kills coming in though, right? You have that final 20 seconds, but you gifted Ultra the rotation on over. So they're gonna have a two versus three in the hill right now. It's gonna come down to Scrap and Kleenex to hold this first push. On the opposite side, it's Hixie on a big pinch. Can Hixie shut this down? Hydra was able to read it. New York trying to get inside the kitchen. There we go, three dead. Beautiful stuff. What a read by Hydra. Pick up that pinch. Make sure your four players are able to focus on the hard point and take those difficult gunfights at the Snake Fiesta. Priest is still beaming. As he gets out the positive three, we get back to Kismet, who has been a roller coaster throughout this one, but he has been hot. He got a streak all the way up to what, eight or nine? Just an absolute monster. What more does he have to provide? Able to spot one at the back, some damage in, not quite able to finish it, but able to tuck away in the corner. Yeah, he kind of split right right after that break. You had Scrap find a couple of kills, gets him right back. Ah! Kismet with the snap, 26 and 17, last bullet connects. Now on rotation, you had Scrap just trying to play his life, trying to read the spawns, but again, Hydra on rotation, finding those kills, and now New York gets set up. They were perfect here last time through. What can they do with it? Hey, it's Kleenex, the kill top bedroom. Now you gotta worry about that if you're Hydra, so you try to just push it out, get a kill before you drop. You know you're gonna be in trouble from bedroom side. Kismet tries to snap, he's relocated to the opposite corner. It's gonna be ultra players inside for now, with Kleenex with the pick on the front line, in sight with the crossfire through. Last guy here, Hydra, soaring in, but drop 30 seconds remaining on the hard point. A moment to breathe here for Ultra. Yeah, moment, just not, not a very long one, but you still have Scrap inside of main death. This is where he's gonna be able to find multiple kills, and he does, connects onto two. And Hydra's already thinking rotation, so are the rest of NYSL. They're gonna give up this time. Priest is gonna be the last one to spawn up, make sure no one's pinching through Chandelier. Not gonna happen. So on rotation, it's gonna be New York in control again. Still just a one-point game. This has been so back and forth, and now it's Kleenex on a five spree. And Insight's just gotta wait, right? Send up this pinch. You've got one going the whole way around deep. That's gonna be Hixie. Oh. They're able to take down two. Scrap at least able to trade out one, but that's really it. He's gonna be the last guy here. Spawner's starting to come up. He's gonna drop right as the reinforcements get here into the blender. You go. NYSL has got you in the mix, and now they're starting to run away with this late in the game. 40 seconds remaining on the hard point. 220 on the board for NYSL. Can they do it? You can close it out here with perfection. Yeah, we'll see those spawns are getting a little bit mixy right now. You have some splits coming in. Scrap, he's gonna read it. Nice play from him. He's on three in a row to get Ultra back in the hill. Game not gonna end here. We're gonna head on over towards patio. And yeah, New York, they have just been so rotate heavy and Hydra's able to sneak all the way in the back. His team, they know they're gonna try to get to him. He's gonna spot one and now the rest of Ultra know he's here. He's gonna have the help of Priesta trying to watch this cross. Ah, another one. Nice. No, no, no. Kleenex, the last player alive. Now he's the one by himself. His team's gotta get to him. You see the spawns all the way out, but he finds another kill. Kleenex trying to do what he can to keep his team in it. And Priesta, oh my deal goodness. It. It's not an easy fight, but he's able to win. He's it. still alive. Kleenex is still tucked the he's back. He's still block. alive. He gets another kill. Are you kidding me? Nobody in the point for now, but it's five in a row again for Kleenex. NYSL now able to wrap on. All this work that Kleenex has done, he's finally going to drop the players at the hard point. It's going to be New York. Yeah, I mean, New York just cut off the spawns. They cut off the spawns. Scrapto's going to get them off the hill. 14 more points for New York to win map number one. Ultra, though, it is not done yet. They know they're just trying to keep them off of it. Trying to keep them off the time, and they're doing just that. That's going to be all four dead now for New York. So game cannot end here. We're going back to P1. <laughs>
Having fun, map one of major threes. It'll basically be a tie game once they rack up this time. And back to mid map we go. The key gunfight's coming in, and Kleenex, you can tell he's feeling himself right now. The challenge of the second won't go through, but it will be Ultra. Now into the point, the crossfire coming in from Priestland in YSL. They get two picks. Insight's gotta be huge, he's gonna drop as well. Well, they're, they're relying on Kleenex again, relying on him again. Tinsy, though, the duo, the sub duo, able to find two. Maybe that gives them the chance. It's all four dead for NYSL. Ultra now 10 seconds away from hitting map number one. Here we go. Break time for NYSL. Can they get the pick? 243, 243. Second by second, it is climbing. A contest onto the point. Tinsy trying to go big. He's going to drop. In New York, break in. A couple of seconds left to go. Hydra pushes out the cut. And that will do it for map one. And Subliners get it done in a nutty map one. Well, we talked about this matchup, what this was going to be. Their best hard point map for both of these teams. And they put on a show. It was so back and forth, nobody could break on through. And then at the end, it was the individual plays from guys like Hydra, players like Kleenex setting up a banger at well, the end. Yeah, it was like, you nailed it. It was solid, what, like 40 to 50 second holes for the most part, like little contests here and there, but mostly flawless holes for like, until the last like five or six hard points. And then it was just, a battle. We're gonna check out the replay again to watch the last 50 or seconds or so. Maybe see any big moments, big gunfights we missed in the midst of the chaos. But that's a fun start to the tournament, Joe. Yeah, I just want to see kind of right here, right? Yeah, you have a couple dead. You have Mixie on the point. Who is the difference maker? For NYSL, Kismet's able to go up towards Cat. Just this read from Skies. And yeah, you, you have that 3 4 dead. It can just be tough, right? You have those kitchen spawns. You're gonna push out double arches. They're gonna go through to top cat. And after that, too, after this four dead, who is the player that makes Hyde, the play for NYSL? Right, leave, gets the pick on the point, and then turns and picks up a spawner as well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you can just see the see spawns a little bit all over the place. He spawns behind them, and they're just not ready for it. That is a little bit unlucky for Toronto Ultra, and, and that's why it can be tough. Yeah, he spawns behind the playing chandelier. So I think Kismet got two, Hydra got two. They, they, they cleared everybody out. That's, that, that's the thing with those like mid hard points, right? Like it, it can be, especially in those moments, I mean, they're hard to track spawns and take the control you want, but especially in those moments, it's sort of just a shouting and madness and chaos as you get to the conclusion of the map. But what a map one, four points separated these teams. A battle till the end. Hey, and honestly, props to Ulster, because you get out slayed by 15. You can see everyone's positive on NYSL. They kept that very close. You know, Kleenex was making incredible plays towards back B6. Well, I thought that's on that hard point, what, what, what kind of stood out, because I think you and I were super locked on Kleenex's plays, because they were unbelievable. Like, it looked yep. like he won a gunfight, like, threw a stun, then it was able to hit a stun and win a gunfight against attack that was pushing up to free stun. He got four or five kills, but we were so focused on that. I guess I was sort of just, you know, it's our first cast of the day. Like, I was just so focused on that. I was thinking in my head, like, oh, surely his teammates have gotten into the hard point. <laughs> well, no, you spawned all the way out before yeah. in New York. <laughs> they, they just made the heads up call of, all right, just kind of leave him. Maybe someone try to win it. The rest of us just cut the, the, the yeah. reinforcements off. It, it was the right play. It's just Kleenex made uh, enough one-on-one -on -one wins in the back where they couldn't get on the time. They couldn't win the game there. No, it's just, uh, yeah, sometimes as a commentator, you get so dialed in on like one situation that I look at like the bigger picture. I'm like, well, I didn't play it how I thought it was going no. to at all, but uh, really, really fun one. Uh, if anyone like rolled out of bed and came to the venue uh, while you're awake now, uh, an absolute blast there for the first one. We've got so much incredible action to come to you with this first round of matches. Um, I mean, I know when I looked at it on paper before we did our podcast, it was just sort of like, a lot of these can go either way. Like, And that speaks to the parody in the league and just the, the way everything's been playing out, but some of them are just... This one I thought was gonna just be haymaker after haymaker, and then especially, yeah, the Thieves and Faze will want to wait and see how that plays out later, but so far, I think you know it right after the, yeah, right after the first map like that. It's kind of what you thought this was gonna be. Like, <laughs> you hope to get maps like that as a caster or the viewer, but these guys are gonna go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, Despite I'm, the 3-0 online, I'll take a lot from that. Yeah, no, you know, New York's been a team throughout this year testing the map pool. That's been a, a big thing for them, and for Ultra, they're just trying to get sort of, you know, Get Hixie comfortable, trying to get the map pool comfortable. One area where they did struggle 
has been in the search and destroy in the qualifiers, right? I think they were two and four overall. Fortress, though, is one of the maps that they play uh, a good amount. And, you know, Kleenex can, can be one of those players, right? He's going to take those opening duels. But it's pretty 50 50 when you talk about these two stars. And it's, it's just exciting to see Kleenex kind of, I guess, maybe emerging into that conversation at the lead subs because he was one of our favorite players to cast and watch when he go back to Cold War. And obviously, he hasn't quite had that same impact. But man, when he is feeling it, when he finds the rhythm in the map, he's one of the most fun players to watch. No, he is. And he plays so quick, right? I mean, just his ability to snap, right? The sensitivity he plays on it looks a little bit faster than some of the other subs in the league. So when he's dialed in, it looks nuts. Oh, yeah, 100%. But out of Fortress we go. Map two. Kismet. He had the big moments across the map. I mean, he's the monster going massively positive through it, but then also two of the big kills with Hydra to close out that map one. He's got to be feeling it. When this guy is locked in, one of the best players on the planet. Yeah, we know when it gets to land, Search and Destroy is going to be a, a lot different. Not, not only just where the audio setup you are, but here on land, hey, you don't have, you're not at home. You're not going to hear some, everything I right there. NYSL, they're able to find all four. That is just a clean round as Priesta and Hydra find four in the round. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, Kismet was huge in that too. Just kind of playing bait, able to play his life. Priesta gets there quickly with the help for the first, and Hydra just decimates the rest of the players. But once the fighting started there, it was over quick. Yeah, and for NYSL, you know, the, the two players who in Major 3 qualifiers for their search to destroy had incredible splits was sort Stop, of Hydra right? and Kismet. Yeah, they were both like 1.4s, but the ARs were struggling, right? Right around like 0.8 for both Skies and Priest, and pretty surprising. Could be the maps they're playing, but it's Priest is map moving around. Yeah, you need to play MSC Fortress, you get some bad time yeah. with the AR. That could be uh, not fun. First one this time, it'll be Scrap. Priest of the great round one, he'll be out of action. Daddy's starting to come into play. Oh, good God, that's something. Kiss him in the back of the ankle. Kiss him, where are you going? The answer is nowhere. It's Kleenex. Puts him into a four versus two now. I just able to find him. You're thinking maybe he jumps there to find that player close. Both players just kind of running around. Hydra and Skies. You do have Daddy on Hydra, but in sight. Likes to play in these slow positions, finds the feet under the truck, able to find one, and now it's down, just down to Hydra. Yeah. Bomb not planted yet, though. You saw that impact the second he came into the league. He's sometimes in spot. A little frustrated, but Hydra, this would be for the ace. He had the incredible round one now. Can he close out the one versus three? And the ace as well. He's 4-0 oh in this. 25 seconds left to go on the clock. Bomb now going to be planted. And this is a... It's a tough one to get in and retake, but we'll see. Yeah, we don't see beat plans very often, but it is just so hard to retake. There's so many positions you have to clear. You have to sub as well. If there's attack in the back on that balcony, good I mean, luck. Now he centers right to it. He snaps to where he knows he's going to be, but still just such a hard gunfight. Yeah, how often do you see a retake on this side? <laughs> Not real often at all, right? I could probably make up some maven number, but it's yeah. probably like 5%. Yeah, 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 probably. Yeah, probably. That sounds right. I think the longer you've been casting, you've learned to sort of make up numbers too. I like that, Joe. Yeah, you know, it's what we do. <laughs> so, tied up 1 1 now. You got what? 4 on Hydra. A lot of this team is going to kill outside of Reese. Reese, the first blood in the last round. We'll see if we got more of an impact here. You have some sort of read here, right? I, I mean, the way they've been playing this ultra, two rounds in a row, nading up top of, of our, and then just kind of playing this slow retake over towards Ooh. A. They're going to go for it, everyone, but he's going to get wall bait right through. Kismet's on top. He gets traded on out. Now, Hydra looking for that player, trying to cross on back through those doors, but it's into a three on three. Daddy getting it popped. Casey trying to find it. Through open comes the rest of them, and well, Toronto Ultra. They're going to find the defensive round one, just playing together as a group through both of those doors. Yeah, like after the first blood comes through for Skies, you know, you're sort of like, whoa. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting railed through the door there, you get dropped, you think they're down a, down a man, and maybe they'll kind of rethink the retake through, but they keep the pressure through close and open, they're able to find the kills, and they get it done. Well, and the reason is, is you're probably going to have numbers, right? Because you have one player back stairs, one player on the bottom. Usually, if there's a pinch or something, you have a player like top dark, inside of art. You're not expecting four players through those doors. They just get outnumbered, able to find those gunfight wins. Well, you can just get lined up and that 
all the players drop so you can have two players dropping that wall bank for god's sake man it happens they commit to it though catch them off guard and they get the round win i do the snipe out this time gets eyes on one tries for the wall bank just gonna miss a little right it's all right skies has it i, I think you know we all know it you play in range you feel like that stage gives you a little bit more cover no that thing is paper when attack is shooting you through it's either like you can't shoot through it or you can really shoot <laughs> through really it. Like, shoot through it. <laughs> it's like, you can really <laughs> shoot through it. Yeah, you, you get caught, you're dead. There seems to be no in between. It's like the wall doesn't exist or it does. <laughs> oh, gets eyes right as he goes to pop it. Got a little bit of help there. And Kismet able to get the kill. He was Hydra snap around the corner with the side. Just eyes on, able to finish it though, is Kleenex. Gonna be in a two versus three now after that pick. Bomb still gonna be in Scrap's hand. Yeah, but I think they're going to spot that one player. And again, it's a slow rotate through A over to B. And this would give them the right call. You have one player all the way in the back. That's Skies. And then two players at the A bomb in Kismet and Priesta. How is this going to play through Kleenex with Deddy Pop? Does he find a time? He's able to find one fire. Yeah. The other with Scrap. Now they have to get the bomb down. They have to plan it. Skies wins the first. Oh. Not able to find the second. And what I, reads on the map right now? They're just working through the bomb sites, just having NYSL guess where the hell are these and that's guys? That's a 2v4, right? I believe that ends up being a 2v4. They got that first pick to bring it to a 2v3, the one through the window we saw, I believe, from Kleenex. And they win the round. Those are the, those feel like the daggers. I know, so, I, so we still got a lot of search and destroy to go, but that one hurts. And what's crazy is I was just about to say, you know, usually in the opening rounds, like very early with this map, it's sort of a sub player finding some crazy play, whether it's like a Shotzi, a Hydra, uh, a Kleenex. We really haven't had that, but then right there, Kleenex able to find that flank onto two to give them that round win. Oh, Priest is getting chased. He's able to get out pretty grooved up right now as NYSL as the plant will start to get down. It'll be Ultra starting to look for the openings, and it's not going to be sort of this, what, four-man hit. Hydra's making the play, though. He's waiting for Hydra to make the play. He jumps out of dub window. He has Denny popped. And while he's able to find the first, that's going to reset to Denny. Freeze trying to lock down the bomb. It is finesse time for this man. Buys enough time where it's all down to Kleenex, and there we go. They had no map control. They were all the way in the back of the map besides Hydra, who jumps out of art and wins the gunfight. Well, yeah, that, and I think he ends up turning Kleenex's head, who's trying to look towards another fight. And that's who I think tagged him up when he started to get away. Leads to him dropping as well. Just one moment that creates a little bit of havoc. Yeah, like Ultra are thinking defensively, they're all trapped in the back, right? We can swarm them through, we can go top dark, find the angles, but Hydra makes the plays. He's up to six and three right now. Really keep it a minute. And five of those are non-traded kills, so he's finding his picks and he's playing his life. Let's see if he has a little more magic in this round. Not gonna have the daddy to work with. He just made the play behind it. Priesta trying to give out free haircuts, just some damage to scrap in the back line. Poor Hixie. Yep, there it is again. Hixie's just trying to cross to that bomb. But the tax set up. Oh! There's the wall bank so weak. Kleenex, though, does get pushed up. He's going to challenge the gunfight, and Skies is going to win it. Hey, hey, Parisa is just tagging, and Skies is finishing the kills. But now they're looking to flood out inside. Stun is going to hit. He is going to get swarmed. He'd love to be able to take down one in that situation, but not going to happen. Scrap now. Left all alone. Shots into the rear. Going to fall. New York chained together some rounds. And, you know, I felt like that 2v4 round Ultra has. Like, that's one of those dagger ones that's going to hurt you. Never mind. They, they went back to back rounds, right back in the space. They tied up 3 3. Yeah, nice adjustment there. So, really, you know, on the defensive side, you have Skies and Priest of playing both open and closed. But really, the key player for them is Kismet, right? Top maps. Because he's making sure no one's jumping out of top art, right? Whether it's a single window, the dub window, to make sure that flank doesn't come through. And also from the angle he's playing, he's helping out those wall bangs, those shots that are coming through. They're just finding all the picks on defense. Yeah, it's like Ultra adjusts to the point they're gonna start to build this push and you're just getting, <laughs> they're just getting just hammered. They're running out of ammo. That's yeah, pretty right, much it. right. Like, how are these guys still shoot? Ooh, look pretty good to me. Yeah, just maybe a little off to the right. That must have barely missed. Man's hips do not lie, that is for sure. No 
looks like Kismet's just gonna hold inside for now. This is his POV. The timing of that is he goes to Chow. You get the audio cue probably if you're scrapping, you try to dip out, and you are just locked in. Help me. Please, I require some assistance. He will get dropped, but not before Scrap is going to fall. Hydra going to be last alive now. Takes down one. Has Deddy as well if he wants to invest in, he will. Has to get the bomb, 35 seconds left. And you have Hasty and Kleenex just trying to kind of get together, group on up. Like 50 gifted boys, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> what can he find? 20 bullets in, there's just so many angles to check. Now the problem, here Deddy runs out. Hasty, he hears it right away. Hears it right away, and there we go, they snap on him. Yeah, it's just like you're praying, you're praying there once you pop Daddy, you get this still a 1v1, right? Like, <laughs> you're able to locate one and maybe regroup the bomb. Yeah, you want to reset that. That's really what, you, what you're looking for. But that was a nice job by Scrap. I know he doesn't find the kill, but he baits Kismet out far enough where a trade comes through to keep them with that man advantage. Remember how we had that, like, cranked mode back in Ghost? I don't know how that basically yeah. came with that silence is now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that mode was awesome. <laughs> it actually was a lot of fun. But, oh, that's how our daddy works. Not perfect. Kleenex just tucked away in a pocket. And this is the same defensive setup. The only difference is, is you have Hydra who's learned his way on up. Now can Kleenex find the opening? He's the one looking for the angles, but they read it. That's what I mean. Nice job by Skies, Kismet, to make sure that never happens. So Priesta finds the info, but Insight sneaks on through. Kismi gets taken out, Scrap somehow finds two, and now you have man advantage and the flank come through. This should be the round done. About time. Well, let's wait till they close it out, but I feel like about time you're able to sort of figure out how you want to deal with this stuff the setup. Nice little snap there, but ambitious shots at range. But yeah, they, they haven't really been able to find an opening in that, right? Like they've had the setup, you've been doing such a great job if you were NYSL this time. I mean, it comes down to Scrap. I'm not yeah, sure I don't, how I don't he know. got his two. Yeah, yeah, he does, and then you have Insight. You know, the one player who normally plays Cannon for NYSL the last couple of rounds has been Hydra. He's not there, so that cross over to P1 happens. And if Scrap loses that, I mean, more than likely those players are pushing forward, and it, that might not work out the same way for Insight. Yeah, Insight's probably the last alive. Yeah, yeah. So Scrap, we didn't see it, but some incredible gunfight wins, at least it looked like <laughs> on the kill feed. One more round for Ultra, though, and you bring this back to 1-1. One, one. And very slow on, on this defensive side and offense. Nobody really looking for anything, but this time it's going to be Kleenex. Gets up in the top dub. Crease open the door. Has Deddy popped. Hello, sir. How are you? Almost snapped this free to bomb planet. But here, a retake. And once again, I don't know how many rounds it's been. It's down to this man. He's able to find the first. He has Deddy to work with. He just came right on the defuse. And there we go. Scrap wins the gunfight. Hits. He trusts him. Ultra tied up. What a piece. Unbelievable, and you, uh, yeah, you nailed it, Hydra. I thought I was expecting like, T-Bomb Blackout, like, this guy was last alive every round. I kind of felt like he was going to make the play at times, but, I mean, it starts with that 2 before they're able to pull off the yes, you allow. New York did a couple, a couple rounds through, but then finally able to deal with their defensive setup. You, I don't know, make some big-game adjustments. From what you're seeing from NYSL over the course of it, you're able to pull off the dub. Yeah, I think both teams just pretty much eliminated, you know, anything off the start, didn't allow that to happen. NYSL, their, their defense looks solid, but the offense, Ultra just found those picks. They had to clean some things up there, maybe get Kismet and Priest a little bit more involved, or, or Hydra alongside with them, right? A lot of times when you're that island player, it could just be so tough to rely on you to make plays, because if you don't, well, you're the last alive. Well, uh, I mean, I think we thought this was one that was likely going to go the distance, and you see how the five maps will play out. Uh, I imagine not much has changed for your thought process here, Joe. Based no, I, I think uh, for a lot of people, you know, looking at this matchup, maybe you circle this this map three, this control, right? Two of the best control teams that we have in the league, and it's just been such a momentum shift for, for all the teams in the league. Who can now go up to one? Well, I think it's one of those things. I mean, a lot of teams like don't want to get to Fortress Control, right? But New York is one of those teams that's solid there. So we're going to end up on Hotel. But so far, I mean, you had an incredible map one. The map two, I know, wasn't that close, but you got to see some great adjustments, some nice individual moments, a good two before clutch, and these teams continue to go toe for toe. Coming up next, we got the control. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick break.
The Call of Duty League is presented by the GMC Hummer EV Pickup, the world's first all-electric super truck. Upgrade your game with the SCUP, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Hello there, welcome back to Texas here live from Esports Stadium and just our first map of mate first match of Major 3 as we get ready for our map 3 control, but excited to have fans in attendance. Uh, it's going to be a sold-out crowd over the course of the weekend as people are starting to filter in. Excited to see their hometown team, Optic Texas, get rolling. But, uh, I mean, last year it was a wild event. I'm expecting more uh, wacky. Oh, yeah, these guys, they get turned here. Yeah, yeah they do. They yeah. get real turned. They get real turned. They love Call of Duty. <laughs> I love Call of Duty, too. I'm right. I kind of be like dancing, dude. I'm going to start dancing, all right? Yeah, this is going to be it's gonna be awesome. But let's talk about this match so far. You're, you're tied up 1-1. One, one. Um, New York, obviously, a team that was able to win the first major, uh, looking to kind of regain that form. Uh, Toronto Ultra have seemed to have the potential at times, just falling a little bit short, but maybe this is the run. Maybe now with Hixie, you're able to do it, but you bring it back to 1-1, one, one, still work to do. Yeah, 100%. I, I think for New York, you know, Major 2, not the not the event that they wanted at all, right? Obviously, there was a lot of travel, travel issues, issues yeah. right? The weather coming in, it, they just felt like they couldn't get comfortable but here already, I mean, yeah, we, we knew this was going to be a tough matchup. The one time these teams did match up on land, it was that major one. It was all the way to a game five. They are two contenders. Well, I get it, though. Even with the travel thing, like, it's different. But even me as a commentator, like, I had the travel issues. I got in late. It just felt weird. Like, yeah, it felt weird. Just showing up, like, a day late, just kind of, like, getting anything's missing stuff. Like, I'm sure their, their skim pro scrim process was a little bit off. But this is uh, how the land records look. You got subliners a second, ultra it's fifth. So both teams have obviously been in the mix. You have the win if you are subliners, but ultra are wanting to be a team that, you know, at times been in that top two, top three conversation. They're battling to get back to that. Yeah, 100%. I, I mean, you know, you're fifth, but it's obviously five and four, 50%, you know, map win percentage. That means when they go deeper in the tournament, they're playing some of these teams like New York, you're, you're going the distance. And I mean, unfortunately for them, hasn't always gone their way. Well, let's take a look at Scrap. We're going to talk a bit about his stats before we wait for the map three. And this guy has been putting on. I mean, the confidence has been there. The gunny has been there. He is, uh, I don't know. I've just, I, I've been so happy to have his personality now in the league. Like, I love someone that's going to. Yeah, you love him. Right? Hate him, I think. People. Yeah, I, I love know. that stuff. We need, we need more of it. So it's been, uh, it's been awesome to have yeah, him. Yeah, you probably love him when he's yeah. not playing against you. It's yeah, probably, yeah, probably yeah. really what it is. But you can see number one overall control KD. And, we talk about hotel control between these two teams. It's the, the map they play the most. You have the best defensive team in Toronto Ultra going up against the best attacking team in NYSL. Might have a round five on our hands. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if that was the case based on the first hard point, but fist bumps are out. Players ready to get rowdy. Hotel control loading on up. It's everyone is making sure they get fluids. You got water in the crowd, you know, stay hydrated. It's very important. It's going to be a long day. We got a lot of matches. Get watered up. Hey, you do that. I, I'm, I was on my second bottle already here. Hey, you, do that. you have a beer, dude. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Just, just, it can just be liquid, whatever. <laughs> Enjoy it, beverage. Enjoy the matches. Is now we go into the map three tied up 1 1. Scrap, you saw those stats. They can be so good. On the defensive of side here. of things. This is a fake here over towards A. Only two players. They're trying to they're trying to find skies. They're going to catch them off. So two players over towards A. They want to get early progression done at B, but a big gunfight there for Priesta across the map towards Connector. It was a bit of a fake, you know, something maybe you see in, in a little bit of search and destroy. But New York shut it down for now. It's, it's going to be three dead for Ultra, make it all four. A nice transition defense over to B. And so this is going to be a flip of their best, right? You said New York has attacking. Toronto was the best defensive, right? So we'll, yep. we'll see how maybe some of that comes into play in the following round. But right now, Bloodbath is the kill feed. Just lighting it up. Trophy out for Scrap. Launched to the point. He'll look to hold that. Is spawning close will be Hixie. The other two trying to control mid-map, and your pre-aim just a little bit too high. The shots all go over for Kleenex. Now the Collapse able to come in. Scrap still trying to finesse around his trophy. Still takes damage from the nade, and the pinch comes in, but Kleenex right off the spawn, able to take down two. And this is all you're trying to do if you're NYSL, just find pick after pick inside of A, and really just waste resources. 
for Toronto All-Star, right? Just hit the connector, find a kill. Now wait for your teammate, then here comes the rest of NYSL, but a team kill. Gonna flip the odds for Toronto All-Star. That A point is going to be done. A minute is added on, and we're headed over to B. I feel like we see that so often, those like corner peaks there. You're just like, you know, pretty able a little deeper if you're in AR. The, the time he comes in, Priest takes off the back of his skull, but you get several kills here. I get three in a row, if you are all a chance you're going to start to stack really one guy that's going to be set up close. You're going to get one through the cross. It's Hydra. It's got to make the play. Kleenex is going to pop his head off. They're finding all the kills on the point. Just a second or so to go, and that is a quick offensive victory for Ultra. Just a three down in transition. I think Hydra's just left there like, okay, what do I do? Wait for the boys or try to pull off a miracle? Yeah, and I mean, that's just props to, uh, you know, Toronto Ultra, right? NYSL, really, you know, you send those resources over to A, but when that push dies, you're going to spawn up over towards Spa. The goal is to try to cross the bedroom, right? Get one or two players over there. So when they work their way over across the middle of the map, it, it's difficult to do. But Hixie found two kills. He was the player that really opened up the point for them. Then they're able to stack it. That is just beautifully done by Toronto Ultra. It feels like bedrooms, like, everything. Like, if you've got control of it, Keep control and keep eyes on that mid cross because somebody's coming eventually, right? Like, it's just such a crucial part of the map, especially in those transition moments. But NYSL trying to answer back, talked about their pedigree on the attack and these controls. Can Hydra make a play with Teddy? He's just starting to clear his lanes. And you know, I mean, really, there's, there's just one player over at A. They're thinking, let's, let's work our way over towards B. Let's just leave Kismet over there. Can we find the ticker too? There's three players. Brent YSL here. No one really with a map presence besides Hixie with a sub. So they're able to catch, catch Toronto Ultra off guard, but scrap it inside with the ARs. Able to find three. Able to oh, find all okay. four. And you only get the one point of progress finished on A. You don't get the second bit done. It was close, but Kismet was by himself, and you don't even get one bar here. And no progress done. We're right back onto the A point to just pause the clock. They still have the life advantage. With Strap, you can see at 85 now, having himself a, a map. This is why he's the number one control KD in the league. So now we look right back over to A. Looks like you're just trying to set up kind of the mid transition trap and one player deep. I he's going to be a trap. And he's actually going to take the fight. He's able to pick him off, but right before he finishes it, maybe a difference of a couple of seconds as they have to rally over. They get the extra minute now put on. Live wise, what? You're 20 versus 20. So you're all tied up. Now, how clean can subliners make this across? Not going to happen clean at all. You're set up if you're ultra. They get into their prime positions, they get to their spots, they shut it down with the Vaznet. And Hydra's just been lurking over here, right? He worked his way up through the middle of the map, just trying to find any opening. Maybe they haven't found him. Do they know Hydra's in this spot? Well, he's gonna give them bedroom control. That's gonna be two dead on both sides. And he just wants to stay alive here. Just play his life, make sure his teammates can get to him. Uh, we were just talking about the importance of bedroom. Even though his teammates all die on the other side. Oh! All the timing of that makes you want to throw up. Hydra gets dropped right as he goes to pop the daddy. It's Kleenex that's able to get in behind his own dead silence play. And what a snap there. You talk about the sense that this man plays at. Priest that just gets melted off the mid map. Yeah, the rest of NYSL there, they're going to try to hit this flank. And well, Insight's yeah. got it locked down. He's got it. Almost finds the third. Scrap off a of spawn. Maybe you're going to try that. But when you have Kismet in that position, you can see where Insight is going to spawn. So across the map, this is why bed Bedroom is so crucial. Because when you lose spot, you have to work all the way through the middle of the map defensively. But Kleenex continues to play his life. He's on six in a row. He's got Hixie with them. Just taking their time, using their teamwork. So far, so good for Ultra. Now seven lives remaining for NYSL. Yeah, it feels like once you get to this spot, you're kind of playing like a solo game. Man. You are? Yeah, like you really, really are. He's on seven in a row. Like, teammates, do your thing. I'm patrolling, I'm trying to get the sound cues, I'm making plays, and he is doing just that. Up to eight in a row, 16 and seven. A map round here for Kleenex that has been a thing of beauty. Gets a couple of hit markers, but quite can't quite finish it. A couple seconds left here in the round stop. Yeah, everybody's gotta be on a, a bit of a heat check, right? You got the streak, it's fine, it is fine. And that is why that team is the best team defensively in the league on this map. You just saw it right there. And now up 2-0 oh, on the map, one round away. Think about what that like horrible timing with Hydra like led to. Yeah, you're, like, you're just stuck. Yeah, and I mean, maybe he doesn't get the kill without the bad timing because Kleenex is flying at him with Daddy. He might still drop him, but like,
that led to what, eight in a row for Kleenex from that spot? Well, it's certainly tougher when you have some machine thing in your hand that you have to activate, I don't know, and you just get I caught. I still don't get the whole I don't get speaker it. box. No, I don't, I don't really, I can't wrap my head around it at all. I think actually. I told, I something in the shoes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, you're right. Futuristic pumps. Or is Crap. Ooh, clean with a snap there at mid map. Glad three down real fast after scraps. They follow it up with Kleenex and Pixie. You get straight onto the point here at A. Now, what do you want to do if you are in YSL? Scrap mid map. He puts some pretty good tags in the two players. Doesn't take out either. Yeah, and for Ultra, this is a question, right? Do you do what NYSL does? Do you only leave one player on A, right? To try to get map control while that tap's coming on through, but they're gonna leave two players on it, make sure they have the extra minute. Now can you get better control like we just talked about? You're gonna have Priesta and Hydra work their way across. The rest of Ultra are gonna work the flank as Scrap tries to set up the pinch. Scrap's able to find the first over towards Benjamin. Now you're gonna see where they spawn out as NYSL if they can get spot control. You see Kleenex jump to try and like get outside without being seen on the cross, and then he's able to get the jump on one. A little bit of movement there from Kleenex, but the kills do go the way of NYSL. Follow him. Yep, now Hydra's set up here, just trying to play his life. Get them spawning over towards Kitchen side, and they really just have to make a decision. What do they want to go for? What do they want to go for? It looks like they're going to wrap a couple of players back and fight for bedroom. Tries to avoid the stun, but good luck with that. Wow, to slow down. Right over to Hick Hick. Lost a little bit of game assist. He lost the line inside of the player as well. Trying to get this one done in bed. Scrap is tagged up. A stun is his teammate next to him, I believe, but a trophy is able to get down. They're up for a second. An inside just saves his life. I believe someone came through on the flank. Inside just able to get that done. Hydra holding close to death. He's able to shut it down. That's two before he drops. But now back in the bedroom goes Hixie. Yeah, but this whole time, right, Ultra have been here. You can see what this does. You're fighting from the desk, right? So you're gonna have a, a pinch maybe through main. Maybe the nades connect. You wanna try to get across over to bedroom, but Ultra's making sure that cannot happen as they fight from couches, fight from that area. Finally, Hydra able to get towards the bottom. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like step one's already done, right? If you're fighting from there the entire time, you're in a pretty good spot. Part of the reason they've slowly been cut out, and you're up six lives now. 14 versus eight if you're ultra. You got a chance here. Four and three on the map. Three with the Bulldog. Oh! Says not quite yet. The kills come through. Nearly a snapback onto a third, but Kismet was fueling himself there for a moment. You, I mean, that's actually a pretty big chunk. Well, it was a three life difference for a moment, but... You well, brought it back. Now it's just time. And look, with Hydra in this spot, no. they have to work all the way across the map. They're gonna have Kleenex working a wide flank. Can they do it? One -on -one Can they do it? That's gonna stagger the push. Now 15 seconds left. Now maybe with that, it's a push through main. Three is like, I'm getting out of oh. here. Hits the belly flop, able to step on the one, almost the second. But he buys enough time for his subs to get into the position. Kismet with another multi-kill, able to take them down. It looks like they're gonna hold on. It was a close wow. one, but New York survived. Yeah, with the map on the line. You're seeing what it was like a 14 to eight advantage. I think you had around 45 seconds to a minute at that point. You're feeling pretty good if you are ultra, but like, you know, you were kind of highlighting how, yeah, the fights were happening in couches, like they were in a good spot, at least you're battling from there, but like they never got to the next step really, right? Never like they got never, there. They yep. never really got like a clean three or four down to actually take the fight to the point, get bedroom control and get set up. So even though the skirmish was in a better place than it could have been, at least you're not getting like chopped out on the transition, this took too long. You, know, you never got that movement forward. Yeah, you never got a player over towards those double tests, right? You, you know, you get an AR on that heady, good luck getting out of that, but you can never get multiple players on that main point. So cross NYSL, but Back to defense for Ultra. Pretty spread out on both sides. As well, just some skirmishes going down on both points. Hydra now on four in a row. Gonna get on, caption A. He's got a heavy presence here from Ultra. Waiting for the opening. Maybe a one on one to take on the other side of the map. Flurry of kills. Kismet last up. Trying to dance, trying to snake his way to victory. Hydra right back to it. He was on four in a row, I think, but he will drop. So no success on the point quite yet for NYSL, but now they should be able to close this out, get the extra minute. Um, 
pretty pretty even alive, so not much of a change there. I thought maybe it took a little edge for your roll trip, but not, not much. Yeah, I mean, talk about one really the slang for NYSL. The difference here, look at the ARs. I mean, Freesta and Sky just being shut down right now, and a big part of that is Scrap. 25, 26, and 17 from the rookie, from the star on this map, as Freesta just trying to work the flank. But this is going to be difficult, right? Because you work through the middle of the map, all four players from NYSL. You have inside just kind of lurking towards bedroom. Phoenix is going to cross to help him out. YSL being the best attacking team on this map. Can we see some of that success start to open up? Yeah. We're going against the best defense in Ultra, and the defense shines through for now. Hixie and Kleenex combined for three. They clear it out. Kleenex working to get back to his spots. Yeah, I mean, Kleenex, he just goes hunting, right? He's trying to find a push. He's really just like the scout for the team to see where that push is coming from, but he ends up just basically taking care of it himself. Then they trap them all the way towards back kitchen. Hixie's still alive. He's able to find another one. You have what Hydra and Kitchen behind enemy lines. And now they are gonna go. Trying to get on the point, just pausing the clock, trying to mess with the defense. But it is just too good right now from Ultra Scrap. Just able to read it. The stunt connects, finds the kill. Up to 30 now. And just looking for more. Now New York, no, they don't have a lot of opportunities. It looks like they're trying to set up a big pinch here. Look at number seven, Kismet, who's going the whole way around. You know you've got maybe one or two really good shots at this, so they're going to take their best effort. They're looking to get that bedroom side control. Go. Kismet trying to look for the opening, too. Freesta is able to get one. Kleenex now lining up the street. Okay, you get on the B. You get on the B. I don't think they have a trophy. So he does not have a trophy, so they're going to get off of it. But you have the kill. Scrap able to at least find one. Still, inside is alive as well, so they cannot get these players out of bedroom. Can the subliners, is the Ultra, the two players are gonna spawn all the way out. They're just trying to pause the clock right now, trying to find the gunfight wins, but Ultra are giving them nothing. They are giving them absolutely nothing. 10 seconds to go. And it's just gonna be Hydra. Really sitting on the point, just playing from the block. The collapse is gonna come through. That's Kleenex is able to pick up the kill from behind. Now sub 10 seconds to go. Remaining in this round, Ultra look to lock it down, take back-to-back -back maps, and take a 2-1 advantage in this series. Pause for a second, but that will do it. Ultra, the defense simply too strong. This is precious stuff, honestly. I mean, it really is. You have a lot of opportunities, a lot of chances. They can just never crack through Get the subliners. You get a couple of players back to box. What that does, right, the defensive players then spawn out all the way top side of the map, top chandelier, over towards that store. And that can be tough, but the players at Bedroom, they just play their life so well, finding a pick, running away, just wasting the offense's time. Yeah, I thought when they were developing that big push, I didn't see how it ended up playing out because we ended up popping to the street. But when Kiznip, Kiznip was going the whole way around, like, it looked like he was sort of making plays towards bedroom, and then by the time he came out of the streak, he was basically on the point. So I can't really, find him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's what it felt like, right? At least when he came out of the streak, I was like, I, I assumed he was going to get a gunfight. We're going to see him kill the kill. Well, and, and really, what you're trying to do is kind of bait those players out of the position by being on the point. Yeah. yeah. But they could never find that kill. But it's scrap again, 33 and 20. Kleenex. He continues his monster series, almost 3,000 damage. And again, on the other side, it's I mean. The ARs could not get going for NYSL. Frieza, not the best map from him. Yeah, something about, you know, it, it, I, I think I think a sub duo is probably one of the hardest things to figure out for a team. Um, it's always been kind of wild. You have such, whereas like AR, I know, if you're talking like take the flex out of the position, just like main AR, there's a lot of similarities how people play it. But like subs, I think there's so much diversity in how subs will play the particular role. Like finding that correct pairing is so difficult. For whatever, for whatever reason, with Standy, I mean, Kleenex maybe was playing it away. Maybe it wasn't quite as comfortable for him or wasn't just out eating and flying around like he wants to. But something about having Hixie here, it just seems like, yeah, old Tobias just out there soaring, man. Yeah, playing his game. I mean, even then, I mean, Hixie's stat, stat line isn't crazy, but he has some of these big moments where he's finding well, multi-kills and making sure he's doing what he needs to do for his team to win. Listen, man, before, before Symphony BC existed, <laughs> for the most part, you had a sub that was like more of the OBJ type sub, like, I don't know, like a Looney or somebody that, that, that had like a 0.9 to a 1. Like, that was kind of normal. And then your other sub, Slaying sub could, yeah. could kind of pop off. I guess that's how it was for so long. Then Symphony BC came around and like, it's almost like the expectation is, oh, well, everybody can fry. That's not really the case. 
typically there's a bit more of a give and take. Yeah, no, there's really only one sip and a BZ yeah, yeah. in this league, but there you can see it. Ultra 3-1 in the map, now up 2-1 in the series. But the good thing for New York, you're going to Hydro, you are undefeated on this map on the year. You don't play it too often, but it's looking good. 4-0, can they get this to a map 5? And was this the one where, uh, I'm trying to, our, our stats notes that we had come through, that it was like the rotations are really pristine, right? For New York, was it? Yeah. That, that's, that's where like they, they would really lead the way, and we'll have to see how the, how the breaks are going to go down. But we're going to take a look uh, at Hydro, just talking about Hydro uh, as we get ready for this map four. And um, yeah, he's had a lot of great plays. You know, he had some interesting situations in the search where he was like last alive in a ton of situations, but almost close to pulling off some heroic moments. But when you talk about top five hard point KDs this season, he's sitting at number two. And all the way from France, I believe we've got Hydra's mom in attendance. Welcome. That's absolutely amazing. Hello there. Welcome, I hope you're having a blast. It's gotta be amazing to watch your son on the main stage. And I can imagine uh, just the process of this with him traveling here to compete. I I'm sure it has been a very, very stressful thing with the family. That's awesome to see here. Oh, you're a boy. I, you, know, you know, he's all the way over here competing. But I miss his family, missing his friends. So it is awesome to see that she is happy to be here. And yeah, we're happy to have her. <laughs> she's like, get cool. this date camera off me, <laughs> right? please. She's like, all right, that's enough. That's enough, bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, back <laughs> to my son, back to my son. I love it, I love it. But now let's see if he's got the mom buff. Let's see if he's able to pop off here on the map four. Because you've got, uh, I mean, we've seen teams obviously go to losers and make the run. Uh, historically, it's been a thing. Uh, just a month or so back we saw the thieves are able to do it but it's not an easy thing you want to put yourself in a winner's bracket position to make this run but there's some of the stats you were kind of talking about and so yeah it's a whole percentage that was not yeah for nysl like when they get rotated when they get set up it is it is incredible yeah 90 percent hold and that's pretty tough to do on this map, man when you talk about some of these hills you know more, most importantly p3 p5 spawns get get a little bit crazy, get a it's little like, bit wonky. It's one of like, the weirdest maps ever, because sometimes it seems such like, like a traditional Call of Duty map, but then like, you you've got an entire underwater uh, system. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on. We love swimming, we sure do. We're, we're gonna see some water routes. What do you think they added like, like, you know, we have AI and Warzone, they had like piranhas or like great whites. Yeah, I'm down, let's put do it. down there and you get through the swim route. It's like, okay, do the swim route, but Jaws might bite off your legs. I could see that probably in the next one. Yeah, maybe. I'm down. Hey, what, Shout you got a gunfight, dude? <laughs> like, punch a shark in the face. Dude, so, all right, uh, back to the action star. We have distracted by AI shark. We Kismet. Chopping out one priest there to follow it up with two. Trying to push all the way through will be Kismet, but not going to happen as it'll get stuffed out. And then quickly there for the trade will be Hydra, but still spawning deep. You've got Ultra. Yeah, I mean, you take this though if you're NYSL. You're spawning on the left side of the map. Ultra is just playing very conservative, trying to hold spawns for P2. But Hydro, he goes swimming. Nice little dive. Gets on up, able to find the first. But his teammates not there yet as they're going to take some long routes all the way through. That is just a beautiful breaststroke out of Kismet. It is. He is working that flank. Look at that man go. Surprise! Hello, that is going to be creepy. And it's now, the set up the pinch, the spawn comes in. Now, can they break? They gotta break sooner rather than later, and oh. that does not help you out. Oh. It's like, yeah, so you can forget the water. <laughs> you know, we had that, uh, what was it, the stats we had in Black Ops 3, where it's like, uh, time spent wall running, that thing, I need time spent swimming. I don't know why I sell that get on well, they will take that 30 seconds, but I, I guess you take the first 30 if you're ultra, because now you have rotation all the way through towards P3 as Kismet. We're just going to do it again. We're going to take a long route. It's dangerous, too, with the gun dangling like that. They get caught on, like, some sort of underwater rock, and then you drown, Joe. That could, yeah, you, you got to watch out for that. Water safety, Joe. I studied it in the universities. Kismet with the water route. What could he find? Inside, just playing his life. His teammates, though, getting taken down around him. As P3 control so far, so good here for Ultra. Shout onto the next, but scrap with the movement there. Makes it difficult for the centering to be on point. He wins the fight. Now Hixie in the chaos, just looking up, down, left, right. Is he swimming in behind me? I don't know. I'm going to keep popping and snapping. As he finds the kills, uh, about to be maybe a lead change here. As it'll go back over to Ultra and up from the top rope. 
comes everybody soaring through when they kind of line up in front of Scrap. He's taking the damage from the nade, so his screen is just a cluster, but he's able to keep the shots on point. And now you can see the spawns come in. So two players spawn behind, one player spawns behind that player. So Kismet, he's going to find two kills, but he is going to get taken down. That is where things just get crazy at T3 as Hixie wants to fly forward. As we rotate on over, back over towards Ruin side, you're gonna have Priesta all the way in the back. You're gonna have Hydra over towards Broken. Skies does spawn all the way out. Well, Kleenex is going to read that by early control for the subliners. Just trying to get the tags in if you were scrap, but you're not seeing much. The nade though able to connect. It's Hixie, it's two! Hixie actually is three! And he's like, all right, I'm soaring forward off of that. Unfortunately, it's Sky still top the table to get the angle, but it's Hixie that makes the play to open up the point. And now Kleenex finding kills on the crossing transition, snapping back to deal with spawners. The subs doing it all right now for Ultra. Yeah, that was a great play by Hixie to find that opening. And then they just left, let Skies back there, right? They don't allow him to make a play as NYSL. They get some split spawns that come on through. Now Hixie on five in a row, one away from that cruise. But he's just gonna take that route. On rotation towards P5, you already have insight on the hill and Scrap all the way in the back. I think Scrap the players won a fight on too. Yeah, I think he already killed one. He was on the real early rotation. I forget who it was, but he was able to pick up one, so he puts them in a position to look at this low map onslaught coming in from subliners. They are looking for the flub on forward through the water. A rocks go scrap, screaming it though, will be the subliner side. They were able to take down three, I believe, still a battle on the point. And look at this, I mean, he's spawning out. Like number two, and Hicks, he's like right between two players. He's able to shoot one in the back. Then he gets shot in the back. Yeah, it's uh... <laughs> yeah, P3, P5, that's where, that's where things <laughs> just get a little bit weird. Yeah, with the spawns, but Ultra, they get on the hill now. You have everyone from NYSL spawning out. So a 40 point lead. And we talked about just sort of the rotations for NYSL, but a couple of breaks for Ultra. Oh! And put them in a driver's seat with Skies. Almost connects on. Yeah, my guy's looking like a ballerina. Just dancing around inside. Nearly the triple. Centering there from Kismet, but it's going to be the headshot multiplier through four scraps. So good luck with that gun fight. The advantage. Growing a bit. Now up to 50. Skies just playing from this dominant heady at times. You can get up on the bridge, but not gonna last long. Pistol out, that's the advantage of having a pistol in the back pocket. You go swimming, you can take those shots down low, able to find one. Yeah, you gotta have a pistol if you're gonna take those routes. Just gives you that advantage, Hydra. I mean, every player we go to, I'll tell you what, I'd never take these routes. Never, I'm gonna have to start. Oh no, I'm just too impatient to get in the water here. Yeah. I'm not a swimmer, Joe. Even if I got the body for it. <laughs> but also with a 45 point lead. New York though, they have spawns for P2 right now on the hill, they can get them right back into it. But right through the front, Hixie having himself a map 20 and 11, now two in a row. And see, this is, you know, people were maybe hard on Hixie at times because the stats weren't there, but what did you just say? Like those moments where he needs to step up, he has it. It's happening right now within that map, but another man that's trying to get the heroics through, it is Hydra, the snap there, but just get second shot in. Not able to win that fight. But 20 and 12 for Pixie. I mean, where would the lead start really with that three piece onto the point earlier? Yeah, now you, this, is, this needs to be the response for NYSL. They are down 50 points, down 2 1 in the series. Let's go to a listen in with NYSL. What could be in the back? Oh, he's in the back. Oh, 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 I don't see anything. They're gonna go I'll back see right. Any water. They're one stop. Stop right there. Nice. Playing full right. One more top. Top out. Top out. Top out. Top out. Top out. Nice. They can see the back. Okay, we're missing two. No, yeah, yeah. Nah, you can't play so well. They can just spawn the other one. Yeah, I can see you double check. Yeah, I'm gonna be on this. Water's open. I'm, I'm in the hut. I'm in the hut. Yeah, okay. They're gonna take water out. They're gonna look at the deep. Try to look deep, yeah. Yeah, one's on me. Don't. I don't see him down. He could be like bottom down. Stun me. Stun me. P5. I have all the back. I have all the back. All my huts. Stun me. P5. Wait. High up. High up. Yellow back. Yellow back. In the back. Scrap. He's blocking. He's in yeah, blue. He's in blue out. right now. Everyone's playing. Stay alive, red. red. You're good. You're good. You're good. One's in the back. Scrap top. Okay. Nice. Grab one more in the back. One more top, red. Go next. Top, 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 top red. Top red. Top red. Top red. One stop. Right. Right. Spawn in the back. Spawn in the back. I got some P5. I got some P5. I got some P5. I'm throwing. I'm throwing. I'm throwing. I'm dead. 
He's left side time at one stop bridge. And the comms are all right, but he's having a little bit of frustration maybe with some of the play draft, but also the three piece from Kleenex. They just get wiped off the board again. It felt like they were a little in the blender. I mean, I, I heard them getting called out, getting stunned more than I heard anything else. Yeah, they were in the blender, because this guy is popping off. I mean, Hinksy and Kleenex, the sub duo, are taking over Hydro. And that's just what can happen, right? And one of those sub players Wait. takes a route, makes a play, a multi-kill goes in. They had the P2 set up, but Kleenex just goes right on through. Was it Kleenex and now, like 12 and 11 when Hinksy got the 20? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did. It was just that P2 P3 off, right there. Yeah, just goes off as he was on a seven spree, and now they are in the driver's seat of the series. I feel like he's had a spree in every single map. They can win it here with 3-1 and move on within this winner's back bracket, but it's scrap for now. Dialed in, just set up. Kleenex now with the streak he's able to earn. Let's call on the cruise. Bare minimum, you get information. Do you hit a trophy? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. How do you feel about the concept, Joe, of uh, streaks just not really doing anything for you when you're in a... Yeah, it can be tough. No, yeah, I'm not, a, not a huge fan of it, but, uh, well, I mean, hey, what can you do? Um, yeah, I think we saw it's like 20% of uh, cruise missiles are successful. It just is, the, is what it is right now, but, yeah, it doesn't turn into much. And behind that, now if you're NYSL, you're only down around 40 points. They're bringing it back. Now you think maybe the comms starting to calm a little bit. Feel that score will get a little bit closer. The speaker is out though, the radio ping. Maybe heard and it was. Inside able to pick it up. <laughs> so he's just hanging out now, just on top of the rush, trying to play his life. A clean setup so far for all. So they deal with the players on the pitch, but Hydra trying to do what he can from inside the hill, able to find the first, the movement on point back and forth, finessing his life away as Skies finds the other two. And now just look at this. Here we go. You get this time, and it is a very close to a tie game. It felt like Ultra were blowing the wheels off of this one, but not the case now. Subliners have made their stand. Second by second back into it. Scrap able to take down two. But Kismet back into the point. A team kill through for Skies, but they get the rest of the kills behind that. Still, though, sitting inside the point, despite all the kills, we get the final couple of seconds. It was Hixie that was actually in the point. And now we focus on rotation. There's about 25 points separating the two teams now, Joe. Yeah, Are you going for a swift aim? Just go ahead and drown. I was I, I don't know if I, what accident was. But now you, you can see P2 control over to Toronto Ultra. You have Hixie, top steady. He's going to try to take a route. And while P1 control, they're just playing patient. They're allowing them to have the spawns for now. They know that Ultra's gonna have to get aggressive. They do not want to lead change and come in and put beautiful shots out of Hydra. Demon. With the fast snap. But Scrap and Insight do deal with the players off the hill. Sneaky, sneaky! Hydra continues to finesse. Finally, the Chow not gonna pay off as two players will be there. Down six. Now it's NYSL. Kismet right back to for the wall bangs. Lovely there from inside to take him out. The Skies POV we go. Through on the cross. One, two, lining up for Skies. Lead change. NYSL now in front. What a turnaround this has been. Okay, on the last P2, it was Kleenex that really made things messy. This time Hydra trying to do what he can. Able to find the first, back down for a swim. Trying to find any yeah. other players. Where does the spawn come in? It's a little bit split right now. But there we go, Ultra deal with the first push, but not out of this quite yet. They both teams couldn't win it here on this hill. So NYSL, they are going to need a break. This guy starts to work top broken. Preset Pretty able tough. to find two. Can they get on the point? Scrap! You had Kleenex spawning out so deep, but Scrap just puts him down. Priest though, still on his bit of a streak, and he was able to get to the back. Now look for the break on to the point. You got a two on two here for a moment. Scrap gets a double with the bass. He gets a triple with attack, a double with the bass, and then Hicksy to pick it up, but subliners get in for now. So you're no longer able to win it if you are on the other side. We got to think about the upcoming rotation. Yeah, Scrap, he's gonna call on the crew. He's gonna get all the info on the rotation. He's calling out Kismet right now, right in the middle of the map. We have to deal with him on the hill. He's not gonna find a kill, but they know where everyone is. But did they find Kismet? There it is. Clear, he's able to take him down. Now, 18 seconds left. That's the best part of the crew, so you get the info, right? <laughs> get the info, but here comes the spawns. Close spawns, Scrap oh, spawns all the way out. Oh, God. So he is out of this fight, NYSL. They're gonna get on the hill. Pixie, he's gonna deal with so many players trying to play his life. This is where it gets a little bit wonky. Another one though from Hixie. Can he be the hero? 
Kismet swimming away with his life for now. Just trying to get out and reposition. That's gonna get picked up, but Sinsight is able to do it. Three points needed for Ultra, and they've taken this series. Hey, Pixie, that's making the plays! And Pixie pops off lane, and Goldthro with the dub. I'll, I'll tell you what. Considering, like, when you saw Scrap spawning out the whole way, the close one came in for New York, and they, like, cleared him off the point, I was like, oh, my God, they're going to lose on that. Yeah, but I, I think maybe because Hixie's two-piece, he pulls NYSL forward. I think they got a couple of spawns yep, in that yep. back hut. Oh, that's the one you, you said it gets wild. It does. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Hixie, just the fact that he's able to stay alive, find those two kills. That allowed sort of the, yeah, the chaos to ensue. Well, you think, I mean, what stands out to me is, like, at least for Ultra, you, you know, you have the Hixie 3 on the point early in the game to get the opening. Then Whatever the hell Scrap did at the point with, like, five kills to get this streak there. Kleenex, that wild stretch, and then Hixie at the end. I mean, New York had their moments, but it just felt like bigger ones for Ultra. No, I think, like, the, as a, a team play, New York, they got themselves back into it with so those nice rotations we were talking about, some key plays, you know, inside of P5 and P1. But it was the individual moments for Ultra. Yeah. That was the difference, and that's why Hydro can be a tough map for, for some of our teams. Well, it just seemed like whenever... And I'm saying, I'm saying every time, but like whenever there was like a big individual moment for New York at times, it felt like it was almost the same time it was happening on the Ultra side. Like when, when Priesta got what you thought was going to be three to open and instantly Scrap gets three. Some of the big plays from Hydra, like it's, we're watching it happen, the kill feed, like Kleenex is getting two or three. Like it felt like there was sort of a, they balanced out some of the big moments from YSL and didn't let it snowball too much. Yeah, just that early lead, they were able to hang on to it. It gets a little bit mixy, a couple of cruise missiles. Well. Give them the info. And well, there you can see Toronto Ultra 3 1 this series. It was a very close hard point, but I think, you know, the, the control, especially, I mean, Ultra, they were just a step ahead. Yeah, and you've got to feel good too, because I know, I know Hicks has been with the roster a bit, but like, got to feel like just getting better and better. Uh, you know, just more time with the roster, now getting the reps on land. I, I love what I was seeing from that sub duo, but we've got Bryce on the main stage scrap with some ludicrous moments down this stretch. Can't wait to hear about him. All right, thank you very much. Yes, joining me here on the main stage scrap. Uh, first of all, before we go much further, let's start talking about the hard points. Uh, the first one was incredibly close. He didn't get away with it. What do you think went wrong in those final moments? Uh, well, you know, Har uh, Hotel Hardpoint, you know, we call it the Bermuda spawns, you know, it's just spawning bedrooms, spawning kitchen, lobby, so it was kind of unfortunate, but, you know, it was, it was war at the end, so. And it happened again in the other Hardpoint. Let's talk about the end of Hydro. All the way, like, P1 and P2 was an absolute blitz. How did you guys regain that moment? Because Hydra was holding down L for so long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Hydra had uh, our dome control. Um, you know, we just had to slow down, get some kills, just progress on the map uh, slowly. And, you know, P1 didn't go our way, so we had to rotate for P2. And, you know, I just started slamming at the end, so, <laughs> yeah, that was it. You certainly did. Uh, let's talk a little bit. So there has been comments made about your, uh, how well you guys have been playing from online to land. What adjustments have you made? What's different coming into Major 3? I don't really know what's different. People say that, but it's all good. Like, you know, we take it on the chin. They can say what they want, but, you know, we're coming for it. All right, I like it. There's also been a lot made about Basically, everybody's trying to set you up as a rivalry with everyone in the league. Obviously, you're one of the most outspoken rookies we've ever had. How do you feel about basically everybody trying to take shots at you every single time you get up here? Yeah, you know, it's fun. It, it makes the matches way more, you know, mean way more. And, uh, yeah, it just gets the heart pumping. It's just a fun time all around. So, yeah, I, I, like, I like it. Awesome. And kind of last thing coming into this as well. You guys haven't managed to get to a major chip this year, even in your rookie year. What's been the main thing you've been concentrating on on the run-up to major number three? Yeah, you know, our S&D wasn't really up to the last two majors. Um, we had to fix some things on the hard point, but I feel like controls in the right now. So, you know, we just fixed up a little bit on all of our game modes, and, you know, we, we're looking good coming into this major. Oh, you certainly are. It was a fantastic first game. All right, thank you. Give it up for Scrappy here in Texas. And we'll throw this one back over to our desk to break it down.
Scrappy getting the job done along with Toronto Ultra. I think for a lot of us, we predicted probably going game five, going the distance. All we got was four maps. Toronto Ultra, the number one seed, nameless, and they look like the number one seed. Absolutely. Toronto played great, capitalizing on the mistakes of New York. We saw a few of those throughout the series in the search and destroys a couple times New York throwing their life away. Toronto was able to capitalize. And then also the control. Once again, last series, it was the difference. This time, it was the difference as well. They absolutely smoked them on that. We saw the defensive stands that Toronto had. Had multiple times New York trying to go around the back. It's just not working. Toronto, the comms are too good. Well, New York Subliners is a team that I thought was going to be very strong, and I think they were strong in a lot of different moments. They managed to get that hotel hard point just by four points. That was that really set the precedence to what we could expect in this series, Allie. Yeah, absolutely. I think that hotel hard point was a banger. It's not very often we see hotel end on P1, and I think it was just a little bit of the knowledge of the spawns that kind of edged out New York Subliners in that map number one. But I think that map number two fortress yep. for me was really impressive for Toronto Ultra simply because, I mean, they're not a very strong offensive team when it comes to search and Troy, and it really was that round number eight where Scrap was on that A side, gets those first two opening bloods onto New York Subliners, and that gives them the edge there when it comes to the offensive rounds as it was back and forth majority of the time. And what's crazy about what Ali's talking about is like, New York had first blood in that round, then the New York trying to like bang out sight and Scrap finds a two piece, just mistakes there. Yeah. And then earlier we saw them as well, like New York's on offense and Kismet tries to chase that kill outside of open with Scrap was tucked away in the corner. And I know what their strat was there. They're like, All right, I'm gonna hit open. The guy map's gonna try to kill me, Hydra. You kill him as I do that, right? So sort of over-challenging, they throw that round away. So you lose a couple rounds there, and then, you know, in the hard points as well, Toronto got outslayed by a million on that map one and still kept it so competitive. Uh, it's a good indicator of where this team is at strategically. They're sound. And I think, honestly, the Hydra hard point, we've seen so many big pop-off moments in that certain sense as well. We talk about the outslay, but they find the kills where they need to. P2, we've seen Scrap go on that seven spree at the end. Yes. insane. Kleenex finding a three to break it on another occasion. Yeah. P2 was a bit mixy, but it always felt like Ultra were the ones who came out on top of the end. Yeah, it felt like, especially in that map four, you could really see Ultra, they're firing on all cylinders. Everybody's doing their job, but we got to move into a, a special moment. Let's look at our scuff play of the game, because I think for me, man, it was all Scrap. Scrap was tearing it up. We got to go straight into that map number four time. I know you were hyped up, baby. You mentioned that seven spree going into P2. Talk to me about it. Uh, I mean, it was insane, but looking over towards the control and what he was doing, yeah, so good at playing that bedroom side when he needs to, finding the kills and slaying out for the squad. But yeah, that, I mean, we could talk about the Hydro so, so long, but really impressive in the control as well. Yeah, and I think a big turnaround as well, even though they beat uh, New York Subliners last time, they went up against them. They were heavily outplayed that time too. Scrappy had a .93 overall in that matchup, but a .8 in control specifically. They rematch up today, he drops a 1.65. So I definitely think we're seeing a scary <laughs> scrap at the beginning of this, of this major. <laughs> Well, we highlighted him for a reason. He was one of our players to watch, and I'm sure going to be one of our players to watch throughout the major. But we got a cool thing coming out from Upper Deck. You can start your digital collection. I love this idea. We got our 2021 Call of Duty e-trading cards by Upper Deck, the official trading card partner of the CDL. Collect your favorite teams and players on UpperDeckEPAC.com, or you can scan the QR code on screen. Our first series is done, but we have a second series ready to go, or just about ready to go, Seattle Surge versus is LAG, number one place, number eight. We'll see who ends up ahead after the break.
And welcome back to major number three, the Optic Texas major here at the Esports Arena in Arlington. I'm Taylor Reflection Snowball filling in for Pocket this weekend. And I couldn't be more excited to be with each and every single one of you. Our second series, Seattle Surge versus LAG, about to be underway. And that's going to be a great one for a number of different reasons. Of course, got Merck on the desk Hello. this time around. What's up, Merck? How you feeling? Oh, I feel good, man. Hanging out. You know, first cast is always a good time. Getting the rhythm of things. Crowd's already lit. It's going to be a, a yes, wonderful sir. weekend. That's right. That's right. Like I said, we have Seattle Surge LAG. Ali Nameless, I know you're pumped up for it. Number one seed versus number eight. Nameless, what can we expect from this series? I mean, well, when you look at it on paper and you look at the qualifying performance, you can expect Seattle to come in and have a relatively easy series. Now, the mm. Search and Destroy has been unbelievable for Seattle Surge. Number two Search and Destroy team that we had only to phase throughout Major 3 qualifying stage. So I expect them to come in here clean house with LAG. Wow. But as we know with Call of Duty, that's not always go as expected. That's right. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, you never can predict anything despite the stats, Ali. Yeah. Anything can happen. But let's talk about Seattle Surge. These boys, they're ready to go. Yeah, and they've had quite the road to get here, right? We're talking about a team that was on a search and destroy losing spree, possibly to break the record. And then we headed to Major 3, and it's just been a huge turnaround for them. They're our number one seed. And I'd say they kind of had a middle of the pack road. They beat the Royal Ravens that were looking a little bit better at the end of the year. They beat the New York Subliners, our major one winners, and they beat the Minnesota Rocker and Florida Mutineers. So not the hardest road, but regardless, they've made improvements across the board. Well, I know Sib's always getting hyped up by Pocket, but let's talk about Fred, right? This man is incredible. He was our Rookie of the Year last year. Merck, what does Fred bring to this team? I mean, he is just a, a monster. When he gets going, he plays with such confidence. And, you know, he, you know, in hard point, he's pushing out these cuts he's making the individual plays it feels like when he gets going this team is just so difficult to beat he is a, a point of view we all look forward to watching and when he's playing at this level they are uh yeah they're always going to be a, a contender that's right and nameless when it comes to prep what game mode right is he going to be the guy to pop off and be the hero i mean well i would have said hard point like a week ago but now it's every single game now it's every <laughs> talking about a guy who is unbelievable in first bloods like the last sd we saw him have he's six first bloods in eight rounds it's been incredible. unreal we've seen you know, everybody saw the tweet, think Brian stats, but out he's at like a 1.1 and above for like 10 yeah. consecutive stages. The kid is ridiculous. You can see the KD leaderboard once again. I mean, there's a LeBron numbers that he's dropping. And <laughs> not even on that, like in search and destroy, he has a 1.79 right now for this split. So like Ann said, in all game modes, he has been stepping, stepping it up across the board. Well, of course, Brett, he's going to be popping off number one KD. You got to He's going to be a threat on the battlefield. But let's hone in on LAG, our number eight seed. They've definitely got their work cut out for them. But I do think, like you said, right, anything can happen on each day of the week. LAG, four talented members. They're here for a reason. Merck, what can we say about them? Well, I think when this team first came in, right, you you saw them throughout stage two, and it was all about their hard point, right? Their hard yeah. point, they were playing some of the best hard point in the league, but they were really struggling in search and destroying control. Then you look at this qualifier, and it's kind of the opposite, where their hard point is struggling, sure. but their search and control is looking a little bit better. The question for me is, can they be competitive in the hard points? If they're able to take a hard point or a respawn away from the Seattle Surge team, that's where I think things do get interesting. But yeah, yeah, you're looking at, you know, Joe Deceives. You're looking at right. XC to match the output of guys like Mac and Fred. Love Joe Deceives. He's had such a good run. But let's talk about Exceed, right? Our player to watch when it comes to LAG. Exceed, hey, I think we're going to have a banger of a series from him, Nameless. Yeah, you know, quietly he's been making some moves, especially these Search and Destroyers. Uh, I feel like in some of the games where, you know, maybe they've been like down and out, Exceed has been the guy who's had these explosive moments. He's really been a playmaker for this squad. And, you know, quietly as well, LAG has been a good Search team this split. Four and one in their last five, right? So it's kind of a search and destroy battle between these two hard point teams that we labeled from the last major. Uh, it's going to come down to those, man. And I want to bring up something interesting. Ali, you were talking to me uh, pre-show uh, just before we went live, right? And you were kind of mentioning about uh, specifically, I believe it was Sib, who has some yeah. pretty crazy stats last time they played. Well, so last time they played was last year, uh, December 2nd, <laughs> like our first week of Major 1 qualifiers. It was a different LAG team, but what's crazy is the fact that Sib dropped a 1.89 on their forehead, and they still lost the series in a Game 5 fashion. So obviously a much different LAG team to go up against this time around, but I'm hoping to see the same performance out of Sib. Yeah, what was Sib doing? <laughs> well, Sib gets a lot of love. <laughs> 
If you drop to a one fair, point, if you're my teammate fair. and you drop a 1.9 for the L, I'm um, To roasting. be fair, in the hard points, it was like an 100-point club, like 250 to 91. So that's where he was dropping the real numbers with a 2.4. Well, well, like yeah. I said, well, buckets on the desk, all I hear, sib, 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 right? He's always pumping that man up, and I'm sure he's going to be just fine today. Let's take a look at our maps and modes, though, and start telling our story. Mark, I'm actually going to have you look at this a little bit. What are you thinking, baby? I mean, just embassy and square up. Yeah, I mean, you're just talking about throwing haymakers at one another. What we talked about, sort of pre versus exceed the submachine guns. I mean, this is going to just be some fast paced action from start to finish. I think both these teams got a hard point that they preferred in this series. You know, LAG kind of preferring that embassy and Fortress kind of fall in the likes of Seattle Surge. I think that game two and five is going to be really important simply because LAG, I don't see them stealing a hard point from Seattle Surge. And the biggest thing right now is Seattle's not going to let you get the bomb down. And even if you do get the bomb down, they're number one in retake right now. So LAG, I'm hoping for them to play those bloods and picks early. All right, fair enough. Seems like hard point's going to be a sticking point. We'll see if they can step it up today. But let's do our quick predictions out the gate. I think I got to go with the number one seed. I took a little bit of a risk on New York earlier. This time, I'm going with Surge. What about you? Surge, it's got to be, right? Just the, they're in form now. Their search is looking better. All right, Allie? At Seattle Surge, for sure. I think max has been looking really good this split. All right, nameless. Everything leads to Surge. I'm going with Seattle Surge. Everything leads to Surge, he says. So we're all for Surge. That only means one thing. LAG, you got to step up and show us what you're made of. Bryce, what do we got on stage? All right, thank you very much. Let's get this next one underway. Another game here in beautiful Texas. And these two teams have an awful lot to prove. There's been roller coasters, there's been dismay, but glory can await on the main stage. So let's say hello to our first team, the LA Gorillas. I've been crushing any competition. Long range, yeah, I got the vision. When I'm in the trenches, anyone can get it. I'm with the team when they need me. Or out on a dolo mission. They get rocky riding on this road of riches. If I catch you slipping, then it's over finished. War, ready, crew, coming through heavy. Aim steady, lights out of stick of fellas. Not any with a one out of many. Please welcome to the stage, the L.A. Gorillas! Assault, Exceed, Jonas Steves and Arsenis. Your L.A. Gorillas. They are the massive underdogs in this series. But let's not forget, there's two world champs on this squad and a world champs MVP. This is a team coming in since they've looked better. The Cod Gods blessed them with the winner's bracket spot. Can they capitalize on it? Let's bring out Seattle, Bryce. <laughs> All right, four players are set, and four more want to take that win away from them. It's been a roller coaster for this next team, but let's find out how they are today. This is Seattle Surge. Texas makes a noise for Seattle's surge. Sip, accuracy, Mac and Pred, your Seattle surge. With a star-studded lineup, I'm going to focus on the underrated. Mac with the most clutches on this team, three aces on this season, and a 1.43 in search and destroy. That's going to be your player to watch when it comes to the Seattle Surge. They're looking to get a chip again like they did last year for Major 3, and it's looking hot against the LAG. Let's get this match started, Bryce. All right, thank you very much, Ali. The teams are set and glory awaits in the next round. Let's get this game underway. Over to our casters, Lando and Study. 
Thank you so much, Bryce. Yes, indeed. Jay, it's, start, it's really time for us to start off our Major 3 tournament in the best way possible. Number one versus our number eight seed. Tell you what, man, oftentimes when you're taking a look at the seeds, you know, taking a look at the position for how both teams played in the qualifiers, it's it's easy to almost like not really notice a trend. But I'll tell you what, man, coming into Major 3, we did not know what to expect from both of these rosters considering how they played at Boston. Oh, yeah. You're talking about Seattle Surge, man. They get last place at that Boston Major, and it simply came down to their search and destroy. Now, all throughout this stage, though, they have completely turned the tide in that mogul 4 and 1 overall. And the majority of that success falls on the Embassy Surge and Destroy, falls on the whole Hotel where they do have that embassy in this series as that map number two. So everything tells you Seattle are going to come out and win this series. They're way better when it comes to the hard points. Their SD has been looking a lot better. And then they have that fortress control in the middle. They are the best attacking team on that map. So tall ladder to climb for LAG. I think for me, it all starts at this map number one, man. A team who started off when this roster, they were great at hard point. They yeah. kind of fell off all throughout stage three. That's the way that they have to try to come out into the series, is stealing a respawn versus a team like Seattle. Absolutely. As we take a look at our season of records for both the LA Gorillas and the Seattle Surge, it's, it's interesting, right? Because we're talking about that search destroy. Obviously, on the season for Seattle, does not look good. The number 12 seed overall, 8 and 19 so far throughout this season, yet it feels like that is the brightest spot right now for the team, Jeff. Oh, yeah, without question, man, because this is the thing that was holding them back. They were obviously almost on the verge of breaking that lost record in search and destroy with right 12 in a row they do that and then eventually they come out and start winning their search and destroys man their respawn has always been stellar but that's what's going to make this team complete they can stay in that prime form you talk about that s and d but like i said this embassy map number one a stellar one for both of these squads i know the record says four and one for lg but with this new squad they're actually undefeated so this is a map that they have to come on and win absolutely as we said coming into this series lag massive underdogs but when it comes down to major time we've seen some wild upsets previously here at the esports stadium in arlington can we be delivered another one it's time for p1 here on embassy as both teams look to battle not just for the time but more importantly for the bottom side of the map and right now seattle they've got their arrows everywhere yeah seattle's doing a great job of maintaining the better side of the map neither squad is fighting for a majority of this p1 time Right now, Seattle and Accuracy holding down this lane from top papers, cutting them all down. Great shots at least, fine too. That released some of the pressure, so Seattle able to find a couple kills, get right back on that time. And it's interesting, man. We see Accuracy start off great. I mean, really, for Surge, this has been a wonderfully played P1 up to this point. Now they've got preferred positioning for P2. As we take a look through the battles, it feels like it's been a collective effort across the board. There's always a lot of focus, you know, thrown toward Accuracy and Mac, but Jay, the Death touched on it. They have both had their moments so far. Oh yeah, they have stepped up tremendously we talk about their play in stage three and that's what has led to them having a lot of success when you see the early break comes in from the gorillas they take full kitchen control they're able to find a couple kills and now seattle surge wanting all the way across the map they're trying to find an opening but oh. lag are cutting them all down okay. until max finds two hits the dolphin dive cannot find a third but it turns into a one-on-one -on -one. oh and it's Brad is picking up right from where mckenzie leaves off assault still 30 seconds left to fight for seattle are right back into this HP as they've got close spawns and right now for LAG it is Arsty's thinking about that rotation understandably so it's going to be Seattle who walks away with the scraps but now comes in the most important part of Embassy J these next two hard points yeah these next two hard points the P3 to P4 chain it's where this game starts to get out of hand. That's going to be Joe Deceives holding down that orange cut he's able to find two assault with the third so LAG win their gunfights off the rotation. They're going to be able to get set up properly for top AC. But you see Seattle Surge, they're putting a lot of pressure on towards back heads. They're trying to set up this crossfire as Max is setting up for the pitch. Yeah, every kill is going to be huge here. Assault ends up getting totally crossed inside of the office. And now <laughs> Seattle with numbers. There is three players making their way up the stairs. And Joe deceives, overwhelmed by the amount of players that he sees as Seattle right back in this HP. Oh man, they're just taking over this game. Perfect pinch leads to a perfect break as they're finding all the, the kills to feed. Assault up the ladder with the pistol. He does take down one, but there's too many players here from Seattle Surge. Able to get this remaining 20 seconds, and now it's all gonna be about this rotation. Accuracy the only player here, he drops, so 
If you are Seattle Surge, make sure you get this 15 seconds, but it's all going to be about these next couple of gunfights. LAG have to get a good hold here. I think if you're a Gorillas fan, man, you're just taking a look at player number eight, specifically on the mini map. The same thing can be said for Mac, but Pred, just in those close quarters, we now, rather, we know how elite he can be in close quarter gunfights, and that is exactly what the office will provide you with. Early time going the way of LAG is right now for Mac. We take a look through his perspective. Waiting for a lane, waiting for an opportunity, opens up the door, and we'll see if he can begin to strike. Pred, he's dealt with. Same thing for accuracy. Sib, able to find one, but that is all that Surge will get. First wave cleared from the Gorillas. That's a good hold right there from the Gorillas to get some much needed time to get back into this game. Now it's all about holding down the second oh. push, and Assault does it with that fast step in hand. He had a stellar performance all throughout stage three. So far leading the way right now for his squad on a five spree. So far, this hill's been uncontested. Oh. Seattle cannot find an opening. He's cutting them down, but at least he picks up that kill to earn that cruise missile. Off the rotation, though, it's going to be Seattle with a couple more bodies. It feels like lately, man, for the LA Gorillas, I mean, you and I have had quite a few of their casts so far throughout the Major 3 qualifiers. It almost feels like the team kind of goes based off of Assault's level of play. Like, we're seeing him pull out the SG from time to time. We've seen that happen on the previous embassy that they played. He had a stellar performance when it came down to that. As we said, the 2018 champs MVP and winner back in the CDL and trying to lead the Gorillas to a victory over our number one seed. As it's about to be all out chaos in P5 so far, LAG have been able to handle that chaos lately. But it's Seattle's opportunity to break and they're able to make it happen big time left on the board. Big time. And now if you are LAG, you are getting those close spawns towards back kitchen. So you have the ability to set up the pinch Go for the flood and win these engagements. It's all going to start with Arsene. He gets the first. The trade comes in. Joe deceives. They see trying to do everything to cut them down, but Sib at least release some of that pressure. So with only 15 seconds left, it's all going to be about setting up around this P1 hard point. Seattle find the break for the final 10 seconds. As Pred is just cutting them down, but this has been a back and forth hard point. LG did a great job of getting themselves back into this one. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing that makes P5 even that much crazier, Jay, is that you also want to have spawns. So you're not just trying to fight throughout the entirety of the HP for the seconds, but you also want the spawns that it possesses you. Once that hill comes to a close, right now, LAG have that. But the first set of rotations, a 30-point game right now in favor of Seattle. We'll see if they can keep that same level of play up. As we said from the other side of the stage, Gorillas, they have yet to lose this hard point. And this is the one that, as we called it, is a huge lifeline for them, considering the s &D, considering just the talent that the Seattle team will have when it comes down to game number three. All eyes, all focus right now on the Gorillas, and more specifically on to exceed as he finds himself on the three spree. And the Gorillas are doing a great job of getting a lot of time off of this P1. You saw Akins, who's the only player causing the problem from top paper, but once you take care of him, you're able to soak up a lot more time to get yourself closer and closer back into this game. But these next couple of gunfights are gonna be big. Sib and Mac, they combine for two through the street side, so now Seattle have that side of the map. Ooh. LAG are now gonna spawn over towards Orange. They found the break the last go around. They have to try to find it again, as Joe Deceives is gonna be that player on the pinch trying to make the play. He just made the mega, mega round. Let's see if that works out. Meanwhile, for Assault, he'll have to bring in the streak. It doesn't really take him down, but thankfully, Joe Deceives' play ends up working out very well here for the Gorillas. So, currently vacant time. Both teams strategizing, trying to figure out where the others are coming from. It is Gorillas with preferred positioning, but Seattle, a quick three for one trade. Joey D, the only man here. He's the only one. He made such a great play for his team to get the better side of the map, to put themselves in the proper setup, but none of his teammates are able to pick up any kills. So, the break is in for Seattle Surge. Final 20 is going to be theirs. And this is where you have to make up for it. If you are the Gorillas, they got broken instantly, rotating over towards this P3 hardpoint. It's all about these gunfights. You know, at least you have one player working that pin from head side, but you have to hold down towards top AC. Big kill versus Fred. Yeah, huge opportunity right now here for the Seattle Surge. A break very well to decide how this game one goes. Mac with the snap. Let's step aside and see how the comms are sounding. A listening with Seattle. Box on the box. I'm streaking. On the box. I can't Listen, kill gas block. block time Back in there. orange. Bathroom and gas block. Two orange, one side, side, one gas block. Don't streak me, do not streak me. On the gas block. I'm coming for gas block, we're challenging him. Two on time, no, two on time, two on time. Gas, gas block, block hit twice, Two on time. I got two. Nice, Benny. One shot on time, one, one shot on time. Yo, in mini AC, mini AC. Mini AC, Alec, one bullet, Absolute okay? Absolute on time. Daytime, uh, he's no I'm trophy. Going towards new I'm going gas. One front time. Nice, no trophy, no trophy on time. I hey, Alec was uh, mini I'm AC. I'm going new, you guys play old. Yeah, it's a big time. They're going to spawn back door new. Yeah, I'm sitting in a corner in new. I'm every setter, okay? Okay, hold it. 
He's mini AC and ult still. They're both there. Yeah, it's Tudo, Tudo. Okay, Tudo, Tudo, Tudo. Do you still stand there? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Get the whole gas, guys. They're gonna oh, be all over here. Back there. Back there. Back there. Back Behind you. I'm coming. Nice. 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 Front time, front time, Jody Steve. Floating, he he went floating. from PD, from PD. Okay. This is okay. good time, this is big time. I'm closing back. Oh, oh he's in the back door, back door. He's assault behind the van. He's playing his life. That's what we have. Every back, every back, every back. Thank you, Jody. Watch your center. I know, watch your center. Watch your back. I'm watching your center. I'm taking one. I'm watching your center. I think we want H1. H2, dead. I got stairs. I have stairs. Sander, Sander, Sander. I heard you. Sander, one shot inside of it. Inside of it. I'm holding Puffer. I have Puffer. He ran up top. He ran up top. They're going to be hitting H2, one shot. One still up top. Alex top. Alex top. I'm holding H1. I got H1. I got H1. One's in the back of me. I got H1. One's in the back of me. I'm trying. Good time. Okay. H2 on me. Three. H2, H2, one shot. I'm trying, I'm trying. H2, one shot. Nice. Don't one shot. Bathroom roof. Hold front door. Hold weak again. Stay at the same time, same time. Yeah. I have H2 on me. Hey. Sign that. Nice, guys. Hold it buffer, hold it buffer. Nothing H2. Xbox, one's Xbox. I mean, a nice check in with the Seattle Surge. I mean, it feels like they're just having a great time right now when it comes down to Embassy Hardpoint. There was a big spot where it was a 2v2 inside of Hotel. Sim and Mac are able to clutch up, and from there, they have not allowed for a single second to go the opposite direction. And now for LAG, we said coming into this series, they're staring at a mountain, and right now, that score is mimicking the storyline that we have coming into this series. Oh, yeah, that was a full 60 hold right there from Seattle. Give himself a nice little comfortable lead as Mac does not slow down finally gets taken off of that streak but he does earn himself that cruise missile now Sid picks up one of his own 15 seconds till Seattle are able to take nap number one LAG trying to set up the pinch players pushing through orange players pushing through back kitchen they have to go now they gotta make a break and it's gotta be quick I mean already this is a tall task for LAG Can oh! make a play happen as Mac nearly snaps on to three however he has set Sid up for a 1v1 gunfight, Arsene's able to take that. Gorillas are still fighting, but now it could be accuracy. They've got the angles locked down. Only a few more seconds. 249 to 180. LAG still in it. Still fighting. They're still fighting, but Seattle just need one point. Who knows? You find these kills around P1. You hop on that time, the game is going to be yours. Oh, it's red. I don't even think he's spotted. Okay, no big deal. AG just. Not spotting players, but here comes the streak from above, and that will be game. Seattle Surge deliver this iteration of the LA Gorillas, their first loss on Embassy Hardpoint. And it is a pretty well calm collected Hardpoint throughout that one, Jay. I mean, off the start of a Hardpoint, obviously we're going back and forth, talking yeah. about who's in the driver's seat, who's in the better position, but it just felt like for Seattle, mimicking the comms, never really felt like they weren't going to take the hard point, to be honest. Yeah, the comms are beautiful, and that led to the success that they have in the hard point. When, all, when the communication is like that, everyone's just calling out specific things, calling out what positions are open, where these players are coming from. And you saw that's what eventually led to a great hold on that P4 hard point, where they were able to grow the lead the way that they did. Seattle Surge were just a step ahead. Yeah. A couple times for LAG, they won a couple rotations. They just couldn't win that first wave of gunfights, and Seattle were able to find that early break. And some of these money hills on the embassy. Now LAG have to try to respond in the search and assure where Seattle all series, all season long. Yeah. This has been their weakest mode. All throughout the last stage, though, is where they have turned it up to a whole different level. So with LAG falling short in that map number one, they lose in search and destroy. Seattle Surge is going to walk away with this one with ease. Yeah, that's what we talked about, right? For LAG, this is a huge hard point for them. And granted, you are facing off against Seattle on one of their best hard point maps. But on the inverse, you'll take this if you're LAG. You have yet to lose this hard point. So I don't know, man. It became a tie game to me. I mean, at least when it came down to specific moments, I felt like it was this play right here, or rather at the start of that hard point in the office where it was a 2v2. Seattle won that from there, they didn't lose a single second. And even if you think about back before, we even got to that point where Joe sees makes that route all the way through back street. Yeah. He sets up the pinch, he spawns a bunch of the Seattle players all the way out towards tennis, and then they lose all their gunfight. Right. That was the most important thing. You had Surge spawning all the way across the map. Someone's got to get on the point, but you have to win that first wave of kills because if you don't, then you allow the break to come in, and they were able to hold that for a full 60. I think that was the turning point in the game for me as Seattle Surge do exactly what we expect them to do. Best team in hardpoint, take map one. Yeah, they're showing their stuff already, 250 to 194. And I think for Seattle fans out there, Jay, that scoreboard is a welcoming sight. Yeah. Right? Seeing accuracy leading the entire lobby, I believe, in kills overall, 27 and 22. We saw Mac have a number of highlight plays. He finishes off this opener with a 1.21 overall KD. Like we said, man, for Seattle Surge, it, 
like, it's so funny, like throughout the season, it's been so obvious, right? We're talking about, okay, they can win hard points, but they yeah. can't win s &D. We're looking at Mac, we're looking at accuracy. Little by little, man, every series, even, you know, when it comes into these different maps, it feels like they're starting to right the wrongs when it comes Definitely. down to their issues that they have suffered. And take a look at this, an exact comparison on what exactly we are discussing. Stage one to stage two, the SD performances have never been different than that. Oh, that's that's terrible, because I'm pretty sure all four of those SD wins throughout stage one to stage two all came on land. That's they right. could not win an SD online. But all throughout stage three, this is what has been able to make series easy for them. Four and one record, 70% at getting that first blood, which usually leads to about 90% of them finding that round win. They have completely flipped the switch when you talk about this mode. And with this team, the way that they've been playing in response, if they can get this one down packed, without question, they are championship caliber. Now I want to ask you too, right? We're talking about Seattle Surge. Now they're back on land. I mean, like we said, historically, they've been okay at Surge Destroy when it comes down to land. Online were really the biggest problematic moments for them. But what do you feel like has been the biggest difference, right? We're taking a look at stage one to stage two. Now we're here in stage three. And obviously, as we talked about it, in every metric, in every category, the Surge Destroy has been totally flip-flopped if you could point out one thing, what do you feel like has been the biggest difference? It's got to be the confidence, man. It's got to be the confidence the Seattle Surge is starting to play with. You have unbelievable players on your squad, like Mac and Pred. You see the stats all throughout stage three. Pred was number one in SD KD with a 1.79. And you have Max in nice and comfortable, top five overall. He's the bomb with a 1.43. He's getting it done getting that <laughs> bomb planted. Pred is doing it when he finds that first blood. So when you get your SMGs just setting the tone, setting the pace, it does wonders for your entire organization. They're just finding confidence in this mode. They just gotta keep on form, man. You gotta keep playing with that same amount of confidence. Yeah, you absolutely do. I mean, there were many who were talking about it, even coming into this qualifier in general until Seattle would obviously possess the number one seed. Now coming into the Optic Major, there are people who said, Seattle, this could be the last time that we see this four-man lineup together unless they're able to show us something, unless they're able to win Search Destroys. This has been the mode that has absolutely rejuvenated this team. But on the flip side, man, you could almost say the same for the LA Gorillas. They were for the longest time so great in their hard points, and then they started to figure out Search and Destroy and Control, as this will be the ultimate test. As we said for that game number three, it feels like it's got Seattle's name written all over it. Another chance for LAG to try and surprise us. As we jump in here for round number one, it is Surge starting things off on attack. Surge on the attack, just playing for the information. They know they have no trophy systems to work with, so you can't cross that B bomb with ease. As LAG do a great job of taking full map control. Sib is able to get some information on so one player can't line up the snipe, and that succeeds finding that first blood. Yeah. That is great aggression being displayed there from the rookie. The same thing can be said for Joe Deceives. Thankfully, Pratt at least able to even up that map man count a little bit nicer. 2v2 two, two three currently right now here from Seattle. As Pratt looks to make the play, biggest problem obviously for Surge is that that bomb is down, but it's not been planned. Yeah, but Pratt is about to earn his dead silence. So he might be able to make a play through back alley. As he's slowly starting to edge his way up. The bomb is going to be down towards that B site. Yeah, you want to pop that before you climb this ladder as peekaboo. Saul's just looking at it. <laughs> Good effort, honestly, good effort, but so many players, whether it's Hardpoint or Search Destroy, starting to learn how to play over toward the top side of the ACs. The ladder watched, and from there, LAG. They strike early, and they grab our opening round. Yeah, it's good stuff right there from the Gorillas to put a lot of aggression up through the middle of the map. They can take full map control from Seattle and trap them in towards back embassy. C starts it off by getting that first blood. They shut down that aggression, push towards hedge. And eventually they close out in the 3v1. Just the positioning they were able to take. Seattle, they struggle in their three sports, 11th in the league. Showed on that round number one as LAG take round one. I feel like for Exceed, I mean, he starts off our opening round with two kills, gets the first blood. Oftentimes he is the sniper player for the team. A lot of eyes, a lot of focus on him. As Pred, no surprise, he's able to answer with a first blood in round number two. And right now for Exceed, Hunting for information, has tossed out that stun. Is he going to be aware of the play? Oh, it happens! Oh. Eat that one, Brett. Good work there from LAG as they clean up two in a row. Another man down situation for Surge. Oh, man down situation. Agnes position is going to be known. Assault is able to take him down, line it up oh, he's for back. the very final kill. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. 
But it all goes back to exceed, man. Hitting that quick scope onto Fred. Tries to run away, but catches the timing. Lines it up beautifully. Shuts down the aggressor on the side of Seattle Surge. And LAG now take two rounds in a row. We thought about it. Just going into that round, exceed. A lot of focus on him. And he's able to deliver with a wonderful quick scope, putting LAG up now two to zero. See if they can build upon it. You got two players who could maybe have streaks in their future. Assault and Exceed off to a lovely start through our first two rounds, but Seattle now back on the attack. And it looks like that is going to be a quick bomb plant. Does Exceed know the timing? Yes, he does. Dives out, and at the same time, Assault is also able to find one himself, LAG have been downright dominant to kick off these rounds. This is a perfect read right there from the Gorillas. They know that Seattle like to get this bomb down towards B with the quickness. They don't give it up. They attack it at the perfect time. They're able to find the first two kills. So now into 4v2. Sib at least lines one, takes down Assault from top AC. That bomb is still down. There's only 45 seconds left. LAG basically still have you guys trapped in towards Embassy. Yeah, for LAG, it's just like, hey, let's just stand still. Just play a trade. Make them come to us, Sip. Let's have that pack out, Fred. Goals for aggression as Exceed ends his life on a five spree. What was it, 2v4, has now turned into a 1v2. Sip, oh, oh, oh. the all to do hits the snap. And I believe he'll be able to get that bomb down. Arsenis, can he arrive in time? Yes, he will. Denies the clutch as Alec will come away with it. Sweat off the brow there for LAG, 3-0. Just good work from the Gorillas to keep their man advantage in their favor. Even though Sib gets a couple easy reads in that situation. Our city's a two-time world champion. Does not panic in those moments. Waits for the bomb to get planted. Able to shoot Sib in the back for free. Secure the round for the Gorillas. Three in a row now. I just want to see a sniper duel. I do. I want to see a sniper duel between Exceed and Sib. Maybe on the cross, potentially, something? Not yet. To the one side, he will succeed on the other. Cracks the whip, but nothing landed. At least able to provide a bit of pressure. And Sib, able to tack him up. He does not have the sniper on the other side. That is straight tack shots coming in as Arsenis will be there to fall. Exceed going for the wrap as this is a big spot right now from LAG. They're trying to get that bomb down, but they need someone to be on Overwatch, and that is Exceed's job. Oh yeah, Exceed is in a great position to at least release some of the pressure towards top AC. Hello! A couple teammates who are working Ooh. through the back alley. Prez able to take down Exceed, make it a 3v2. But with the positioning right now on the side of the Gorillas, you can rotate this bomb towards A, get it down for free. Well, Joe just seems to decide to go for it. Oh, goodness. Not far away. Back. Still yet to get on the board. Well, now 0-4. Now brings it to a two versus two. And right now for Sib, he had, does have that trophy, so no dead silence pop. Meanwhile, for Joe Deceives, he will rock that, and they have their eyes set on that A-bomb. Can Sib get the timing is really going to be the question. Decides to jump on out, able to find one. Now brings it in to <laughs> 1v1, and it's Sib with the snaps again. But thankfully this time, it allows for a round. Seattle, finally. Able to get on the board, Jay. It wasn't easy, man, but they finally oh. find their first round. As LAG did a great job of just putting a lot of pressure in towards Orange. You saw Joe Deceives, he was setting up Assault. Once he times that nade in towards Orange, you get him to back out from the top steps, give an easy kill to Assault to turn it into a 2v2. But then Sib, being the player holding down that A site, finds the timing from top plat, wins the first one, knows the positioning of the second. He's able to find three kills on the round to close it out. Seattle down 3-1 now. Talk about it lately for Seattle. Somewhat of an uh, uncustomary start to this embassy search destroy. 2-0 on it so far throughout the major three qualifiers, and they have been dominant dubs at that. We're talking 6-2, 6-1. Finally able to get on the board after four rounds of play, but it could be Pred who's able to start things off nicely. He finds a kill. Meanwhile, though, Exceed, still being a thorn in the side, does have that sniper out. Biggest point of emphasis, though, Jay, is that that bomb is down. Bomb is down, and Mac at least finds one oh. to hit Parker. Unfortunately for Exceed. Now time is starting to tick. 
to have to worry about Mac, who's just roaming around in towards Orange. Pred finds one through the middle of the map. It's all left up to exceed. He gets taken down. And Seattle Surge, with the utmost confidence, get the bomb down again quickly, find that first blood, eventually win the trade battle. As Sip said, the sniper isn't working. I'm going to do it with the AR. And he, he has hit beams ever since. Pretty sure that now puts him on a five spree. One off of Ernie Cruz. Yeah, he's just been hitting some wild shots so far. I'll tell you what, man, we talked to this guy out of game. He is hilarious. In game, he's a madman. He's, oh, yeah. he's focused up. I think we've seen him maybe smile like two or three times on broadcast. I think it's him and Big Wake who have a tie for the least smiles that we've seen in the CDL match. Oh my God, Exceed, another bullet that's able to land. And another big one there on the Fred. Archies will answer again. Wonderful start here for LAG. And accuracy, a sniper bullet with his name on it. The Iceman will eat it. Regardless, he eventually does get cleaned up. And now it is Mac left by his lonesome 1v3 now. Finds the first kill onto RCDs, but he knows that, that bomb is going to be getting planted towards A. So he's going to be able to get a little bit of that information. But you have to find three kills and eventually shrot it, stick that defuse. Now time is starting to tick. He's going to work his way up through back alley, but the Gorilla's going to be ready for it. Oh, absolutely. And that comes around the corner with maybe a bit of confidence. He's maybe thinking, hey, if I walk away with one kill, maybe I pop Deddy. Maybe there's a chance. And right as he does that, runs right into the reticle of Assault. It was made for positions just like that one. Those three bullets land, and from there, LAG able to answer after allowing a few to go the opposite direction up four rounds to two. And you can see, it is Exceed leading the comms, leading the strategies. He's having a phenomenal game so far, Jay. Oh yeah, he's making impactful plays. Already three first bloods on the map. So he's trying to even up that stat line. We'll talk about this series at one to one by securing this search and destroy. All our pressure once again towards B. Seattle are not gonna slow down. They get a couple stun hit markers at Fred. He's gonna be the attack. Oh, he absolutely can! Fred for one! Joe deceives on the other side. Is at least able to trade, but a nade from Pred now will allow for it to be a 1v4, now a 1v3. Joe Deceives left in a very difficult spot, excuse me, a 1v2. All out chaos to kick off this round, but can it be the rookie to make the plays happen? He's absolutely gonna spot somebody on the bomb, but Surge stay up and they win the swing round. That's a good job from Surge to not get away from what has been working for them so far. And that's just being super aggressive towards this B-bomb. You don't send Mac by himself this time. You send Pred alongside him. As Pred with the tack, he's just able to slow those players down through the back alley. He finds the first, finds the second with the nade. Eventually puts Seattle Surge in that man advantage. I thought Joe DeCeves had a great opportunity to clutch that round up. Yeah. Just waited till the very end where his death silence was about to run out. For accuracy to eventually find that timing to secure the round. Seattle Surge now down 4 3. Seattle trying to claw their way back. As we said for LAG, you got to have an answer. The number one versus the number eight seed. So far for Exceed, three first bloods in this game, tied with Pred for the most first bloods in the lobby. Tries to take the lead and nearly. Takes the head clean off of Sim. On the other side, though, it's Archdees who's able to strike first. It's good work from Archdees to eliminate Pred of all people. But Sim does a great job of taking down Archdees, maintaining that map control, and now being a 3v3 situation. His accuracy, I don't know if he was able to spot that first player onto Assault, but he gets some assistance from Mac. He's able to back him down. Now they know where the pressure's coming from. Both players on their bellies. Accuracy with the information. Assault, well, now he's got it as well. Very talented AR players. Oh, and Accuracy's just able to escape with his life. So with that, the pressure is now on to the Gorillas. As Accuracy will call for reinforcements. He's got Mac at his side. He's got Sib on a flank. However, Mac gets cut down. Accuracy's able to win his fight. Now 2v2, and that bomb's got to get planted. Can Sib arrive? 2v2, as the bomb is now going to go down. You're waiting Woo! for his teammates to get into the play, but Exceed is able to line it up. I don't know if he connects Hold with the on. sniper for that final kill, but... Hold on. The young man is roaring. He, oh, oh, my! Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> All right! That's the game we're playing. Exceed so often. How many times have we seen players 
go for the hit marker, and from there, the round just completely explodes, but he just pulls out that, that pistol. That X-12, a point to prove. Now nine and four for Exceed. Wants to try to put Seattle to bed quickly. And he could be the first line of defense. Is once again, Jay, that strategy is to get the bomb down quick. Nades are tossed, utility exchanged. LAG now on the retake. Oh, LAG on the retake, and Jodeci finds himself in a great position with that dead top. Top should be able to find a freebie. Exceed finds a second. 4v2, Sib and Pred have to go big. Oh, what's up to the young guns? Pred at least able to answer for it's one. On the bomb. Sib, he's got to go for it. And Arshley's, he's punching in the digits already. Pred looks to arrive, but it's LAG who punch in the defuse, and with that, they answer back in the search after a fantastic performance across the board, but the star in game two, J, undoubtedly was XC. Oh, XC set the tone, man. Took over in his search to destroy. Didn't matter what gun he had in hand. He was finding multiple picks with the sniper. Shuts down the aggressive push towards B, the first go around with the TAC 56, and in that final round, does it with the fast stab. We said that the Gorillas needed to respond in their search and destroy versus a team like Seattle who have been stellar in the respawns and they do a great job of doing so. Tie the series up at one, and now the momentum's on their side. I gotta say, man, I feel like, you know, like, like I think I've mentioned it a few times so far throughout our cast, but you and I have had so many opportunities to cast over the LA Gorillas. I know there's a lot of focus on RCs, maybe Joe Deceives, just because we haven't really heard about that name lately, but I tell you what, man, every time that we cast over them, I feel like Exceed is getting more and more confident. Oh, yeah. He's facing off against some of the Titans in the league and absolutely delivering, right? Even in maps where they've lost, it feels like he is the beacon for them. The player who can get them going back in a series, back in a map, has a stellar performance there with the sniper. And like I said, it's a team effort, but it feels like he's the guy calling the strategies in game, getting the boys yeah. hyped. A very, very solid pickup there for LAG as their rookie is able to bring them a game to victory. And now we've got Fortress Control up next, man. This is uh, this is gonna be a tall task. Oh, yeah. And then we've yeah. talked about it in the respawns, but it looks to be, at least from a stats point of view, the most heavily in favor of the surge. But we will have to wait and see. We're headed to a commercial break. But like we said, once we come back, it is Fortress Control. We'll be back on your browsers in just a moment.
righty, friends. Welcome back to day one of the Texas Major. Maybe even a, a howdy, Jade. You got a howdy in you? Howdy, folks. There it is. I love that. <laughs> that was a great howdy, my friend. Maybe I learned it from you. I learned Absolutely. from you. You know, I'm Texas native, not Texas native, but I've lived here before. It feels like a second home. But I tell you what, man, a great, great performance so far in this series. As we said, the number one seed taking on the number eight seed. It's been competitive so far, Jay. It definitely has. You know, Seattle Surge do exactly what we expect them to do. That's take the respawn. But the biggest thing was that Gorillas were able to spawn respond by taking that search and destroy in a search and destroy that Seattle have finally found exactly. some success in recently. Yep. So that's a big one for them. Now it's all about this control. Whoever takes this takes a series in my opinion. Without a doubt, I know we have two players that we want to focus on heading into this Fortress control. And you know, oftentimes when we're talking about Fortress, uh, a map that's very much based off of the SMGs, it's really the inverse when we're talking about comparisons. Really when it comes down to this map three control, we're talking about assault, we're talking about accuracy so far, Jay. These guys, I mean, they've been the difference, it feels like, in terms of uh, really where the success has been. Oh, yeah, you can see the stat line for Assault. He's just been taking over when you talk about this mode. And usually, when I find myself talking about the Gorillas in control specifically, they still have a .8 KD as a squad when you talk about that mode, even with Assault having a 1.32 <laughs> so far in this stage, man. So Assault's got to try to go big. Actually, just got to hold down the lanes for his SMGs. It's both of these players. Have some great teammates on this map. Pred, he is unstoppable <laughs> when you're talking about the attacking rounds. And what makes this map so difficult versus a team like Seattle Surge is that they find themselves a majority of the time winning their attacking rounds. It doesn't happen on a map like Fortress, but they make it look easy. Yeah, how uncommon is that? Like, we're talking stats-wise, they're winning 50% of the time. Wow. When they are on Fortress attack, that is... Wild. It feels like they're playing a different map. I don't know, maybe they're playing a, a different version of Albagra Fortress. Who knows? Maybe they've got some keys underneath the map, not exactly sure. And now, well, that attacking prowess will now be put to the test. Seattle starting things off on what is not at all the normal, rather the more preferred side, but they've been able to make it look like that so far throughout the season. And right now, Jay, they are already one segment in. It might be there, I have no idea. I see just on the cusp, able to drop a one, and that is not a segment captured. Big win coming from the Rook again. That's good work right there from the Gorillas to not allow that first segment to get completed. Forward to Seattle Surge. Now you put them in towards the trap. They was able to find two. You still have a couple of players farther pushed up towards middle maps. You just have to find these couple of kills and none other than NXC to start it off with two. And you and I were talking about it even just during the commercial break about, okay, Fortress Control. We're talking about the SMGs. Obviously, the ARs were highlighted for obvious reasons, but it is going to come down to that aggression. Arsene's yet to get on the board, but thankfully, his rookies and really his uh, COD champs compadre and Assault having a wonderful start so far to this fortress. There's 30 seconds left to go. Seattle are in the absolute oh, man. trap. That's now seven a row as a team. LAG surely do not let this one slide. Oh, yeah, there's no way they can let this one out. <laughs> if I'm with them, though, I'm putting at least one player on towards that A point to decap a little bit, but they're oh, finding oh. all the kills in the feed. That's another four dead. But a four. The out of search have not been able to find anything on their attacking side. And now with only five seconds left, it's looking like this is going to be a great defensive hole for the Gorillas, not giving up any segments. Now puts them in a nice little one only. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the biggest thing, right? Is LAG, okay, cool. They walk away with the, the, with the defense, but they're able to do it, not allowing a single segment and not allowing it from what is without question the best fortress attack team in the game. As we said, it was a slow start for Arsties. I think he pretty much does not even get a single kill through the first round, but it was the other boys. It was the rest of the squad picking up for him. And now it's LAG, uh, LAG's opportunity, man. I mean, tell you what, all they need is one segment, and at least they're in the lead. Yeah, I think right now, if you are the Gorillas, you have a couple of players who are working on some streaks. I think that's the thing that you want to put a lot of focus on to earn that cruise missile, because it's not easy to win attacking rounds on the side of the Gorillas. Only have a 5% chance of winning around on this side of the map. They do find a couple kills, though. They're able to stop that clock. That's all four dead. Seattle coming off spawn. Let's see if they can make this. An early segment capture. They've got two bodies now, make it nearly three on it. Assault looking for the angles, looking for the opportunities. Meanwhile, for Sib, but he's trying to cut down the middle lane, but he's got nobody to join him. That is two segments grabbed here off the rip from LAG. And even if this round came to a close here, you'd still be pretty happy with it. But Jay, we've got a minute still left to go. Oh, yeah, that's job well done for the Gorillas, even if they don't find anything else on this round. 
completing those two segments can be so impactful as we get to the later half of this oh. game. It's going to be on Arsenis with the plank. Fortunately, not able to pick up anything. Almost made his way out, but Seattle finding all the kills. Now the Gorillas have to fight out of this swamp. Oh, now it could be Fred's opportunity to strike on four. Now make it five in a row. We're talking about players who are not on the board. Max still yet to arrive. Oh, with nine to kick us off, but it's all right, Mac. No pressure. None at all. 30 seconds still left to go, as we said, for LAG. Technically job done, but they're not ready to give this one up here. The only problem is that that decision might be made for them. Exceed and Arsene is able to come away with two, but it's Pred's opportunity to try and strike again. Mac able to get on the board. The crowd loves it. And we'll make it two, Jake. That's good work right there from Mac. To lead that pressure over towards A. Finally find his first two kills on the map. Gorilla's able to stop that clock by having one player sneak out towards B. He gets cut down. Uh, last layer up is going to be Joe Deceives in towards maps. Not going to have enough time to get towards either one of these points as LAG are going to walk away with two segments. Also have that cruise missile to work with. Even though Seattle Surge take that round, LAG do a great job of do doing what they need to do. Just in case it gets to that round number five. As it so often does. <laughs> now they push themselves up by two segments. Solid first two rounds. Coming in from the Gorillas, but as we talked about it for Surge, they gotta try to show us on land that incredible ability on fortress control attacks. Last time it was LAG who got them in the hold early. I mean, really, it was probably just a Half of a second from getting at least one segment over on A, but they were left without a single tick to their name. Fred trying to get off to a hot start. Flies in from the skies. However, it's a three for one trade. Only player alive currently is going to be Sib. Making his presence felt early over at that A zone. Question being, how long can he stay alive? And not long, Jay. Not long at all. Not long at all. Now your teammates have to fight out of their base, and Joe DeCees was the guy that was causing problems the last go around. He finds himself already 15 to 6 in that KD department on a 5 3. Can potentially earn himself his own cruise missile. Great shots onto accuracy. Not able to pick up the kill. He's trying so hard to find one, but eventually Mac finds in and takes him down. This has been a great defensive hold. Once again, nothing to show for it on the side of Seattle Surge. Oh. You have to get out of your base, and the team kill's not going to help. Yeah, that does not help at all. Fred was trying to make a bit of a route. You could see Seattle, their arrows. They were in a good position to, to maybe at least get somebody over toward that A zone. But once more, they have been forwarded. Once more, they have been shut down. As Joe DeCeeves continuing to be the talk of the town, the primary player here on Fortress, 15 seconds to go. Can Seattle just even see the objective, let alone capture a segment? It has been flawless defense so far. Here from the Gorillas, Assault goes low. One player is at least able to get on in accuracy. Can he stay up into the 1v1 chow? Arsenis is there. Seattle, they do have some bodies, though, that make it into A. Oh, right now, and if you're in Seattle in this situation, everybody just get on the point, try to complete those two segments because all of LAG were putting a lot of focus over towards B, but they now have to invest that cruise missile. You take down Fred, that's a clean four dead. But if you are a Seattle Search, at least you get that one segment complete. But I think regardless, it's gonna be the Gorillas, even if they lose this attacking round, by just being up by one segment, are gonna guarantee, guarantee themselves that defense going into that round number five. So Seattle Surge, they're gonna have to show why they are the best attacking team on Fortress if they clutch up on this defense. Yeah, it's a great investment, right, from Assault. Oftentimes, we're, you know, if, for those who maybe are new to watching Fortress Control, it may seem like an odd play. It's like, you know what, cool, what's, what's the big deal if they get that second segment? Like we said, LAG, just in that moment, because they don't give away the second one, they are guaranteed to be in the best spot in the game if we go to a round number five. But still got a bit of business to attend to before then. Our, our cities trying to get off to a hot start. As you can see, the play right now for LAG is to at least get somebody in to be, and that is job well done. Exceed is on that point, trying to cause a bit of chaos behind enemy lines. Yeah, Exceed is just trying to stay alive as long as he can. Try to open up a lane for his teammates to try to get out towards A, but he gets cut down, and then Saul also drops to Mac. So now all of the Gorillas just taking their time in their base, trying to find an opening. Eventually, Joe Deceives does drop in. 
They're not moving, man. They're taking their sweet time to try to play for some kills, potentially earn themselves their own cruise missiles as well. I mean, the thing right now for LAG, it's maybe just playing for picks, maybe hoping that from somebody from Seattle gets a tad bit aggressive. And I think for Surge, just given the the lack of noise, they're just like, hey, you know what? We're just gonna kind of hang out. They ain't doing Nathan, man. I know. I think for Surge, I mean. We know it, all right, LIG, they know that they have gotten that defense. Let's not feed the streaks, but at the same time for Seattle, you may want to force a bit of aggression. I don't know, Jay. You might want to, but you also don't want to give them any streaks <laughs> to go into that follow around. The crowd is obviously not happy about it, but the Gorillas are trying to win the damn match. They are just holding in the back of this one. Final 15 okay. seconds. Somebody's got to make a move. No one's making a move, Lando. Somebody, come on! Somebody move! They're not trying to die. Somebody move, please. Assault, I beg you. I beg you! I know what it is. What's that? Gorillas are just working on their setup because we're playing Fortress Hardpoint <laughs> in that map number four, so at least that pre-3 is going to be pretty dominant if you're playing like that. Just mid-game, you know, just mid-game. It's like, you know what? Let's just practice a little bit. You know, it's fortunate control little. after all. Let's just enjoy ourselves. No, obviously, man, don't like to see that. Fortress control, we know it. All about the defenses, LAG, knowing they've got round five secured. Don't want to try to feed the streaks. From a strategic standpoint, obviously makes sense. We hate to see that. But round five, here we go, Jack. Here we go, and I'm pretty sure Fred has a cruise missile to work with. It's all going to be about these initial fights. You see the records for both of these squads. LAG, stellar. Wow. In round five, when you talk about control, it all comes down to these kills. They're able to find the initial two. Last two players from Seattle, they're able to get on out, but Joe DeSeeves cut them down. Last player towards the middle map. It's this is going to be Mac. Now, so far, the Gorillas, they do a great job of holding down the left side of the map, but Seattle, they're finding openings through double doors. They are indeed. Joe DeSeeves trying to go for the right timings, does his job. However, the rest of the team not able to slay the rest of the members that remain inside of the objective. Exceed, looking to get involved. Still, no segment officially captured yet from Seattle. However, as that 1v1 goes their way, they are on the road to what could be a full zone capture. We've yet to see it so far in this game, and right now it is looking good for Seattle. Winning the trades, and Mac, he's remaining inside of the truck. Assault looks to get involved, and Assault kill. will take both. Big, big two-piece there out of him. And the second segment does not get completed on the side of Seattle Surge. Now you have to fight out of your base, uh -oh. and Assault is cutting them all down. Uh -oh. He finds himself on five in a row. Pratt Wait. actually makes his way into bottom art, but you still have to get by Assault. Assault with the tack 56. He's making it look easy. Earns himself that cruise missile. You're able to stop that pressure. Now your main focus is on where is Fred? Exactly, that is the biggest emphasis. This is a player who could break open everything as long as Fred remains behind enemy lines. There is still a chance. 42 seconds is where we're currently paused at. And as we said for LAG, they gotta check every single corner. Fred erased, and now they can focus their attention onto the objective. And recognizing such assault, looks to bring in the cruise. With that, Mac will fall. Arsenis. Picking up kills himself. 30 seconds to go. Can Seattle get the final segment at A and get another minute on the clock? It's 14 to 9 and lives remaining. Seattle Surge, I'm pretty sure Fred still has that cruise missile. But he can't find the right timing to use it. He might have to invest it right off spawn, and he does. He's gonna pick up all the information. Your teammates just have to find oh. a couple kills. That's two down in the feed. They find an opening trying to get over towards B. Get player number six, accuracy. He's got a big gun fight that he has to win versus Joe Deceives. Meanwhile, it does open up a lane. Four seconds to go. Right, he's got to go for the dolphin dive. He got to walk away with that fight. LAG, they win their 1v1s and they win the map. A stalemate in round four, but they knew that it was theirs to throw away. All defenses here on Fortress Control. No surprise generally, but with Seattle Surge Man having that previous prowess in a spot like that, a tad surprise that we didn't see more of an answer, honestly. I was expecting a lot more from Seattle yeah. Surge, especially when you talk about their attacking success on this map. They're the best attacking team. You talk about Fortress Control, My but they heart. were only able to find one segment that entire time. The Gorillas did a great job just slaying around towards Mac, keeping them in the trap. And every time someone had to go big, it was Assault and Joe Deceives. Three Kate Emmons. Always finding two or three in the feed to shut down that push. 
Gorillas do a great job securing that round number five defense. They have the Cruzless to work with just in case anything gets out of hand. And eventually they clutch up on the control. That's now a huge respawn taking away from Seattle Surge. If you are the Gorillas, you're at least able to force that game five, but your Seattle Surge, man, that's one that you basically had to guarantee. Yeah, I mean, we almost kind of guaranteed it for them. But yeah. we're talking about it, it's like, okay, pressure's on LAG. You don't win the opening hard point. Well, you can go down because of that fortress control that sits at game number three. And a shocker here from the LA Gorillas as they look impeccable on the defensive side and not allowing for Seattle to really spread their wings and get anything going. And we were all wondering, like what kind of gorillas we were gonna get because they start off the stage 0-3. Yeah. They had to clutch up to get their winners bracket spot by defeating Florida in a game five, by taking down Vegas Legion in that game four. They did a great job of doing that to get in this position. We thought their hard point wasn't the best, but ever since they fell down in hard point, their search and destroy and their control has gotten a lot better. So now Seattle Surge, they have to rely on the mode that has gotten through a lot, gotten them through a lot of series this year. Try to extend it. It's all gonna come down to this Fortress Hardpoint, man. We'll talk about this, it's gonna be about these rotations. Pretty sure Seattle are third on this map, going up against the Gorillas who are 12 oh, overall. Okay. So, you gotta put yourself in the best possible situation when you're talking about the P2s, when you're talking about the P3s, because if you let those hills get away from you, Seattle Surge are gonna be able to capitalize on that, potentially force that map by. And I'll say it too, man. I mean, obviously, like we said, if we're looking at the maps and modes, I mean, if LAG come away with game two, game three, and game four, it just feels like you have another level of excitement, oh, right? Yeah. And speaking of excitement, we got the Texas fans, super hyped. Obviously, their boys are gonna be lined up next versus the Boston Breeze. The crowd already has been absolutely fantastic. I don't know about you, Jay. This is probably one of my favorite crowds I think we've had in COD history. Just tell you what, man, Texas knows how to do it. But, but getting back to the series, LAG, they're able to win the Embassy Search Destroy, that in which Seattle have looked fantastic on. Yep. You beat them on the Fortress Control, which has been downright scary for Seattle. And then if you're also able to win the Fortress Hardpoint, I feel like it sets LAG up for a wonderful opportunity, maybe a wonderful run maybe here at Major 3. Oh yeah, without question, man, because Seattle are no slouches. This is a team who went flawless, basically, in stage yeah. four, four and one overall record. They dominate when you talk about the hard points. Their s &E was almost flawless. The only map that they did lose is going to be that map number five and that El Asilo. So I just think right now, with all the questions we have on the Gorillas, they're shutting us all up. Everyone was expecting Seattle to come out and win this one. But the Gorillas, they came to play, man. Yeah, they absolutely have. We all love ourselves an underdog story. And so far throughout CDL history, we talked about number one seeds versus the number eight seed. It's not really all that wonderful of a record for the number ones, only four in three. So typically, it's been pretty 50-50, quite a few game fives since, as we said, the number one played the number eight just starting back last season. And LAG trying to showcase that they deserve some praise, they deserve some props. And what could be the final game of this series? We head back to Fortress, but this time for some hard point. He had some questions on how would the SMGs play from LAG specifically. It was Joe Deceives who was snapping. We'll see if he can try to deliver, and the same thing can be said from Exceed. They both had their chances so far throughout this series, and they are the reason why this team finds themselves up 2-1. Oh yeah, and so far this has been a great hold from the Gorillas, starting off on the better side, getting 13 seconds off of P1. It's basically holding Seattle in that trap. Now they're able to break on out. These next wave of kills is going to be massive. Seattle able to come out on top in the trade situation. Exceeds the only player here is trying to contest it still. Oh. He finds two, but can't find the third on towards accuracy. What? Now you have to focus up, man, because you don't want those spawns to flip in. Seattle put a lot of pressure already towards stage. LAG now is going towards the bad side. Oh, oh my! Heavens! Good God. I don't know, man. It just feels like anytime there's a player right there, something either goes right or incredibly wrong. Miss shots there from Agri CJ. Uh, that's the only way. I can go. Yeah, that's tough. Now they still have spawns. There's that. Definitely still have spawns on the side of Seattle Surge. I'm pretty sure that was assault oh, in that assault. situation as well. So Seattle Surge do a great job of flipping the map, taking the better side of the spawns. And now it's all about the hold. LAG, they were able to flip it right on back. And Seed and Joe deceives, they find two. They already find the break. And now if you are Seattle Surge, this is gonna be your last push because you have to start thinking about that P3 hard point. 
They absolutely do. 25 seconds still to go in Seattle. Well, they're hitting that green light. They're trying to catch a few players in stride, trying to cut the map, and that is wonderful work here from Seattle in a position to walk away with the final 15. Accuracy eventually does get found out, but that is fine if you're Seattle. You'll happily allow for LAG to grab the final 10 seconds. Meanwhile, you set up for Fountain. A definite chance for a full 60, and these early kills are going to be big. And another one here from Lamar, seven and five. Barnes is trying to be that cutoff man, being the player pushed out towards P1, but he's still going to get that close back spawn. Now they're looking for a lot of pressure on through double doors. Oh! They can't find any of the kills as Pred finds three. Now on a nine streak. You can start to get aggressive on the map. We were wondering when Prep was going to hit that next level. What? And he's doing it right now, 10 screen counting, before he does get shut down. <laughs> like three players who were all just trying to make their way past that 50 yard line. Fred says no. An incredible start here from the Aussie as Surge pretty much guaranteed to have that full 60 at the fountain. And the scariest part, Jake, is that for Seattle, they are the number one breaking team here on Fortress Harpoint. I mean, a break here would surely spell disaster from the Gorillas. They've got to get their heads on straight and soon. And hopefully, they can knock away Pred in some of these early gunfights. Yeah, it's all about keeping Seattle on this side of the map. Oh, Make sure what? you're blocking those spots. Pred, huh? some of that pressure. He finds the first accuracy with the second. At least the close ones are still in for the Gorillas, but already the break is here for Seattle. Surge, Mac finds two, lines them up with that Vaznev. As now they are in. Gorillas. Very important gunfights here to not let the game get out of hand. Okay, well, that's a three for one trade. Last player. Oh, okay, he absolutely gets melted. McKenzie, understandably so, the man who delivers the final blow as Surge just have come out in this opening hard point with a point to prove. As we said, so much expectations on their shoulders, sporting that number one seed, not trying to get upset in their first match of the tournament. Mac, no, well, he doesn't have a reload, doesn't matter. Ends up coming away with it. Surge, the early break, and Surge with the solid, solid advantage, basically up 100 as we fly in now toward Blacksmith. Time to go over towards the Blacksmith. You're now gonna have the Gorillas maintaining this side of the map, staying pushed out towards stage, but you do have one player in accuracy who is trying to work towards the pinch. You take care of him. Now it's all about winning these gunfights. They cannot come out on top in the engagements. Neither squad now gonna be able to get any time off of this hill, but what? Yeah, just doing a great job. No, no. And finding the no. kills. What a snap no. right there from the predator. Are you serious? I almost took off my headset. Can't How let that happen, that? man. Is, is this gun shooting faster? I don't know what's going on. 16 and 6, currently from Pred. I don't even know if he's common right now, Jack. I think it is just straight up gunfight after gunfight. Accuracy, have your moment as well. Taking a look at the slaying numbers, you got 15 and 7, 15 and 10. Max has been making some influential kills now at 11 and 9. But as we said, the star so far here in game four is Pred. First set of rotations complete, and it does not get much better than that if you are Seattle. One, maybe one more good hard point, Jay, and this one could quickly be over. LAG in desperate need of some life. Yeah, LAG need a good setup, man. You know where the Swans are coming in for the side of Seattle Surge. So about keeping them in that trap, but they're not blocking that stage spawn. So a couple players from Seattle are gonna spawn on that side of the map. They're still not able to get on towards P1. Because now with only 35 seconds left, they do find a couple kills. They're able to leave some of that pressure. Seattle, they're thinking big picture. They're gonna cut their losses at P1. They're trying to find that spawn for P2. You just bought oh the game. Oh my, man. Fred just says, uh, no, not, absolutely not. No, I'm gonna walk through your shots. Eventually does get foiled, eventually found out, but Exceed already finding one. He has gotta go big in the stun. Does at least connect. We'll see what he can do as he's managed to stay alive. Gets the information on to Sid. Question is, can his teammates win their gunfights? He wins his, but the rest Cannot be said. Exceed doing everything he can toward the back start of the spawn. However, he gets dealt with. And take a look at that setup right now, Jay, for Seattle. A setup that allows for them to also escape, make it into Fountain. A wonderful, wonderful plate spot here for Surge. All eyes on LAG now. Yeah, the Gorillas have to find this break, man, because Seattle, they're thinking big picture. They already have players out towards the backsmith so they can win that rotation over towards next. 
as they know all of the gorillas gonna be putting pressure on towards the back end. Mac and Fred combined for two, Sip with the third. They hold strong from the front side of that hill. They're able to now breach that 200 point mark. This game is basically over, Lando. If gorillas do not rotate over towards P3, Seattle are gonna close this one out now. We've seen some crazier comebacks. I mean, uh, I don't know, Jay, LAG in the Fortress Control. They were working on their setups for Fountain. The question being, can they break through? Right now, they've got two players making their way in from the top map. The problem being is that there was no teammate support. Arsenis behind enemy lines, behind enemy territory, gets gunned by Sib, and from there, the early chance from LAG quickly will evaporate oh, man. into clean air, and Pred and Sib having themselves an opportunity to showcase why this team is one of the best, if not the best, in Hardpoint right now. They got them in the trap, man. All of the gorillas are gonna consistently spawn out towards bottom arch. You have to wrap back and try to get out from the peep one side, but you have to get past Pred and Sid. They are just cutting you guys down. Pred is finding all the timings. Already on another five street, doesn't want to invest that cruise missile. He's keeping the gun hot. He does get traded by Xeed, but Seattle can still win it here with one more set of kills. Yeah, absolutely. They can still win it here. LAG, no bodies. They're really going to be near this. Maybe somebody can make a heroic last second play. Could be Xeed. Everybody lingering to the middle side of the map. We see a team kill that ends up coming forward. Mac wins that, and there you go. To game five, we head. As Seattle Surge do not bow down. They swat away the gorillas like flies. Good heavens, Jake. That just, uh... I'll be honest, I, I thought multiple times of just leaving. Uh, yeah. It just felt like, okay, I'm gonna take a bathroom break. This is going game five. You can just tell how the game <laughs> is going, man. Like, Seattle, they were in control from start to finish up this map. When Pred was slaying the way that he was, hitting the turn on that, the turn on's the way that he was. You're definitely not going to find any success. That scoreline isn't pretty. 250 to 89. In a map like Fortress, where it's usually scrappy between both of these squads, but Seattle Surge do a great job of reading the spawns, flipping them when they need to, and then getting that money hill towards the P3, even with the Gorillas working on their setup in the previous map, wasn't good enough to shut down a Seattle Surge as they take both the hard points in this series. Now we have another game five. Lando, I don't know what it is, man. <laughs> it's me and you all the time when we talk about these game five. I actually just take, took a quick little look at my phone, and Tim's even like going, our stats guy is going back and forth <laughs> with it. Like, okay, you know what? It almost feels like the stats are irrelevant when it comes down to you and I, specifically yeah. you. You know, you're, you're one ahead of me when it comes to the game fives. But number one versus number eight, we said it was David versus Goliath. But right now, David's a tad tested, but who knows? We'll see if he can answer in this game number five. When we come back after the break, we're seeing El Asilo search and destroy. Stay with us.
Alrighty, Texas, it is game five time. The LA Gorillas taking on the Seattle Surge. It feels like this series maybe had the chance to go the distance. We've chatted about it numerous times, the number one versus the number eight seed. But the biggest thing, Jake, that we got to talk about, game fives are all about ice. And there is no player that we need to look at more than that man in accuracy. Take a look at the experience that he has over his teammates. Oh, man, it basically wow. showing that accuracy is an old head, brother. He is a <laughs> veteran without question. More career land experiences than his entire team combined. That's wild. This is your leader. And now in the game five, this is the guy who you have to look at to really set the tone for the Seattle Surge squad. I don't know about you, man, but it feels like just lately on LSC, Little Search destroyed the stats by no means back this up. So, you know, whatever. But it just feels like lately on LSC, Little, we've got so many rounds that are coming down to the wire. We know the way it plays with dead silence. You're going to need those clutch moments to be there. And as we said, positive for Seattle is that you got quite a bit, ex quite a bit of experience there in the Iceman, but you could say the exact same thing for LAG. Plenty of world championships there in that lineup from Archdies and Assault. Both rosters trying to avoid that elimination bracket as we jump in to round number one. LSC Low Search and Destroy. Last s &D, it was LHG who came away with the dub and largely in part to this man who also had the sniper out. But it is Mac who will answer early. Stuns himself and it's no big deal. Dave managed to find two. Yeah, that's a big two kills from Mac. Now put them in a 3v2 situation as the Exceed is able to line up that kill on towards Sib. It's not false into the hands of Exceed and RC to try to clutch up on the round for the Gorillas. The bomb is going to be down towards Keg. Mac is able to at least spot one, get that information, and stay alive. Let's see if we can do with that information. Exceed has managed to make his way just toward the backside of the mountain. So with that in mind, they're going to have to get that bomb soon. Mac eventually earns that dead silence, and from there, we'll see what the play elects to be. Arsh, he's got to be careful, Jay. Tagged up from behind. It was exceed to start. It's going to have to be him to end it. A 1v3 position known, and that sniper not able to deliver on a second. Seattle, round one. That's good work right there from Seattle Surge to beat the aggressors. In this early round, because you know there's no trophy systems to work with, so they're going to be playing nice and slow. But Matt takes that positioning towards Kagali. He's able to find the timing to find the first two kills. And then with that bomb being down, you saw it cause so many problems right there for the Gorillas. To try to pick it back up to get that bomb over towards B. As Seattle work that pinch, set up the trap, and eventually take round one. Let's see if Surge can make it too. They head in to see their first attack here on LSC Lo Search Destroy. This map was the only Search Destroy map that they did lose in our Major 3 qualifier. So it's not been great lately for them, even though it is a small sample size. When we talk about Search Destroy, a lot of questions on Surge. They win an LSC Lo Search Destroy. We can all agree that SD is back in prime form. Mac again able to deliver with our first being a problem right now for LAG. It's a big kill taking out Jodeci's as well because now you know there's only has to be one player left in towards the site. It's going to be AD and he finds two. Tries to go for the snap on towards Sid but at least makes it a manable situation. 2v2 now. Oh, this young man is confident. Thankfully, he's got the cover fire from Assault. And so with that, LAG sneak away. They don't find first blood, but now they've evened it. Accuracy but the chance to strike. He so far had a great performance in these first I guess round and a half, and that bomb is going to go down. Assault on one side, exceed on the other. Now time for the retake, Sib eventually found out. Assault able to find it, and now it is all up to the Iceman. A 1v2. Iceman with the 1v2, he puts himself in a great position. He's gonna find the first Ooh. kill. No, he is not. Exceed cuts him down with the Vaznev. What started off as a great round from the Seattle Surge, finding the first initial two kills. Exceed the playmaker. He did it in map number two. He just did it in that round right there for the Gorillas. Finds three on the round to keep them alive in this search and destroy. Now tied at one. I'll tell you what, man. I know there's been a lot of critiques around this LAG roster, but <laughs> I feel like I like all of them. I really, I feel like I like all of them. Like we're talking about Joe Deceives, Assault. I know Naval's touch start at the start of the day. It feels like he's playing some of his best COD in a long time. And like we said, the rookies especially exceed in this situation. 
confidence at an all-time high. A wonderful little hat trick there. In terms of the screen, Sid bringing out the sniper on the other side, Exceed getting that hit marker. Tosses out a nade, says a prayer, and not able to make it land. Aggression will in fact be his downfall as Pred is able to find another. 4v2 now for Seattle, LAG. What's the play call? I think Seattle doing a great job of just not giving up that quick bomb plan. That's usually where the Gorillas like to find a lot of success. Second on attacking rounds. Once they get that bomb down with ease, they're putting players in great positions to pick up information and eventually find that first blood. Now Dota Steve's gonna invest that dead silence. He's able to take down Mac. So now in a 3v2 situation, still gotta work towards his bomb plan. They do indeed. Assault. Has he just made the route? Yes, he has. Another kill found. Accuracy instantly pops dead silence, but Pred. Runs right into the site, cuts away Joe Deceives. Bomb does not get planted. And now for Assault, that dead silence is about to run out. His position is about to be known. A 1v2 spot. Can he make the play happen? Coming around the corner. 10 seconds to go. He's got to make a play. Get some hit markers on the bread. Bread drops him. Seattle, their second. Just great round right there from the Seattle Surge. Once again, to find that first blood. Once they find the second, so the Gorillas are trying to put the numbers back into their side, but that 2v2 situation, once Assault finds that kill, you saw Exceed, he was trying to work towards that bomb plan, but Pred invested that, that silence, able to take him down, and then just not any time on the clock for Assault to work with. As Seattle are able to take the round, so far this has been back and forth. Three straight first bloods for Surge. Can they make it four in a row? His utility is exchanged, and maybe a bit of a test, a bit of a viewpoint over at that B bomb site currently for Mac. He's definitely thinking about it. He's popped dead silence just to get to his position currently. But Exceed so often he goes for the flanks no matter what the map tends to be. He's found himself at a nice little angle. We'll see what he can come away with it, but this is really going to be the fight that we talk about. Joe Deceive sitting in money, ready to open up that door. Nothing yet to strike, but player number two is the guy to look out for. Oh, yeah, Exceed, he pops that dead silence. He's able to work his way all the way around, around back white. He's able to get all the information, find the first kill, and at least set up his teammate to find the second. They know the positioning of Sib. You cut him down. Now it's all up to the ice in a 1v4. Not going to invest the dead silence. Because that round just took too long to develop on the side of Seattle Surge. It leaves the opening for Exceed to get all the information that was needed, set up that flank, and eventually put them in the trap as they find all four kills clean. Now tie it up at two. Yeah, that's just a wonderful collapse, man. Like, literally, we just see everybody from Seattle fall in just a matter of seconds. Exceed, patient on the flank, Joe Deceives. Everybody on track with what the play call was right there. As we said for Joe, didn't really jump into money when he could have. Didn't really feel the pressure to make the play. Gorillas ready. And had the strat call down. Gorillas will be back on the attack, and this time it could be Pred. He's able to answer early, makes his way through the alley. He's got a plethora of information. Oh. Give him two. Oh. Give him three. Arson, he drops, and just like that, round five done. Seattle take the lead. Fred just made that round look easy. The most difficult engagement had to be this second gunfight, but once he finds this in those two, where's the communication right there from the Gorillas? As he just gets the freebie onto Joe Deceives. Basically calls the round by himself as he finds three. Fred now puts himself on a three spree as we go into the later half of this game, but it's been all out defense for both of these squads. Seattle, 3-2. That is the number one KD in Major 3 Search Destroy so far throughout this season. Or so far throughout this split, a 1.8 coming in from Pred. Now sits at six and two. And you can see the bait. Pred trying to throw the shoulder, set up Sib for the shot. Throws out the bullet, but nothing able to land. He's trying to hit a couple wall bangs, trying to do their best two real impression. Two real is able to read their setup, and even with Sib. Being stunned in that situation, he's able to find the first blood onto Exceed. 
Now you know that that's one of the players that likes to get aggressive in towards the site, but you open up a lane for Pred, he finds a second. How about that duo? How about that duo? Joe, meanwhile, on the other side, is able to find two. They call it Pred, understandably so, to clean up. And now it is up to Arsenis, the captain of LAG. A 1v2 for him. Bomb planted, a bit of information. What can Alec do here? He has no dead silence. He has no dead silence. He has to read this setup perfectly. He's gonna go for the free fire on towards the back couches. Not able to get any hit markers on towards Pred, but Pred is chasing this kill. He's trying to earn that cruise. He is indeed. Arsenis fires on a few bullets. This kill is gonna be huge. He's gonna find it in a timely manner. Accuracy arrives. Like a superhero swoops in and saves Pred. You could feel it. It felt like there was an opportunity there from Arsenis, but Pred stays alive. Accuracy puts in the final shots. Surge already up four rounds to two, but this is how that round started. This is the reason why they had that man count advantage. Yeah, that starts it all off, man. Once he finds that kill with the sniper, you see all of the gorillas starting to rotate over towards B's site, which eventually opens the lane for Pred to find two kills on the round. Seattle are able to take the very first attacking round in this search and destroy. Now up 4 2, but if you are Pred, you know how crucial that cruiser is to complete. Let's just play this nice and slow. Without a doubt, instantly into the office as silence befalls us here on LSC Low Search. LAG, especially, knowing how valuable of a round this is, it feels like for Surge, you're playing with house money. You know exactly what the call needs to be, but shout out to the Hot Hands Lounge showing us the amount of dead silence that you have for LAG. I mean, everybody's cooking that up. Exceed able to walk away with the first. Mac tosses out a nade, desperate for information. Sib aggression will end up taking him down. And now for LAG, all members up. That should be a oh, free man. bomb plant, and it doesn't even matter. Bomb does not have to even go down. LAG answer. Yeah, right there, if you're Seattle in that situation, everybody just hold down your positioning. You shouldn't be trying to be the aggressive on that map. You're shutting down that early aggression in towards the A site. You know they're not going for the quick bomb plant, but just hold down your positioning. It shouldn't be Pred just flying in through bottom courtyard, especially on a five spree. And he was one off of earning that crew, so plays right into the hands of the Gorillas wanted him to. So able to find all four kills on the round, keeps themselves now down 4-3 in this game, and they also shut down that cruise missile progression on the side of Fred. And you can see the strategies that are working. Like we said, four players, at least for the moment, we're rocking that dead silence. You could see somebody switch back, but Gorillas had a play call in mind. They're able to make it land there. Arsties will quickly pop his daddy to just make sure he's able to stay alive in a decent spot. But right now for Surge, all eyes on that B-bomb site. Joe deceives. He's been patient not reveal his position too early. As he walks through the door, there is nobody there. Everybody's still looking for info. As right now, Seattle, they could be making the bomb rotation. Yeah, you can see the play call coming in with Pred finding himself in this position. Should be able to work his way on the deep flank and make it an easy rotation over towards A. That bomb is now going to get planted. It's time for Pred to strike. He finds that first blood, but that silence is not reset. Exceed makes it a 3v3. This next gunfight is going to be huge. Exceed. Gonna say, pops that dead silence. Looks to get a move on right now for LAG. Three members to take down a bomb to fuse. That timer continues to run down. Accuracy with the great plays toward the outside. He ends up getting Seattle that much closer to a 5 3 advantage. It's all on to assault, and he gets found out as well. Seattle continuing to fight, continuing to answer. Fred has just been a monster so far in this game, 5J. That's just beautiful mid-round adjustments right there from Seattle. They show presence over towards field side. You get a couple plays from the Gorillas to rotate towards that side of the map. Once you do that, you find Fred with that dead silence, able to sneak his way into enemy lines, finds that first flood, frees up that A-bomb plant, and eventually you're able to win the trade battle. So now Seattle puts themselves at game point, Fred having a stellar performance in this game pod. Two first blood so far for him. Same thing for Sib and Mac. It's been an all-out team effort in the early stages of this round for Surge. One round is all they need. 
to escape and to see Saturday. Utility tossed as LAG. Wheels are turning. Looking to make the call, trying to just work off of every single bit of information that they can. First blood would be huge. Mac stays alive, holds his irons as LAG begin to make their first look at a play. Yeah, Mac is just holding down this positioning while he's doing that. He pred on your mini map. He's waiting for his time to strike as the gorilla is going to pop that dead silence. Work up through Cag Alley, able to take down Mac in towards the site. Now the bomb is going to begin planted in the 4v3. That is great work there from the young guns of LAG. Perfect timing. However, Sid ends up dropping Assault on the outskirts, and Pred has just found the greatest timing possible. Right on the bomb! Oh. Nearly snaps! Exceed sweat off his brow, but he's got to get that bomb down quick. Not feeling confident of it. Arshnees gives the call. He wins his fight! Big Daddy Alec! Count me out, why don't you? A crucial double as LAG stay alive. LAG just made the plays, man. You take your time on that attacking round, even with getting first blooded in that situation. Exceed wins a huge one-on-one, -on -one, shuts down the aggression on the side of Pred, and then does not rush that bomb plant because you saw all the players from Seattle tunnel visioning, trying to get him off of that site. Sets up Arsides to find the final two kills on the round. And to round number 10 we go. The Gorillas are staying alive, man. They are indeed. Will we see a round 11? Or can Seattle call series right here? No surprise, the common strategy for LAG is to put their rookies at the forefront. They're receiving quite a few shots right now, both weak. Oh yeah, they again went wall banged out of those situations, out of those positions that they like to play in towards this site. While wow, that was doing that, look at Pred. Already sneaks his way behind enemy lines again. There was no way. There was surely no way. Oh my goodness. Tosses out a shot, throws a nade, nothing lands, but Mac able to find the first. Can he make it a second? Into the 3v3 we go. Arsene is able to find one toward the outside, so Pred is wiped away, and from there, how does Seattle look to adapt? Iceman and accuracy giving Seattle numbers 3v2. Time continues to tick. And Assault is in a great position to at least shut down this push. So he's going to be the sole player from the Gorillas over towards this B site. He picks up the information onto one, oh. finds that onto accuracy, but they're just going to get off the bomb. They're not going to plan it. 3v1 now. Oh, it's all on to exceed. It is all on to the young gun. Finds his kill and escapes. Now a 1v2, accuracy toward the top. He's got information. Does he decide to go for the kill onto him? Can he manage to find it? No, quickly pivots, goes back in the bomb site. 38 seconds to go. What does he have cooked up? What does he have prepared? Accuracy continues to dance, and it's a beat down. It's a knife. Slicing and dicing, and Seattle survive. Goes to a game five, round 10 but our number one seed stays alive. Oh boy, was that close, Jay. I was not expecting it to be that close, man. If you talk about how both of these squads performed all throughout stage three, it was Seattle Surge coming in with that number one seed. They should have been able to take care of this one with ease, but LAG, they came to play today, man. They were able to tie up the series in the first search and destroy, clutch up in the control. But in the final two maps, Seattle Surge had a little bit more to play with. They clutch up in that game, number five, now turns the tides in that record. They were one and four when he talked about yep. game fives. Now that's two and four. They fall short in that first search and short, but they bounce back on a map that they did lose all throughout stage three. They make the plays, they make the adjustments, and they're able to clutch up in the search and destroy. I thought the Gorillas put themselves in a great position right there. Yeah. I would have liked to see Exceed in that 2v1 situation commit towards that gunfight versus accuracy and then force it to at least be a 1v1. But once you don't find that kill, right. you get the information on towards Mac, you trap yourself in towards the site. The pitch is going to be on for the Seattle Surge. They clutch up in that game number five and take the series. It makes you wonder too, I mean, if Assault is able to win that long range fight versus accuracy, we're yeah. into a 2v2. One gun fight, oftentimes, is all that it takes. A big W here for Seattle. And I know, Jay, that, you know, from a team aspect and from a player's POV, you're never happy with the loss. But I yeah. from an outsider standpoint, very happy with what we saw here from LAG. But it just feels like for them, 
probably walking away a little frustrated. Another close loss. Just kind of go back. You got to think, man. The LAG can get back into the very first form of this team where they were good at hard point. One of the best enemies that we had. They could potentially would have taken down Seattle Surge, but they fall short in both of those modes. They get all the way to a game five. Just didn't have enough ice versus the Iceman. And they fall short in that one as well. They do indeed. Seattle Surge able to stay alive despite the best effort being displayed here from the LA Gorillas. That's going to do it for myself and Jay. As we toss it on to the main stage, Bryce, take it away, buddy. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm here with Pred. Uh, congratulations. Obviously, a big win in the first stage of today. But before we talk about how glorious that game was, I want to talk to you about the Seattle Surge roller coaster. Your team is infamous from ups and downs. How is it feeling being a player in that situation? I mean, look, it's obviously very tough. You know, we win the tournament, then we come last. We come second, then we come last. I mean, if I had an answer, I would, I mean, I wish <laughs> that couldn't happen. I mean, it, I don't, honestly don't know. It just tends to happen. Um, but we're trying to make a change to that. Uh -huh. We're sick of that roller coaster. We're honestly getting sick of it. Um, so we're hoping to make it for that. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing it as well. All right, let's talk about the half points. Uh, you guys look great today, and is this something you've been working on, making sure that it's number one for coming into this tournament? Yeah, for us, you know, we're a very good half point team, man. We've expanded our map pool, so for us, it's just you know making sure that half point is dominant, which I feel like it is. Um, and yeah, man, I feel like we've really worked hard on our half point, and it shows. Yeah, it certainly does. It was a great game as well. Uh, let's move. Let's jump then right into that final S and D. Just coming onto the stage, you probably wouldn't have seen this at home, but. Fred, you're basically bouncing, walking up into the interview, like just how crazy and intense that game was. I want, it, I want it from your perspective of how, especially those final few rounds went. Um, look, we've been putting a lot of hard work in S&D and for us it's just to get, like we, it was good for us to get that map five out the way and start the tournament because I feel like that's really good to start a tournament against the jitters out the way. You know, so for us it was really big winning a map five as well, a lot, under a lot of pressure. Um, and you know, man, that last round, uh, Mac had no ammo for about the whole round. I mean, I was watching his screen, so that's why when we won and he ended up knifing him at the end, I just, for me, I was like mind blown what I was watching, so yeah. Oh, it was certainly entertaining for everyone as well. Uh, coming into this one tournament, you've talked about pressure, right? Number one seed, everybody doesn't know whether your new guys are gonna be amazing or not. What are probably the main things as a team you've been focusing on to make sure that it's number one seed all the way? Um, for us, it's, um, you know, the most important thing is uh, just to make sure we stay focused and, um, you know, don't really listen to the outside noise and stuff like that because we know how good we are. Okay. And that's our main thing, man. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear it. And congratulations on your win once again. Everybody, give it up for Pred from Seattle Surge. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to send it back up to the main stage. Thank you, brother. Let's break it down. Seattle Surge, they get the job done, although it was a lot closer than I was expecting. Nameless, we started the segment off before the series, right, saying any given day, any given day, right, things can happen. Number one seed versus number eight, LAG. Even though they take the loss, they still got a W in my mind. Yeah, I mean, LAG, they push them all the way to the limit, man. And, and, you know, they still got a W in your mind, like you say, but you think if you're in a game five against Seattle Surge and Search and Destroy, where Seattle was once weak, you can capitalize just so many things that they LAG did wrong in the last game, and, and Seattle capitalized on it, right? Like, we saw LAG, they're making these pushes, you know, when they're on defense, getting up and behind them, exceeding Jonas Steve's trying to do what they can, but they have to be actionable. And at times, we saw them just sort of waiting and allowing Pred to make that first player, that first strike, right? And Pred has been so good at these first bloods. In the middle of this game, like, the adjustments that were made, it just wasn't enough. Pred was picking them apart. I know we're talking about this game, but this yeah. arena <laughs> is electric right now. Optic Texas is taking the stage, and the crowd is letting them hear it. They got to home turf, home ground, maybe. Last time they won a championship, it was right here. They're looking to do the same, this time with Ghosty. But I, and I think right now it's just Dashy, but when they get up there, baby, it's going to get even louder. Ali, I want to go to you. Fred, I'm a believer. He is oh, yeah. absolutely <laughs> incredible. He was slaying out this final game for Women's Search. I think going 11 and 5. Talk to me about it. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's a back and forth talk between who's the best SMG in the game when it comes to Hydra and Fred. You know, when we see two, both these players on the map, it is just consistency. All game modes across the board. They're putting up the numbers. That game 5 to go 11 and 5, 13k damage. He had a 3k for the lead to push them during that round number 7. So for Seattle Surge, I honestly, I look at this series and I think it's a good one for them. It almost went the same way as last matchup in that game number 5. I got a little bit nervous. I, I got did. nervous yep. for their search destroy they clutched up in the end and like Fred said I think that was a really good map five for them to win to start off this tournament the only thing I think they need to go back on is that map number two map number two which uh, obviously was that SD 6-3 yeah. mark we were watching that and for me that was a big victory uh, for LAG I really thought the series at that point could turn around for them 
No, no doubt about it. And I think winning that map number three control, right, really sort of put them in the driver's seat and maybe made Seattle fans a little bit nervous. But that Fortress Hardpoint, I mean, that was just Seattle. That was them, right? They were playing at their best. But I think Seattle, you know, winning that game five search and destroy, right? The S&D struggles last stage, getting that win under their belt. Yeah. And I think it's great momentum because you're going to be playing FaZe or Thieves next. <laughs> and they have to build off that. That is not an easy round whatsoever. Well, let's move into our Scott play of the, ga uh, play of the game. And it's Prez with the swing grounds alley. Walk me through it. It seemed like he was a walking highlight reel. I mean, uh, yeah, throughout this entire series, I mean, it comes down to the game number five, right? This is that 3K I was talking about. He gets behind enemy lines. He gets the information. He snaps onto this second guy and I mean the comms just unfortunately could not come through fast enough when it comes to Joe Deceives and what's so good about Seattle for me right now is the way that their search and destroy is looking I think where they found fault is they have one of the best snipers and best ARs on their team and that's in the likes of Civ and when it comes to search and destroy snipers are so important in this game but it's also difficult to make that choice of like we right. take off the pressure that Civ adds onto map and put him on the sniper to counter eyes exceed on the other side do we allow him to keep the tack out and let him try to get up aggressive right. in those front lines? So for me, I think accuracy took on that role, played a lot more aggressive in those maps two and five, and I'm happy to see that when it comes to their search. It was a risk they were willing to take, and it paid off, at least in the end. Seattle search will move forward. LAG, though, they still look strong. I'm sure they're going to be just fine down in the elimination bracket. But let's check out some things we are offering right over here at the CDL. Talking about the CDL shop, you have all to choose from. I was actually walking walk the venue. Hey, we got some fresh stuff out there. They got new hoodies, the full lineup of 2023 jerseys. But on top of that, you want to look good virtually. We got our team packs in game. Look like the pros, play like the pros with the new CDL team packs. Hey, they got it all. Home and away, melon, female versions, whatever you need to look fashionable. Nameless, what are you rocking? Listen, man, I switched it up. I uh, was rocking the Toronto Ultra. Now I'm rocking the Vegas Legion. Got to support my boy Jim. Joe. Okay. Who, when you run up against the uh, skins, who's the biggest demon? What's the skin? biggest demons? Yeah, who, who's dominant? Hmm, I got to think about this, dude. I feel like that these these ones are always a little, a little low key. demons. And then, like, dude, the optic ones, bro, I'm just trying to be trying to be scumped, dude. I'm like, oh, <laughs> got to watch out for those guys. But I love how the, the hoodies look, uh, you know, a lot like the camos in game. I think that's sick. Yeah, that's dope. Well, the arena was already getting loud. I think it's going to get even louder. Coming up next, a series everybody's been waiting for. Boston Breach played against Optic Texas. Don't go anywhere. It's coming up right after this.
Welcome back to Major 3, the Optic Texas Major here at Esports Stadium, Arlington. What a hype intro that was. We got Hitch on the drums going out with the battle cry. Stadium, I gotta ask you, are we hype? Are we ready for Optic Texas to play? It's gonna be an absolute hype matchup. Boston Breeze, they're gonna have their hands full, but you know what? They knew what they were getting themselves into when they came and they stepped into this venue, and I bet you they are ready 100% to play this without question. Nameless, sure. this series means a lot. It does, man. And, you know, you talk about Boston Breach, like they get a top two seed, but it seems like a tougher draw when you look at this Optic Texas roster, their win over a phase, and then this crowd, this home field advantage is huge. It's going to play a big factor, but there are so many variables when you look at this series, right? You think about right. this Optic team without Scump in front of the green wall, how will they perform? The rookies on either side of that stage, you look at Beans and you look at Ghosty, playing in front of a crowd like this is no That's joke. Right. The yeah. stakes have never been higher. This is going to be wild. Yeah, two rookies, first major facing off against each other. A big match for them and a huge expectation, I think, for both of the players, whether it be Beans or Ghosty. But let's take a look at Optic, right? Home field advantage. They got the green wall behind them. This is their run through. And Ali, it wasn't an easy task to get into the winner's bracket. No, I mean, it's been a struggle for them thus far. I mean, you know, you can see it in the layout here. It's been kind of a little bit of a roller coaster. That loss to Ultra probably hit pretty hard. And then that loss to Subliners. And they rounded out with that 3-1 win versus FaZe just to get it into winner's bracket. So they've been getting the job done, but just barely slipping by. So they're really going to need the green wall this opening matchup. And the only thing that really scares me about Optic Texas, when you saw those matchups, it's like one day they were on when they were playing fundamentally sound, doing yeah. the correct things on the map. And then the following day, when they go up against one of the top echelon teams, they made those little mistakes. And when you're playing against some of the best teams, they can capitalize on that. So for Optic Texas, you have to make sure those fundamentals are in play. Going up against a team like Boston, who even with the new roster, haven't really yeah. been making a lot of mistakes. Yeah, and you know, talking about the discipline and the fundamentals, right? Like when they played FaZe, they had discipline. And yeah. Shotzi, the guy that's on your screen, right now he's the guy in question right there's a lot of stuff that are on his a lot of things are on his shoulders now he's the face of call of duty we've seen it and at times he makes these mistakes in game you know it's a lot that he's dealing with in the map right like he's the playmaker he's trying to hit the routes right so it's a tall task to ask but that's what they need of him he needs to be fundamentally sound and versus phase it seemed like they respected their opponent yeah. to another level right they're able to get out of that with a 3-1 win if they can bring that style of play into this that level of intensity this is a team that can make a run, but we haven't seen the consistency yet out of this roster all season, right? So that's what we're looking at here. Just fundamentally sound plays, because we know they have the talent. Yeah. We know they can bully a team on any given day. Can they put it together for all tournament, though? That's right. That's the big question. And, uh, I, and really, this is a great opening match to see what Optic's going to bring for the entire weekend. It is stamina base, right? This is only Thursday. We got three more days after this. It's not going to be easy, but Shotzi was our player to watch for Optic. We'll see how well he's going to do it. I'm sure he'll rise up to the occasion. But let's talk about our second opponent, or at least our second team, Boston Breach, a team that really turned things around once Beans joined the roster. They weren't winning game fives. Beans joins, they win their first ever game five. Also in franchise history, they're not beating LA Thieves, but yet they do it in the final week. A lot of positives out. Yeah, they were breaking a lot of things. They couldn't win game fives, and now they are. Their search and destroy is looking a lot cleaner since adding Beans to the lineup and adding the sniper to the lineup as yeah. well, which is incredibly dynamic in a game like this where having a sniper is literally detrimental 
to the success in this game two and five. So the Boston Breach, they're on the ups right now heading into this. They had, you know, a middle of the pack sort of road to get here ending four and one. But again, you got to talk about Big Wake, right? This is a player on this team that when he's on the map, probably the most terrifying gunfight to get into. And I really want to focus on those game twos and fives. Wake has 10 clutches on the season, seven of, seven of those being a 1v2 clutch. I mean, this guy, when he, if he's still alive, you are not guaranteed around. <laughs> that's right. That's right. In Awakening, incredible in his own right. Nero, too, I think a great compliment to this roster. But Nameless, just to hone in on Awakening, talk to me about it. I mean, the guy's a monster. What more that's needs right. to be said? Like, right. and it really, like, it's sort of, I think with the roster change, he sort of had to refigure out how he wanted to play on this team. Like, yeah. Beans is a way different player than Methods. And now, towards the end, especially with the LA Thieves win, Awakening really set back into yes. himself, which is a mega slayer, right? That's right. Uh, but let's make sure we paint the picture correctly. Coming into this series, if we look at the performance from Stage 3, and when you look at Boston throughout this game, like they're the favorite in this series. When you really look I at agree. it, like Boston is solid in all three game modes, top six across the board. They're winning their game fives now. The search and destroy looks great in control. They have the edge, right? Can they put it together on land? Because every time I feel like throughout this game, we've been talking about Boston. Looks so good on line. Top two in the qualifying stage. What will they do on land? And yep. then they just blunder and they get knocked out That's or right. something happens, right? So this is an opportunity for these guys with this new team to get that momentum and confidence going forward because when we talk about Beans, he brings that energy. How much more energy do you need than if you come in versus Optic with a Hey, Beans, I think they tweet out, he gives them the gas in order to succeed. I love that the punt's coming through, but <laughs> now we got to get serious because there was a lot of discussion in the green room about the maps that we're going to be seeing. Let's take a look at our maps and modes. And uh, Ali, you want to start it off? Let's go for yeah, it. Yeah, instantly, this is a bit of a square up for me. That map number two, I think it's going to be really decisive in this series simply because it's going to be a Nero versus Hook show. Nero has a 2.6 on that map and Sheesh. mode, and Hook mirrors that with a 3.1. Yeah, you thought Three. it couldn't get back. Better, but it got better somehow. So those are definitely going to be your players to watch here on that map number two. Nameless, I got to hear your opinion. Uh, you know, I just kind of look at the series and I'm like, all right, that game four is going to be very tough for Boston, but that Fortress Control, I think, is the most important map in yeah. the series. Optic, historically, have not been that great at control throughout this game. And when you look at Fortress, it's a map that they haven't done well on. And for Boston, that's where they had the advantage in the series, right? It's like a CeeLo and Fortress, they're comfortable on both of those. Optic can't go to a CeeLo, so Boston got a lockdown game three. Seems like Hardpoint, though, is something I want to hone in on just a little bit, right? When it comes to these two teams, Hardpoint really does set the precedence. And I think even in our last series that we just saw, Seattle Surge, their Hardpoint games were just absolutely out of this yeah. world. And you could tell that momentum from those Hardpoint games going into Surge was tremendous. Alley. Here's their records. I mean, it's kind of showing for you on the screen here. It's funny because this is exactly what I have in my notebook. The fundamentals have been lacking for the Boston Breach. I think Jay made a good point that Optic Texas has been kind of back and forth of when they decide to stick to the rules of the game. But Boston Breach, I mean, last time I saw them, I think they need to get their priorities straight when it comes to prioritizing certain hills on that Hydro. They continuously were prioritizing three P3, which is one of the most mixy hills on that map and mode. They still were able to pull out that series, but it's little blunders like that that could seriously cost them against a team like Optic Texas who on any given day could have their fundamentals on complete lock. That's well, right. I will say that break percentage for Boston is pretty good, but especially when you get to a map like Mercado, yeah, it's sure. really difficult for a lot of teams to break. Uh, the series is kind of interesting because like, most teams are vetoing Hydro against Optic. We haven't seen Optic play it too many times, and Boston's a good Hydro team. So we'll see if it pays off them going to Mercado, a map that they're 0-2 on that they haven't played in a while. Well, it seems like it's time for us to put our uh, our names on the line. Like, let's do our <laughs> predictions, right? And this is always a tough one to do, but I'm coming into it. And honestly, one of my favorite teams is about to play. I think at least my prediction has to be Boston Breach. I'm going Boston Breach. I think they're going to take it. I know, hey, I know, look, and, and it's scary as a new host to come up here and go against the grain. <laughs> But Boston Breach, I think they're the better team here. Let's see what they can do. Study, what about you? I think this is going to be a back and forth series, but Boston Breach are going to be able to take it all the way into game number five, man. What Beans <laughs> is able to do with that sniper, you have to be able to shut him down. If Gosey's not going to be the answer, someone has to step up in that position. They're not happy with us for sure, but Allie, what about you? Hi, crowd. Hi, chat. I know everybody <laughs> is just shaking for whatever I'm about to say, but surprisingly, I think you might be happy with, with, it, with this. I'm going with Optic Texas. Even okay. Statistically, <laughs> even statistically, I think they have the edge. Okay, Optic Texas. That's at least one on the board for the analyst. Yeah. Nameless. Listen, Are we going two for two? Listen, I just always keep it a buck. I don't think Optic <laughs> Texas is a championship caliber team just yet. They still have a lot of things that they're working on. But when I look at Boston Breach, they haven't put it together on land ever. And going up against like this squad in front of this crowd, I think Optic Texas take this one. Sheer talent. Alone. 
You're going off to Texas? Wow. Nameless optics. He literally crazy. switched it up he last second. What are you doing? No, I, I put that pick in earlier. All right, uh -huh. fair enough. You just faked me out. All right, two for One two. Point. Optic Texas for both down there. We're going Boston Breach. Audience, who are you going for? Are you going Optic Texas? That was quiet. That was no, quiet. They're that getting more than that. Okay, what about Boston Breach? Oh, they're loud for the booze. All right, fair enough. Loud. Fair enough. I think we're ready <laughs> to get this series started. Landon, I'm excited to send it to you, baby. Take it away. All righty, Texas. Let's go. Come on. This is the matchup you guys have all been waiting for. Optic Texas taking on the Boston Breach. Everybody's already standing up, which I absolutely love. If there's anybody sitting down, get up. This is the match that we have been waiting for, but it is time to introduce our teams. It's a roster that is new, a team with a point to prove. Welcome to the main stage, your Boston Breach. Vivid, Beans, Awakening, and Nero, Boston Breach. Oh man, they're sitting in green, but they're on the wrong side of that wall. Let me tell you, man, they got to perform up against the green wall and a team coming in here with a lot of pressure. They need to put it together on land. We haven't seen it yet, but they got a newcomer on the squad, Beans. Will he be the difference today? Bryce, or excuse me, Lando, bring out. It's all right, Ant, no worries, buddy. All righty, folks. It is time. One year ago today in this very same venue, this team was crowned. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Optic Texas! <laughs> Ghosty, Shotzi, Dashi, and Hook, Optic Texas. I mean, I think the crowd speaks for me when this team walks up onto the stage. I didn't notice three out of the four players had a Y at the end of their names. And why are we cheering so loud for them? Because it's a championship caliber team looking to get their second homestand win. And it's Ghosty's first time getting face to face with the green wall. You guys better get loud for him, even if he gets one kill. Let's get this started. Let's go, Lando. Let's go, Ali. All right, I'm going to ask you guys one more time. Get on your feet. Get loud. Boston versus Optic Texas starts right now. Miles and Chance, have a fun one, guys. How could we not have a fun one? The crowd's already electric. The players are on stage, ready to rock and roll. And we get to run it back. Last time these two teams faced up on land, it was a memorable one indeed, Chance. Ready to rock and roll, bro. Let's and, get it. And look, man, that was with the Boston home crowd behind their own team, and Optic still came out 3-0. And obviously, the rosters have been shaken up. There is a lot for these guys to be proven. And you got to imagine, what a warm welcome for a go see in an absolute treat for beans. You never forget your first time. No, oh, you will not forget your first time. Mine was very different. Not so many people watching, but this is going to be a fun one indeed. Very, very different players, very different roles on that team. Beans has got a lot to live up to. He's the main slayer for that squad. If this crowd shuts him down, that's going to be a problem for Boston. It is such a fun dynamic between these two teams as well. I know the desk was like hammering home on the fundamentals. I'm just looking across this like stage. This is a demon lobby. The pop-off potential is absolutely nuts. Shotzi at the very top of that list. When this man is on point, he's an objective player as well. He sets up his team on top of the Woo! fact that this dude drops bombs. The hill time is there. The KD is matching that of some of the best AR players in the world. And obviously, that slang prowess, that potential. 25 kills per map compared to 21. Shotzi does it all. Shotzi does it all. But of course, Awakening and Shotzi, two very different players. They're going to be squaring up on different parts of the map. We'll see them go head to head here in the stats. Wonderful numbers either side of the board, though. We'll see if the clutch factor is still there. Awakening, the 1v2 master in search and destroy. And Shotzi, a difficult contender in nearly every situation you find him in. This is going to be a fun one, ladies and gentlemen. Cannot wait to rock and roll in this one. We thank you here in Arlington, Texas. These Sports Arena has been fantastic to be back. You're an incredible crowd. And for those of you watching online on Twitch, the watch parties all over the world, 
Hope you're very cozy. This is going to be a long one. Hey, this is going to be a map just to start things off on Embassy, where we are going to learn so much so quickly. Because for Optic, it has not been their strongest map all year long. They got a two and six record, but with this squad throughout stage three, one and one, and they have showed a ton of improvements. The guys like Ghosty, you know, he's the Hill Kid. He's going to be the super soaker for the team. It's about the orchestration. But if this game ends and he has less than two minutes in the hill, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> we'll see. I got to catch up with Ghosty briefly yesterday when we were getting the end of the venue. Very, very confident young man. Excited to be on the roster. I said, are you feeling any pressure? Are you feeling, you know, big shoes to fill indeed? And he said, hey, man, I need to play my game. I'm not going to let those fans down. We're going to go big. And we're going to go home. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Fist bumps are out. On the other side of the board, though, for Boston Breach, this is a tough one, Chance. For the fans at home, you know, who maybe don't know what it feels like in the arena, it is electric and it is very green. And Nameless could not have said it better. These boys are on the wrong side of that green wall. And it is just hard to be calm and it is hard to play your game. The difference of a vibe you have when you're playing in the online matches, fist bumping just your boys in a tiny little room, compared to dealing with this crowd, making this much noise nonstop, it is so difficult to play your game. And I know for who, we heard the comms that he had when he was playing against Atlanta, they had that tournament energy in the online matches, so it's going to be easy for these guys to translate into the gameplay. For Boston, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Well, yeah, we'll see how Boston uh, go because, again, it's the first time we're really seeing this roster perform on land. They said they haven't been able to bring good numbers or solid performances. We'll see if they can find that special source here today. This crazy Thursday. They are relentless, Charles. They're going to have no. It's Thursday, guys. They're going to have no voice tomorrow. Save yourselves a long week. Call of Duty here in Arlington, Texas. Nearly ready to rock and roll, ladies and gents. This first map is going to be a bloodbath. Now, Charles, last time we saw these two teams play uh, you know, Hydro Hardpoint, Dash is crazy. Cross up, you know, that final, you know, was that the Pipes Hardpoint? We saw some insane moments, crazy clutch up ability, but this is two totally different crosses now. Absolutely. I mean, two new players as well. And to take a look at how these guys have been doing, not exactly the slang prowess for Ghosty, right? 0.8 in that 0.9 range. But again, less than two minutes of the hill would be a shock to me for what he is going to provide. And for Beans, I think we've seen him get a little bit better over time. The s and though, is where he's going to be a standout player and where he needs to be the standout player for this team. Obviously, game five, Boston have turned it around. That is the Beans factor. And even on a map like El Asilo, you have who? Who's going to the fourth? 15 and 1 going on 11 sprees. You have Dash use KD is ridiculous on that map. Whew. That's where Beans has to bring that extra little oomph to this team. And if he can't do that, SD is going to suffer. But for the respawn, it's obviously the SMGs on the side of Boston for me that are going to be running the show. Nero, again, when I said Demon Lobby, he is at the tippy top of that list. And obviously, Vivid, he's been the fastest player in the league for a few years now. You know they're bringing the pace. Yeah, this is kind of lobby. You came across you know, these these like I drop out in I'd be all F4. On. I'd have smashed that all F4 key in the dust. I'd be gone, man. I'd be looking at my desktop and crying. The disgusting lobby. As we try to get everyone into this lobby to get things going. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Very exciting to see the debut of both Ghosty and Beans in their very first ever CDL majors for their respective teams. As this crowd is still going, baby. And, and we compare them, but like, just even to look at that head to head, I feel like there's a lot more pressure on Beans, not just because he's going against the home crowd, but you had like for Optic, who needed a clutch up against the Atlanta phase of all teams just to make it the winner's bracket. And Ghosty basically had his speed up. He finished the game, he's like, hey, man, that's the only amount of kills I needed for my team to get this dub. So the support he has around him is absolutely absurd flying power than everyone else on Optic has. Yeah, Beans comes from Colchester in England. They build him tough there. You see how tough he is today going up against the green wall. And his smiles on the faces for now. We get everyone in this lobby. And we'll see how long those smiles can last, if they do, here in this map. And again, man, you never forget your first. This is a thing that'll stay with Beans for the rest of his life. And if it's going to be a lifelong memory, you know for him, you need it to be a good one. Yeah, we will be indeed. Well, Dashi and Hoot there on screen. You know what's an interesting thing now that these two are on team here? It's going to be really difficult to tell when the crowd is cheering for Hook or Bruce. Guys, can we get a Hook? A Hook! That was pretty good. Now, can we get a Bruce? You see, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> it's difficult to tell. But all you need to know if you're an Optic fan and you hear that sound, it means nothing but good things. Those two are no strangers to love from that crowd. Almost ready to party, ladies and gents. We appreciate you sticking this one out. Don't forget, ladies and gents, for you at home, you can vote for your scuff team of the major. We 
do it every single time. We can put together four of the finest voted by you, ladies and gentlemen, at home. And of course, those folks who are in the crowd here as well. Crazy times here in the USA already. And over tomorrow, the Optic Palooza, the festival side of this tournament, opens up. We'll see more shenanigans on the other side of the hall here in the ESA. But for today, it is strictly business. It is strictly that winner's bracket matchup. And I was not joking in the slightest when I said this is an absolute demon lobby. I've watched it drop like five or six times at this point because even the game is like, this is too much talent on one stage at one time. The hidden SR ratings are a little bit too high. Like right. this is so far beyond your average like T250 game. And I know Smiles on the team, they have gotten iced and warmed up and re-iced five <laughs> times at this point. But as long as the vibes are flowing, Smiles across both sides of the stage trying to make some good things happen. Now, it's not just uh, Green Wolf fans in the crowd here. We've got Dashi's family in the crowd as well. <laughs> Dashi's mom, no stranger to a Call of Duty event, no stranger to the Green Wolf, nothing but love and support from the fam there. We'll see if Bruce feel the love here in the crowd, put up some of those historic numbers he typically does in these big tournaments, Charles. I mean, he's going to be one of those players that by the end of the tournament, if Optic have enough success that they walk away with the trophy, Dash is at the top of the list of who might end up being that MVP, especially with how good he has been at Search and Destroy lately. I mean, even for the Matthew Elisilo that we have, one of the crazier things is that who had that game where he went godlike, dropped some ridiculous numbers, and Dash has been keeping up in terms of KD, so that duo on that map have been absolutely relentless. I know we'll get there eventually. <laughs> At this rate, maybe it'll be Friday. Hey, it might be. Yeah, you never know. But hey, we're waiting for this one. We're going to play it through. It'd be cool if we could take a look at the maps and modes, maybe, and just sort of paint a bit of a picture of how this map is going, this entire series is going to go for. Here, the maps and modes presented by that GMC Hummer EV Embassy, first and foremost. Elisilo, that search and destroy fortress, Mercado Embassy. We bookend those embassies here at the start and the end of the series. And look, if I've learned anything, being a talent member of the team for the CDL, is visa issues absolutely cause problems. So maybe the double embassy we have in this series is slowing things down just a little bit. Maybe Dean had to, you know, go through customs, took an extra little bit of time. But that's for the 1-5, and honestly, for a series like this, there is a very strong chance that we do go the distance, because Fortress control between these two teams absolute toss-up maybe a slight edge towards boston but honestly it's going to be a defensive shootout elisilo great for both teams the mercado has been like the primary ban for both of these squads the entire year long so it is dead even across the board i just want to get it going eventually hey eventually. we'll get there we're almost everyone in the lobby as we welcome these nearly 2,000 strong here at esa and the many, many thousands online watching from home are almost ready to party, friends. We want to get into this just as much as you do. Oh, we're nearly there. Could be a couple of minutes away. But until then, yeah, chance to square up on the embassy is going to be a lot of fun. When it comes to that LSE low search and destroy, we have already seen a banger of an SD here today. We'll take a look at the team records here as we now roll closer and closer towards this one. Fist bumps. Oh, wait. Oh, we got baited so hard there. So close. There it is. Let's have a look at the, uh, <laughs> the head up between these two teams. 12 and 9 there for Optic Texas so far in their match records. And the thing that jumps out to me the most is how in Hardpoint and Search and Destroy basically dead even for both of these teams, so no distinct edge at all. Control, though, you lean towards Boston, but there's the Owl Bagger that we're going to. Defensive shootout, it's kind of a 50-50 map, and it's a map that Texas have actually played much more throughout this stage with this roster compared to the entire year. So even that is going to be 50-50. I cannot possibly express how close this is going to be, how unpredictable. I know the desk had a 2-2 split. I don't know if you were to pull the crowd and pull the fans at home, maybe a 90-10 split. <laughs> However, as far as the experts go, it is not an easy one to choose. No, not at all. Two very, very exciting teams to watch. A lot of individual skill in this lobby. Teamwork will be the difference maker. We'll see if it gets to that point. We're almost ready to go, ladies and gents. We keep saying that. We keep saying I'm going to keep saying it until we're in the game, and then I'm going to scream, let's do this, and we're going to get in the matchup. You know the drill, brother. This ain't your first rodeo here in Texas. But that control, that may be the decider. It's the middle of the series. We play that as game number three here in the Call of Duty League. Now Bagra is going to be an absolute banger. We've seen uh, fast games, slow games, all sorts so far, as it tends to evolve throughout the season. And ladies and gentlemen, dare I say it, here we go. Optic Texas, Boston Breach. Map number one, Embassy Hardpoint. Let's get it. A slow 
start for the match, but either one of these teams, they're looking for that snowball effect. Once you get things going, they are not going to stop. And I know the record doesn't look sweet for Optic, but again, recently with this roster, one and one. They've improved on it. They're happy to let it through, but obviously Boston Breach, very dangerous. Just the fact that the team that is worst at rotating going against the team that has been the best at the breaks is going to be one hell of a match. Here we go. Up to support a little bit closer towards that hard point, but no closer towards the second and already. Oh, oh that's no! Nice. An electrifying start to get things going. And Shotzi and Ghost in the feed there. Early time to Optic. And you talk about a, a start that makes things a little bit nervy. You open your match up with a team kill first time on land. Not a fun one. You're trying to bounce back from it. Hey, you dash it, close it up, pick it up, still, and you get the four man wipe. Optic wheeling and dealing already. A difficult situation for the spawns. Well read there. That was Shotzi. Low right hand side of the minimap. He's now playing for the next one. Already Optic off to a fantastic start. Uh, yeah, fantastic. This is one of the best P1s we have seen all year. Literally, the perfect opening break. As good as it gets to set the tone and all ready for Boston. It's an early rotation of P2, but Optic, they got a little bit of time to try to break this one down. This is a, a lovely counter attack from Boston, but who? Finally stopped. Right hand side of the minimap, P2 is now up. This is the side door towards the embassy. Let's see how it goes over by Park. Beans, the man of the moment. Let's see how he fares as his teammates fall around. He's going to be the anchor. Two kills for Beans there on the point. Holding it down. Yeah, needs to bounce back, right? Opens up with a team kill. Starts off 0 and 3, but the little three spree just to keep Optic away from the hill. But that was a 42 second run on P1 for Optic. And on the rotation, Boston not even collecting any of the time. Beans, the last man to take care of. Optic gets the trade. Optic looking to get the time. Oh, finally though, Breach managed to get themselves into the hard point, even if it's only for a few moments. Of course, Boston breached the white arrows on the minimap. Awakening now, trying to contend with a whole Optic roster, can't get it done. Forward now, Optic Drive as the onslaught begins. Dashy, the man in charge. Ghosty now on the contest in the hard point, and it's only 15 seconds. You'd love to have it if you are Breach, but already looking towards the new hard point, Shotzi. He's the man in there. Yeah, the Ghosty special just oh. getting the time, but the lone man did not get that trophy close enough. Dash has got to play for kills, feels the pressure, and drops down. So that is actually Boston gets in the rotation, but Dashy gets the gunny. And on the hill, it's good enough for the trades. The fest goes through, and hey, it's Ghosty, last man standing, looking to make the play. There's number one. Number one, here comes number two. Great work there from Boston Breach. The pitch is on. Nero cut down. Trying to get near the hard point from Spawn. But for now, Boston, they have control. They've got trophies. They've got the high ground. And that is quite literally just the difference that a trophy makes. Makes the rotation harder for Optic. It is now being the protector for Boston Breach, who again, they started out now 42 to nothing. Ooh. They've stabilized the game, stabilized the rotation. Maybe the SMG is getting a little bit hot as well. Pivot now on the three. Oh, Shotzi somehow pulls that one away. Final 15 seconds here of the top side of the AC units will go the way of Boston Breach. Now over towards the inside of the embassy. That's where the next battle takes place. Two flying forward, can't get any more out of it. Nero with three in the feed. Ghosty though, the newcomer to the roster. He's in, oh, and he trades out. That's good enough for now. I'll take the scores. Yeah, Luke around this play. Yeah, Luke all the way around back, and now he's got Dashy in the mix as well. So that's a three piece from Nero that he gets, and his team cannot even go to the hill to collect the time. Hoop now wheeling, dealing, bouncing back and forth between the hallways, and easy read Whoa. on both of them. But again, that trophy battle, Optic is not had it near the hill. Oh, Optic though, they're running out of numbers here on point. Boston looked at the clean break they're in. Shotzi though, the final dagger, still stays alive. Nero from behind the desk says, no, thank you, not coming in. We'll take that. We're looking at a lead change here for Boston. In comes Hoop. Yeah, funny how it goes, right? The rotation the kills have been on point from Optic, but the trophies have cost them a little bit. Awakening's getting his out towards new, but but even for the final 20 seconds, maybe Bid wants to go and hit that old time, but he gets caught. So Optic stabilizing the old time, build themselves a sizable lead, and hey, now you got Dashy working on the road. The hard fight there from Boston now over to Awakening 11 and 7 from him overall. Demon Joe, a terrifying opponent to come up against here in MW2. Aprons on, he's now doing the dirty work in the kitchen. New hard point pops. Yeah, I close the door as well, as incredibly polite as you can get. All the trophies in the world, and Optic, very distant from the hill. Shotzi the front man, but he's gonna get spotted. He has zero support on this break for the moment. You have Boston picking apart every member of Optic along the cross. The teamwork, not quite there yet. Here comes the next hit. Ghost is going to make his way through the backside of that kitchen. Now, Awakening and Vivid. Oh, through mid map wins a big one. Beans there in the feed as well. Beans has not slowed down too much. Eight and eight overall. This is a three spree from him. Awakening now. Hold in the kitchen. Ghosty checking corners, waiting for the opportunity. Shotzi backing him up. Here comes a hit. It's two from Shotzi. Three. Oh, it's all four down. 
And it took them like 30 seconds to set up the teamwork, but as soon as they got there, they made it happen on the break. So Ghosty and Chassi, new clean with it, able to get that scrap time once again, but a very tight game for the moment. Still could go either way. Ghosty, hold it. Does, keeps the time ticking. It's only five seconds, but it may come into effect later on. He'll take that force free. 16 and 12 overall for Anthony Cuevas Castro. And I think we're putting so much weight on the right side of the map. You get Ghosty posted up in the top windows. To keep the players out of the hill, but weird timing. And the two men in the feed right there for Boston. But that's why maybe Hoop will fill in the spot. Pick up the tack and just keep Boston out of that time. We can. Good ease. Oh, good gunny. Stays alive. Mira drops. 120 to 95. No one really able to get on the P1 just yet. We go back to the center of the map. Back to that crazy alleyway. And now you also have to read the spawns as well. Optic know they lost the right side, but now they're actually trying to collect that time. Who trying to play the safety net? Stay in the back by the stairwell, and that means his team can get inside the point. It looks like Optic, all four members up on the right side, are looking for that P2 rotation. And Hoop has been alive for such a long time, but it's chopped down in the end. A little back and forth battle. Optic still only that ever so slight lead. Yeah, it's a slight lead. They've not got maps dropping out. Can Dashi change that? No. Nero holds it down. Spawns for Boston now in that lower right hand side of the map, set up for success. If they can make this work, they can fall the lead back. Who trying to stay alive, roaming the halls of the embassy once again. Here come his teammates, here comes the hot. And, and look, whether it's Hook or Shotzi, they have just run this stairwell just to keep these players out of time. So things might be living by the back trunk, but that doesn't mean Breach have been able to collect any of this P2 time. Finally, Nero gets inside, and they get the three-man wipe in their feed. But Boston, Ooh. for the first time on this hill in a long time, are getting a decent chunk. Beans back on his truck, loves it here. Nero now through the front, now all those arrows go spin. Hoot somehow takes two out of the play. And what's the hard point we now go? Beans versus Shotzi. Shotzi wins it, hard point optic. And they're just so annoying, the SMGs for this optic Texas squad. Uh -oh. Just to be annoying uh -oh. on this hill, trying to keep him at bay and set your team up on rotation. But Nero, right now, Betty Pop, he is flying. Whoa! Wow. Yeah, well, that's what Nero does best. He is soaring right now. Will he check this corner? Oh, the stun might get it done. No, Dashi dives in, saves the play. Can Vivid get this one now? Over the next hard point! Nearly. As Dashi will drop, the time now will tick in the moment's favor. There for his boys on Boston. Oh, Nero keeping the play going. 21, now 22 and 20. He's cooking. That's still a foot race, though, for the actual hill time. I think he got Shotzi, maybe able to make an errant play. And if you have no trophies out, it's going to be a problem. The nades have been costing Shotzi somehow to collect that, even with his back turn. But this has been an AC hill that took 20 seconds for Boston to actually get inside of. We'll see how much they can try to run it off. Vivid feeling brave, fights his way forward. Optic down low. Dashi finds the entry on a two. Over to Beans now. Next man on the hard point, watching the ladder. No problem. Into the hard point, we're now going to fly. Two ARs. Posted up. An unfortunate team kill. You'll take it, though. That's an ample amount of time. Oh, no! Beans brought down, no more time for anyone. And talk about a 1v1 gunfight that just sets your team up for success. Nier might want to fly, but this is a lot of optic numbers to deal with and just gets cut down. So Ghosty wins one, sets his team up for the oh, final oh, oh. 20 seconds to scrap in another lead change in this game. Optic gets taken. It. Very different looks now on the next time we roll into Embassy. This time it's all Boston Breach. They've got full control for now. Optic, they're going to slither their way through the top side of the embassy. If they can get involved in this fight, it better be sooner rather than later. Yes, that lead change. Boston's starting to walk away with it. And you see, as soon as Shotzi gets to the back, he actually spawns those Boston players out. But Boston, oh my. off spawn, it just gone and killed everyone. Four man white. Boston takes the lead. And after 40 seconds left, not fun spawns for Optic. Maybe only up for Ghosty to try to make the play. Awakening, staying alive. Ooh, Ghosty does make the play. Holds onto the point for a moment. Vivid tagged up, taken care of. Shotzi flying through the embassy halls now. We're looking at a lead change potentially. It's a 10 point game for now. This hard point is going to change it. And those are back to back hills, by the way, where Ghosty absolutely makes the play. I think off a gifted spawn that he was able to collect, but he turns that into a two piece. He won the big gunfight on that last AC hill. Right now, the rookie living up to the hype on the main stage. Soaking the time. Finding what you can. Rotation's done. Boston Breach once again the first into the kitchen. It was a late break from Optic the last time we were here. Will they be able to get the job done early? So far, no. Beans and Vivid awakening in the feed. And look, it was the teamwork for Optic that got him through this hill last time. They are getting picked apart along the way. Every oh. solo child die, solo child die. In the amount of distance and space Boston just created on this map, I mean, if you're Nero sitting inside the hill, you're comfortable. Optic can't get anywhere near you. Nero's feet have gone numb. He sat for so long. Ghosty slips on through laundry. Any help here? I don't think so. He might be able to get something done alone. Wow, somehow steals a kill. Great work. 
I want the boss to reach right back at it into the feed. Here comes Hoop. No more. Beans running it in the kitchen. Nutritious and delicious as Dashi. Now on one HP, trying to get himself forward, but Beans is on a five and busted her over 200. Yeah, both these rookies trying to step up. Oh! Even Nero gives an extra one. The kitchen hill, Boston have absolutely run the show, trying to put them away. All right, it's a late one, but let's see if we can find the comeback here with an Optic Texas. Listen in. Peon, peon, peon. I just nice. have to do it. I'll just go. Low. I'm with you, Dan. I have to go. I'm going to pitch right now. You need to check the top. Charge your PD. Charge your PD. Charge your PD. I have your front. I have all your front. He's ready. 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 I'm my front line. I'm my front back. I'm front back. He's low long, low long. Bathroom, dead. He's yeah. low long. He's fucking gas at, gas at low long. I hit him. I'll tell him. Get this up, get this up, get this up. 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 Get He's all the way back, sneaking it then. One more piece, wait, 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 wait. Pick it up your mouth. Is he got your mouth? No, 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 one more time, one more time. Watch out, watch out. He signed you, watch out. Sign, sign, sign. It's composed comms. The final few moments here is Boston Breach search their way forward towards the win. You've got to get one more player out. It's Vivid. He somehow guns too. Vivid stays alive. Can they get him out in time? No, they cannot. Boston Breach, take map number one. And getting on his feet and letting him know beans. Popping off on the last kitchen hill, going on the five free in those rotations to P2. He was in the back of every single time. Just being annoying, just keeping his team in the mix. And Boston, what a way to open your major, silencing the home crowd. And Nero as well. We'll take a look at the stats in a moment, but wow, what a performance for nearly everyone in that game. That was an absolute blinder though. 36 and 32 out of Nero there, nearing 4,000 damage. It was just, you call it a demon lobby from the get-go. No shortage of individual skill, and we saw it all there. It's ridiculous base, man, because even Vivid had 60-plus engagement. So the SMDs on Boston, they just fire off like missiles. And the ARs, it's the easy job. You just want them to post up, stay alive, lock those spawns. And even the amount of distance in space that Boston on that kitchen hill were able to create, there was one good push coming out of Shotzi and Ghosty. Outside of that, Boston was straight up bullying Optic Texas. And had a few of those key hills where Optic, just not a lot of love, not a lot of life. And even on AC, when Optic had those opportunities for the moment, the trophy, just not in the right position. It's those little fundamental, fundamental mistakes that have costed Optic and that costed them right there as well. Let's have a look at the highlights now from map number one. A fun one indeed. Embassy, always a throwdown. It's a small map, a lot of close range engagements. Those submachine gun plays, they were ripping. There's that little Vaznev screaming across Embassy to start things off. And close match still, Boston Breach, they'll be happy to take that map number one. And I think chance again for the nerves, for the mindset you're in now if you're Boston. You've taken map one, you did it in a great way, you got to be feeling good. I mean, talk about like the confidence thing, especially for like the way that match started off for Beans. He opened it up with a team kill with the frag grenade, and you feel like things are getting bad. But again, start piecing up on the kitchen hill. He goes on a 5-3 at some point, and again, the crowd's gonna be against you. You feel that pressure as soon as you get it off your back. Oh, now you got that freedom to play with. Well, Green Wolf's still gonna be loud as hell as we get into the search and destroy. Boston Breach, what a great finish. Vivid, huge plays towards the end there. Not letting anyone get through, holds the line admirably. 250, 212, map number one there on Embassy. And that is fantastic composure as well. It kind of sounded to me like Optic a little bit stressed in the comms. Very concerned about players like Awakening, who were the missing guy they were looking for. Meanwhile, you're just calling in the streak. But either way, 36 kills out of Nero. Ridiculous pace out of Vivid as well. Those two guys are just the setup men for Boston. And obviously, 250, 212, not incredibly comfortable, but eventually, they just got the job done. Here we go. Map number two almost on its way. Start of that series, an absolute banger. El Asilo, search and destroy now upon us.
we will ask Proud again if there is a moment where your favorite team is maybe diffusing, please keep it to yourselves and celebrate once the uh, play is finished. You know what I'm talking about. We don't have to get Hex out here and tell you off because he'll do it. I've seen him do it. He's a big man. You will listen to him. But ready to rock into the search and destroy charts. Uh, high level thoughts, mate. Where are we going here? Uh, again, Hook and Dashi are the demons. Walkie does not work for Optic Texas on this map. Hook has had some of the best performances of the year on El Asilo. So when he gets the hot hand, he torches teams. That's pretty much up for guys like Nero to try to contain. And Dashi on the flip side, on both attacking rounds and defense, completely lights out. Dashi can snipe. He's bringing it out more for the squad. He's very choosy about when he gets to break it out. But again, who has the 2.2 when his numbers are absolutely absurd because of the one performance he had that bumps him up? And Dashi's right there with him, just game over game. Dashi absolutely locks this map down. That's a scary prospect. Those two top players here in the league thus far. 2.2 from Hook. We've seen some insane games from him. Slightly inflated stats from, I think, a single matchup, but again, a wonderful indicator of how this is going to go. And just think about how the map plays as well, right? It's the massive SMG stack on the A site. You double stack it on defense. It's going to be, I mean, the four that we have in this lobby, again, just ridiculous amount of potential in the pop-off play that they can bring into those close quarters moments. But we're looking for the playmakers on this map, because we know just like map one, it's going to be a back and forth battle. 38% first blood rate for Boston Breach. Not a great number. 52 way better there for Optic Texas. So it's first blood, the first player to draw blood, get a kill here on LSU. And those retakes are still incredibly important for Optic Texas. That's once the bomb's gone down. You managed to retake that site, get the defuse, and secure the round win. Very, very important stat lines to be keeping an eye on us. Here we go. First round, search and destroy. And obviously, first round, no trophies, no dead silence, opportunity to make a play with your tax and nation. Zero of the guy making the play straight in for oh. that first blood. Straight in, finds one, nearly gets second zero as well. Unreal, Ghosty though takes control of the bomb site. An awkward stun, no that's trophies. a good name though, that's going in. Ghost is gonna get tagged up by that one, enough to maybe allow somebody from Boston Breach to push us to 3v1. It's been a crazy round opener, Ghosty. Don't let the name fool you, he's making loads of noise. Uh, he got spotted as well on the cross, Awakening Salt the entire time. They know exactly where they have him trapped, and that is that round one potential you have to make a play. Nero delivers in that round, and Ghosty may be waiting for the dead silence to pop up, but keep in mind, everybody from Boston getting theirs as well. It's nearly there, yeah. Ghosty's about to get a whole lot spookier once that dead silence becomes available. Check them corners, son. 30 seconds on the round. Vivid spot him out. Gun fights up. Big tags. 25 to go. And this is just a lot of time being burned. And maybe he gets the kill on Vivid, but can't quite finish it. And again, bomb down. 20 seconds left. You're just going to have to go for that last ditch effort to make a play. And it looks like they're actually giving up the bomb plan, but the triangle getting uh, set up. You are going to uh, snap and gun down. Boston Breach. First round win. First blood, Nero puts his life on the line, somehow walks away with two in that opening foray. Like, just a hey, mad man. Hey, that is no dead silence. That is no help as well no. from his teammates. He just ran straight in and took it from him. I mean, that is an electric uh, sort of play to make and the amount of confidence you have to have to even attempt something like that. But Nero gets it done. And again, Boston Breach, their only struggle point on this map has been the first blood category. I think Nero might have done a little bit of homework. You're in for a treat, COD fans. Optic on defense, first and foremost, we'll be checking out Dashi with that snipe in a moment. I wonder if anyone here on Boston Breach here on the attacking round. Oh, so close. All right, Bruce. Good reposition. Whoa, wait a minute. That's some lovely timing of observers. Good work. Shotzi somehow catches two. And a bit of Dashi now. SPX in hand. We'll be able to catch a player or two out and about. Awakening might be the man of the moment. Let's see if he gets it. I think Shotzi might have said, hey, anything you can do, I can do just a little bit better. He gets the two-piece and oh, gets no out way. with his life. No way. Now just gets to jump on it. Nero finds it. What did you do? did you Open your eyes. Oh, no. He didn't see it. He catches that one, though, for the ace. Whoa. He knew. Such a tease. He knew what he was doing. He let that one slide. Why well, get one freebie when instead you get the highlight reel? Oh, Shotzi. Wonderful bounce back there from Optic Texas. And that's been the name of the game. The snipers yet to connect. It has been the SMGs on defense.
Pushing the pace and getting those first bloods. See if there's going to be a mix of the strats for either team. Set up looking a little bit standard for Optic, or maybe leaning towards this B site. No dead silence for Shotzi, but a lot of players for Optic looking down this outer lane. Ooh, goes to MCPR. Saw a crack of the door, saw a vivid move there. This might give Shotzi enough clearance to make his way forward. That stun bangs the door wide open again. So Beans may get the first blood onto Hook. And it's also bombed down. It's Hook is the guy that dropped it. Dash though know, evens up the odds, but it trades back and forth because Nero's in position. The bomb is down in such a difficult spot. Shotzi gonna have to retrieve at some point. And keep in mind, Gofi is the snipe, but Shotzi has the five and also has to clutch an effective 1v3. Beans and Awakening. They're the next two players over here. Bomb recovered now, 40 seconds. So Shotzi to make his moves and he's making them very loudly. This bomb plant's gonna guarantee him dead silence. And they're split for the moment as well. You feed an extra kill to Shotzi, that's gonna be the cruise. And if you feed him the kill a little bit too quickly, well, he's already got the Denny Pop. He's looking to make the oh, play. No! The timing did not go his way. The distance on point, the cruise missile shut down, and Boston Breach got the bounce back round. That is an outstanding turn of events right there for Boston Breach. You managed to avoid the cruise missile, so you avoid the comeback. Take the lead up by one here. The chance, it's a, mo it's a matter of moments. It's a little bit of bad timing. It's a nice setup from Boston. It's a very safe setup, a complete opposite side of the map. And I feel like the first blood that Beans get just sort of rips the heart away of the strategy because Optic, the rest of the pressure was on the other side of the map. So you just have to go into retrieval mode to get the bomb. But we saw Dashi pull out the snipe. Whiff, put it away. Ghosty pulled it out. No success there either. So for the moment, Boston handling the snipe battle very well. I was in Shotzi's stream sort of late Wednesday night. And let me tell you, I'm pretty sure he can run it too. Look at the hats on those boys. Where do we get those? Can we get those hats? Everything is bigger in Texas. Everything's really big in Texas. Crazy. Here we go. Round up. We're going to see Boston Breach on attack. Nero, bomb in hand. And nothing too hyper aggressive this time. Optic with a little bit of pressure down low. And actually, you see who snapping into position. Then he got back down, at least he gets one before he gets traded, and look at that, the collapse on this side of the map. Awakening oh. gets banged out, we got a 2v2. Just over a minute to play, Nero, well, he knows Dash is here. It's a standoff. Uh, it's a noisy one, Nero might have caught it. Wait a minute, Ugh. he shoots the shot a little earlier. Hey man, shoot the shoot. And now plant is plant. I think just the spot that Beans is in, he can sort of orchestrate for Nero. Nero knows that everybody else is going to have to be inside with him, as the late flank play from Beans could potentially be in effect. We'll find out if they're in here with Nero, or if Nero's in here with them. Beans, you sneaky devil. Perfect. Bakes Ghosty. Final 30 seconds, Dash is going to pop Deddy. Let's we'll see if his Vaznev can get put to work. Attack in hand now. Moving fast, moving clean, gets one. Can he get away? Yes. 20 seconds to go. One HP in a dream, but you got less than that. You got to hop this bomb quick. He's trying to make the moves. A lot of noise being made. Wait, check. And he gets the kill. Time. Fly. Get to the fuse. He does. And that is a very important clutch up there from Dash. And Beans just got played as well. Less than 20 on the clock when Dash jumps down and eviscerates Nero with the perfect read. But Beans so concerned about the hop, he wastes no time. He flies around, gets heard the entire way. And Dash drops him. That is a tough round for Beans and a beautiful one for Optic. And Beans does everything right up to the final moment. Hoop now with the bomb for Optic Texas. The man who we've uh, given a lot of praise to for the KD yet to get on the ball. We'll see if this is the round. A lot of nades coming through, though. So Optic going to be slowed down. And uh, a bit, but maybe there's the freebie. That she might have been tagged up, but it wasn't that weak and vivid. The early fall in uh, Shotzi. Wait the follow up. He got a 2v4. Damn. Man. Pumps the brakes immediately. Comes to a grinding halt. Beans bangs the door, makes a lot of noise. You know these players are bombed down now for Optic. Two man advantage. Can Beans make it? That bit more even, tries to get the fight, oh! Hip fire lands, less than 30, 3v1. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit too soft though, not a lot of time and not a similar situation. And who just jumps on it? Not a care in the world. Might have been 0 and 4, but who delivered for two in that round? The round out, who? Power of the bomb plant. 
force the boys to make a move. You see this time and time again here on LSC, like Bon Pant, win your rounds. Six and four out of Shotzi, he has been electric here in the search. On the other side of the board though, B6 and three. The newcomer not too affected by this crowd just yet. Four spree though for Dashi. See if he can make that a five in a moment. Oh, and this is, by the way, no one actually with the bomb there. A lot of pressure oh, on the outside. Dang. Matt Dashi spots it all. But Nero's the guy with the bomb, so Boston playing split. They're showing a B hit, but the guy with the bomb drops it. You got a 2v2, but the bomb is down towards the middle of the map. Boston, you're playing around a TDM right now. Oh, and they've got to find that way towards the inside. Get that bomb. Hook moves silently across the map. You might be able to catch our beans. He does. 2v1. Vivid now. The lone man. Oh my good god. If he made this a 1v1 with 50 seconds on the clock. That'd have been something. It might still be the case. Ghosty got spotted. Now the dive. And if Dashi clutched the 1v2, that is a difference make around. This is Vivid's opportunity to strike back. He's going for it. Dead silence. A fastidious approach now in El Asilo. He can hear everything. The thundering footsteps of all these players. Oh, he's checked the corner. He's made a bit of noise. He made a little bit too much. Off to get the read. It's now 4 to 2 here in the search. And that was Reeves trying to mix things up with a cheeky little strap with the bomb, but it did not make a single bit of difference. Optic had picked them apart, and from 0-4, now on a five spree. Who looking for a cruise of his own. A bounce back for Hook. Unbelievable five spree right now. Deep breaths. Roll now into the next round. First to six. Here in Search and Destroy. Shotzi. Can he find another first blood? Got spotted on the cross. What a position from Nero to see this one coming. Vivid now making the flank as well. Oh dear god, this is great. A shoulder thrown from Hook. The tiniest slither. He manages to find the kill. Nero now looking to get the trade. Awakening though does manage to find Shotzi 3v3. It's Nero! Oh my god! Cruz, what a 1v1 that was. That was the wrong man to chow in that moment. Who got it tear? Who got it tear? But finally, get shut down for the 2v2. Bomb down. You got to go and collect the beast in the meantime. Opportunity to clutch. Him versus Dashi again oh, for the here, 1v1. Here we go. There's plenty of time, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone settle down. Everybody simmer down. Nothing's going to happen for a moment. Dashi versus Beans. 30 seconds. Whoa. And that's information for Beans, by the way. That's stump coming through. Beans has to have an idea of Beans. He knows oh. that he can hear it. Redemption for the rookie. Gets the win against Dashi in that moment and keeps Boston alive. Not a bad one for his 10th kill. Fantastic composure there from the young man. And he is the guy that we saw the stats before the series started, the 1.3 in s &D. He has been the Reaper in this game mode, trying to deliver for this squad, but still down a round. Knew it was going to be back and forth. Reach, still a long way to go. Score is 4-3. Optic with the lead. One more for Boston Breach to find the equalizer. Is this the round? Standard looks from both teams. They smash their way to the inside of Elisilo, but Dashi has had enough of these shenanigans. Beams, though, answers right back in the immediate trade. Shotzi, he's going all the way around the outside. No dead silence yet. He has to slow this slightly, but you've got a lot of map position now. And you have Breach playing fairly distant towards your spawn as well, so Awakening is watching the push. The Shotzi waiting for the timing of when he wants to strike, but there's no pressure on Shotzi in this moment. He's on defense. He can wait for the play to fall into his lap. But look at the awareness from Breach on the minimap. They're trying to hunt oh. him down, but they get caught while doing it. Wait a minute, Shots. He's not been taken care of yet. You must deal with him. Beans once again. The man to do it. 2v2 now. Breach are fighting tooth and nail. Can Beans get his third? Here on the round. He oh, does. You challenge. Is Beans going for the ace? He's got himself a cruise as well. And those doors just got opened by Dashi as well. He's just going for the reposition. Not an easy gunfight no win. And it's the double chow from both of them. Beans has been a god. 10 non traded on the game. 13 kills from this young man. And I believe he got himself the cruise that round as well. The bounce back in these two rounds. The equalizer found. Boston Breach have tied it up 4-4 four four here on El Asilo. Now, Charles, El Asilo means what? In the silent. In, uh, in Spanish, that means this place is crazy and we are not wrong.
And I thought beans were supposed to be good for your heart, but everyone in this venue, they are pounding and shaving years off of their lives. Absolute tear as of recent tied up game. And it'd be Optic on the attack. It'd be Vivid looking to strike for a first blood, though. How good is your shot if anyone peeks a little too far? He was the most uh, statistically accurate player in the league for many years. Who go? His early cruise was some coming to play now. And force Boston inside. And what can you get off this, right? You actually have it. Shotzi with the bomb. The man trying to make the move. So Shotzi's right now making the play. Getting up in the mix for Beans. He's got the counter. Right back at it. There it is. Lands it on the dashi. No safe haven found for Bruce up there. And now to Shotzi. Melee! Oh my god! It was a fist fight and Beans comes out on top. No, you cannot stop this, man. The haymakers who tagged up one shot, forced outside. And for a 2v4, you just burned your crew's optic. Right now, they're worried about the collapse. It's not over yet, though. It's a 2v4 and the nuke is now roaming. He's making a decent amount of noise. Checks this corner. Maybe Beans once again. Beans again! No, Beans is about to break the kill record for his first match on the main stage. It's been a godlike performance, and honestly, for the 1v4, feed this one to Beans. Ghost, he's not going to feed nobody. He's going to try to play this one out. 20 seconds. It's Boston Breach, though, with an overwhelming advantage in the round. And it's Demon Joe. And now it is map point Boston Breach. Miles, it is a nine spree from Beans. He has 16 kills in this game. And that is three rounds in a row from Boston. Perfect counter call, holding in that cruise. Dashi gets caught in the most wide open spot imaginable. And right now, Boston looking to just punish them on map number two. But it's not over yet. You gotta shut him down. Beans has 16 kills. 16 kills. This is unbelievable. And this is to take the lead by two here in the series over Optic. Can Optic Texas find the bounce back? Now into the hard port. So the search and stroke. We go once more, ladies and gents. I'm losing my mind. Can Beans get 10 here on Alice Well, they're taking their time, allowing the, the squad to play for picks. It's awakening, looking out towards field as well. And Shotzi is a little bit aggressive on the field side of the map, but doesn't look like Boston had the intel just yet. Ghosty potentially thinking about a flanks, but this has been a 4v4 almost stalemate on the map. No one making that first move. And while we're on the topic, Beans needs 18 to break the kill record. Tags from Vivid. Got himself a nice perch there on the sides of the sofa. The clock is ticking fast. And keep in mind, for Boston, they haven't actually cleared out the base site yet. They've used a lot of nades and tacks to try to make some moves on the map so far, but running out of time, not a lot of options. Goatsy, though, he's getting hunted down. Oh, he gets hunted. Busted, if you will. Hoop, though, flies right into it. One. Nice work there. Dash, he gets another 3v2. Numbers to optic. And you just don't have time. 22 seconds, Boston. You're going to have to fly. Dead silence just ran Whoa! out, and he can't get the kill. Hoop shuts him down, awakening for the 1v3. This has it written down. This is looking like a round 11. Here it is, round 11, awakening. Oh boy. Here we go. One final dance on El Asilo here in the series. And take a deep breath. This could be a round that defines your entire tournament to be an absolute difference maker for either of these squads. Desperate for it. And it'd be Boston on the attack again. They waited till there was like 30 seconds on the clock before they had an attempt at a strat call. Ice has been this team's problem in the past. Looking to see what they do in this final round. Since Beans joined the roster, they have managed to turn those tides. Their round 11 record's far better thus far here in the stretch towards this very major hoop. Stun check connects. That A side is then left completely open by Optic on defense. And this time, no time wasted. Making the move to get in the mix. Who fell? Thinking about shutting it down and Chassi flying on the flank. This is the plan. You let them take that bomb site. Here comes Hoop trying to find whatever he can on the close side of it. 40 seconds, that bomb goes boom, and Boston Breach wins the map. Here we go. Chassi still on the outside plate. Hoop now teetering the edge. 1v1 x zero. Ciao. Hook falls. Chassi on the flank, he gets in. Dead silence is complete. Less than 30 seconds to go. Ghosty now on the outside with him. Stacked up through the site. No, Nero gets another one. Ghosty, though, manages to level the playing field as best he can. It is all down to Dashi after a team kill. And wait a minute, Beans is there! Beans gets it! Breach, unfazed on Elisilo as the round 11 goes their way. 
and ties the kill record for his first match on main stage. 17 bomb coming out of these. Unbelievable performance. The last man left standing there in the game. And a shocking 2-0 lead here in the series for Boston. And the unreal bounce back that Beans just had. He opens up his series, team killing with the frag on Embassy, goes on a tear in Boston, gets a win. He lets Dashi clutch the 1v2 against him, instantaneous bounce back, and helps carry his team to the win, but obviously credit the whole way down. Two first bloods for Vivid, two for Nero as well, and obviously Nero, he got the first blood in the round 11, there to shut the players down. That is a massive game two out of Boston Breach. A sensational search and destroy and LSC low comes to a close. An exciting round 11. Not so much for the Optic fans, but very much so for you neutral green fans here in the Call of Duty world as Boston Breach now. Control chance has been their mode. We'll get to that in a moment, but before then, this is the series, ladies and gents. And we're going to a map on Al Bagger that even TST are getting nervous on when they look at this one, right? It has been a defensive gauntlet, a defensive shootout on this map. And if you're looking at those teams that have a little bit better on the success of the objective, even for the defense for the round five, Boston do have that edge. See who has the defense in the bag. We come back after this break, ladies and gentlemen. A shocking result. If it's a 3-0, Boston Breach walk away with it. Or is this the beginnings of the comeback for Optic Texas? We'll find out after the break.
The Call of Duty League is presented by the GMC Hummer EV Pickup, the world's first all-electric super truck. Upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. 11 to see Boston Breach now 2-0 up over Optic Texas, our major three hosts here in our winner's bracket round one showdown. Now, the question remains, chance will we see the comeback begin here from Optic Texas on this upcoming control game? It's going to be a banger regardless of what happens, but we'll find out. Momentum firmly in Boston's hands. Right, firmly in their hands, but they do not want to let it slip away again. A defensive shootout for Al Bagger control, and if you let Optic get back in the mix, we know how this team gets when the ball gets rolling, when the comms get hot, hot when they find their flow state. Optic can be on something fierce, so if I'm Boston, get this done as quick as possible. And for the rates of how these two teams have been any offensive round, it's a comical statement to make, but if you get more than two ticks on either zone combined, you're considering that a success on the attack. Just two, ladies and gents, just two. You don't have to be greedy, go for the three. Hey, good for you. Get one, not good enough. Two is what you are looking for. A defensive heavy game of control on its way, boys and girls. About hydrate now, you're gonna need all that spit and you're about to do it on this map. Shotzi, we saw that wild ace early on there in the search and destroy. He certainly put on for the fans at home. And it is gonna be the SMGs, whether it be Shotzi or Hook on one side, or Nero and Vivid who are piecing them up on Embassy for map one. That is the goal on offense. Get one of those players into art, let them run a muck, fly, have the dead silence plays, and go absolutely berserk. That's the type of play that's gonna set your team up for success. That's what these teams are gonna need. And obviously we talked about control. It has been a struggle point for Optic all year long. 50-50 on this map, but for Boston throughout this stage, oh, it's been pretty clean. Four in one record. Quite a few of those on Al Bagger as well in that round percentage at 72%. Oh, they're singing something sweet. Oh, they're singing something here in the run up towards this major. Four and one overall there for Boston Breach. We'll see how it goes for up to two and three for them. Again, another team change there. Not to be taking those stats too heavily, because again, a little bit has changed in the chance, of course. Ghosty coming in. How are the record with Ghosty? Is it one and one, something like that in control? Well, one and one, yes, but again, it's just the offensive versus defensive rounds on the map for this. Uh, Texas is 11th in the game when it oh. comes to actually playing the objective on this map. And again, you got to play the objective to set yourself up for the round five. Both of these teams are going to be slanted towards defense, but I don't know how many times we've set up this map all year long for a team to come out round one and punch the other one in the mouth Ooh. with a quick offensive win. But again, statistically, obviously, it's going to be an edge to Boston. Edge to Boston, momentum to Boston, proud to Optic. As I'm sure you can hear at home. Fortress Control has not been too sweet for many teams, but this is an important one nonetheless. Can Optic get the comeback right here, right now in the series? Let's find out. We start off with Beans. Oh, no, it's David. Uh, there's your player, though. You at least get one guy out into art. So you got Hoop, the opportunity to draw this attention back and make the play or get shut down immediately. The AR is stabilized. Pick up every single kill in Boston already. They got the spawn trap set up. Beans hasn't missed a beat. He's already getting things going here on Al Pagra. That's a lot of bees. Can Vivid, though, hold this position? Nero with a corner as well. All the corners are currently occupied. Beans once again from top single. Finding kills. Vivid now. Bottom side of map stats is up next. Oh, and Nero. Oh, my God. We're out and about the traitor there. But Al Bagra, we know how heavy defense can be. Uh, that door was shaking maybe as much as Optic is right now because they just get brutalized off the opening break. Trying to flood out through Arch. You try to make it happen, Dang. but you see the kind of head glitch Beans is allowed to get on top of. He's on a force free. Nero's going crazy as well. I think have gotten two kills in this round and now honestly they got to be scared of feeding streaks. That's a 5-3 right there for Beans and a 5-3 right there for Nero. Oh well, dashy good news. He takes care of it. Hoop though also takes care of another but Nero still likes to kick in. Number oh six. no he pushed the spawn for the final one. That's streaks. Now as Nero heating things up. One of the more dangerous individual players we have in the league and this has been a very very strong round indeed.
Boston to take the lead. Uh, just opening up with an absolute whimper. Optic had zero success in the round. They got one player past the 50-yard line. And not only did they only get, what, four kills the entire round, they also fed a cruise missile to Nero in the meantime. As good as it gets for Boston Breach, haven't missed a single beat. Uh, official numbers after that first round. Texas managed to secure what? Two, four, six, seven, eight. All right. What did it say we got? Six, sorry. Six kills. There you go. Quick match. Not very good. Poop though down low. Can he hold the line defensively? This is what you want to see. If Boston Breach can find an opening, they are going to dive on in. They've got themselves closer and closer to B, and they're already capturing A. They got pressure on both points, right? So Optic actually is going to have to fight the, uh, the two front four. Nero gets dealt with the B, but so much pressure on the A zone. One tick already going through, and it looks like Optic has stabilized. Got quite a few kills, but Awakening so close to that second tick. So close. Dashy now with the contest. There's the help from Hoop. Gets himself two more. Dashy now on the spree as well, choosing the other foot. However, one segment down, Chance. That's what we're looking for as a successful round here in Albarga. One more to truly be considered a success. Oh, Shati almost with the out walk off off Beans right there in the moment. That's also a three down for Boston. Hook with the nade kill. Gonna try to soften things up just a little bit, but Vivid already out in the bound. The top side of the map has now been opened up for Breach to start working through. The yeah, Breach are so strong at doing this already. 45 seconds to go. Uh oh, now she caught out and Vivid's still alive. Backside of the B, the slow and steady capture, that pauses the clock. Vivid finding kills again. Hoop now in a lot of trouble. He's been pushed back, pinned down. Two players on B. We're looking at another segment. It's a successful round, ladies and gentlemen. Now, can it become something great? Vivid looking to find a few more kills. Kill number five had. Backs on out. Smooth. Moves, moves, dashy kill number six, and Vivid on an absolute tear. It's over. How oh, they do? He just played him like a fiddle, found the opening, and Breach has found that B zone already a tick secured over towards A, but so much better on offense is Boston. Already set themselves up long term. And Vivid, he wants more. Awakening able to find two. Oh on the cruise, it might just hit a trophy, but look at his behind enemy lines. Beans is going to be messing with these spawns for Optic this entire time. Can't mess him anymore, he's dead. Over to Vivid. Taking care of as well. Dashy cleans house. Now, final two seconds remaining on A. This is a strong spot to be in if you are Boston. Optic, though, can still hold on to this one and get the round win. This is sort of that Kelly. Oh, yeah. Nero doing 360s to pray for a break, but Chassis is going to shut it down. Optic finally able to set up that spawn trap. And now in this round, there's 58 seconds to go. Box ticket. Shot C. Good work. Empire finds him with the badge. This going to be five in a row now. Can he get streaks of his own? Beans managed to find one towards the gate side, but this is where Shots is going to be holding under my arch. Always going to be home for a moment. It's all towards the map side. That's where Hook is. Oh no, Nero. He manages to punch through, dash into the trades. Solid setup remains for Optic for now. This really is the setup though from Optic. He's got a stranglehold on the map, and Shotzi, he's going in for the kill. There's the cruise missile for the bounce back that Optic were looking for. Now just eight, nine versus four. Breach out alive, outdone in this oh. round. But Chassi might be a nice little a spree, but or eight spree. But we already know how the round went. That was four ticks compared to zero. Boston have a massive edge in this game. Four ticks to zero. That is going to come into effect later on. Tie things up here in control. This is it for Optic. I mean, you're going to have to win in offensive round or at least push the pace so much that you get at minimum four ticks in this one. So the pressure is on to try to make the play. They have the cruise missile in the back pocket to try to pull out some magic. Again, Optic 11 overall on the objective portion of Albagra control. They need something special here. Taylor to some machine guns right now. Nero 12 and 9. And Shotzi at 13 and 9. Both of them putting up wonderful numbers for their team. And look at this defense out of Boston. Slow hit towards B. They're expecting Optic to be there, but they are nowhere to be found. It's over to A. They've already flown. Trade's done. Can Shotzi catch out a couple more? Ghost is there. Wait a minute. Optic, they're on the point. Wait a minute. A little bit of calamity there with a the teammate from Dashi. But either way, you've still got players on point. That's the segment. And you got a two-man stack. He's in the progress fairly quickly. But Dashi's going to get caught on the point. And Vivid going to shut it down. He had the moment of opportunity. But here's moment number two. At least pressure out towards B. The flank's coming in fast, though. Who? You got to read it. Hit it. Check the corner. And Optic, so thirsty for success. It looks like that search just got clinched.
Dries the bone now. 10 and 7 for Beans. That little tree screen here saves the B zone. And the progress of B zone has not been cleaned up yet. Oh, Vivid. No. Wow, what a two that was. Beans cleans up. Last man left up here for Optic is going to be Ghost. Can he do anything? From the bottom side of maps, dashing shots in our spawn, flying forward, dip it with the corner. Sun check, lands it, here comes the kill. As Kareem gets it, that's three, you're out, last man awakening. If you can take care of this player, that's huge. Optic now flying to B. And there, yeah, B as well, so that's already a little bit of progress. Nero, though, here's the cruise missile for him. I'm expecting trophies. Can you make the impact play? Can the close uh, name force him back? It cannot. Optic are still here. Trophy there, Vivi dealt with as well. The attack remains, it stays alive, Ghosty! He gets a few more. Trades now are done. Can Dashi finish the capture towards B? He's doing it alone. He's not over yet. His teammates are there to back him up. B is gone. You got the four ticks that you needed, and you got a spawn trap potentially set up. But for the team that is on offense, everyone's stuck in the corner. Who got the bound? All the pressure now on, and made though to chop him down just a little bit. As it looks like Boston doing their best to stabilize. Al Bagra giving it to Al Bagra to take it away. Big win out of Dash and stays live in mid map, pulling the KD back. 18 to 12, they're out. Oh, they want it. Oh, they're going for it. The apparition of Al Bagra can't get anything done there with the crew. Now we're going to hook. Cleaned up from top rail side, breach. Oh, they've stabilized. Ah, uh, that is such good awareness by Boston to catch Hook as well in top rails. But you had Optic, they broke out of this just moments before, and you got Shotzi already causing problems on the back Whoa! line. And a gunny like that, maybe to help out his team just a little bit, but looks like nowhere to go for the moment. Just one player out of open, but nope, the ARs are there. But at it, either way, that is tied up on tick. Optic have done just enough to keep this one close. It's a sensational turn of events here in the control. It's not over yet, ladies and gents. Now they've broken out before, they can do it again. Is the jailbreak on here for Optic? One more try, but keep in mind, you gotta be delicate with lives as well in case the tick battle is tied. And uh -oh, Big uh -oh, Battle uh -oh. Team is looking for the slang. Clean three down, backs up to open up those back spawns. So nothing finicky there. Not letting Optic out, and only two lives remaining. And Optic, you do not want to die in these moments. The second tiebreaker is TDM. Every kill can make a difference. That's right, folks. If in time of round five, we're all tied up on those segments captured, it goes to kills. We'll find out what happens in a few moments. But for now, Boston Breach, they will be put onto match point. Here we go. And it is a nine life lead for Boston, all tied up on six. So Boston now, and this is the map that all these players have to work with. How aggressive do you want to be? Off the opening break, you go for it. Full send, try to make a play. If you can get an extra tick, you're already feeling great. But if you get shut down and that spawn trap gets set up, there's a decent chance that Boston pump the brakes and just play it off lives. So a very delicate balance in this round. Boston have a, an extra edge because they got a, a few more options to play with, but that does not make it easy. Let's see what they can cook up. Vivid can get streaks again. Very handy indeed. Big win. Takes care of Dash. First blood. And that cleans up that side of the map. That allows his teammate Nero to fly on towards the B zone immediately. Look at those green arrows now. Optic have to pull back on the defense, try to clear them up. They do. Shotzi, the man to get it done. Vivid, though, once again, it's a 6 3, and that is now another cruise over towards A. We now fly. And the extra pack is to play slower. They were looking for the kills, they were looking for the break, and now they got that pressure on A. Couple more kills come through, but it is a team made from Nero. Both of these teams making the same mistake. And that could be a costly one for Boston. They just lost the pressure. You're down by three lives, so it's a six, maybe now make it seven kill difference. Boston, this is a delicate moment in this game. It's 50 seconds. Awakening finds an aid there on the shot, so he makes that art side of the map a little more open for them. Ghosty, looking for his third kill on a row. Holds it down against Beans, good shot. 40 seconds now. I mean, hey, uh, four life advantage for Optic. Be a five, now make it four kill difference in total. Woo! Boston breach, I don't know how good their math is, but they are risking a lot right now in this round. And look at what they're doing now. Finally, it looks like they pumped the brakes, doubled up, maybe quadrupled up in their back spawn. And you can boo all you want. Optic, they have to make the play. Got to get in there and get those kills. Ghosties there. You've got a few players making their way through Arch Final 50. Every single kill counts. Boston have backed up to the extremities here of Alpac. You gotta be a mathematician. Zero wins the fight, who's your ghost team? Shotzi though gets it, finds a few more, no. Round done, here we go.
Final moments for quick calculations as we get into this last round of our back of <laughs> Yeah, the, the quick little double check to make sure that we're keeping track things uh, correctly as well. But should have been a, a tied segment battle four to four, and it does look like Boston got the extra kill lead by just an extra few. Might have been a, a four kill difference towards the end. And I mean, Optic, again, it was a dominant round on defense, all things considered. But on a map like this, I'm not here to argue with the crowd, but you do need a little bit of action. <laughs> here we go. Boss and Breach have secured a defense for the final round. Optic, Texas, you have come so close. We're two segments away from capturing A and winning an offensive round. You get another go at it. Here we go. And keep in mind for Optic, they chose this map to play over a CeeLo. They know what situation they could end up in. They know now in this fight, they got to make the play. They find clean kills. Pressure now on. Shotzi making his way towards the inside. Can he catch up with it? Yes, he does. And this flurry of kills helps a lot. Holy moly. Shotzi. One more. Nero slows it down. But the first segment, A's gone. Might have been a moment of a little bit of overheating, though, because it's not like he bought a lot of time. He was instant talent, and now you got Boston. They take it right back. A moment where you're too aggressive. The left stick problem might just cost them is Boston. They got the spawn trap secured. Trap secured. Armbar in place. How long until Optic Texas tap? Will they tap? Or can they seek out Nero once again in the same spot? Keeps the kills going. Keeps it flying. They're looking for five down a road. Nearly nails it. Final minute now, taken away. Nero, the absolute nuisance, pops dead silence to get a little bit extra, but look at how he's doing a great job of staying alive and buying his teammates time. Nero doing so much for the team in this moment, and only 40 seconds left. Optic, they need something. They need that break. They got Shotzi, pressure towards B, you take care of Nero, this could be it. This is an opening, the jailbreak is on. Sweet taste of freedom for a few moments now. Can you get vivid as well? Beans and Awake can find their kills. Check the corner. No, Dashi can't win it. Ghosty can't win Rain. anything else, though. Final 30 seconds. 14 lives now remaining for Optic. A last ditch attempt to fly forward. I mean, Hook is flying and he's got Dashi for the chow, but such a difficult gunfight to win. And Boston keeping things contained. 12 lives and less time on the clock. This is looking like it might be a 3 0. Final 10. Is it going to be a 3 0? The boys have made it out. Oh, B! has just cooked him. Go see though. Last man up onto the point. Can he stay alive for how long? Vivid is there. Vivid guns him. That's it. It's done. The white flag is blown. It has been a 3-0. Has Boston Breach proved to be too much? The deck may have been split, but in the game, there was nothing to split about this 3-0. And Beans, welcome to the show, man. Main stage against Optic in front of their home crowd. Ties a kill record in s and and absolutely shuts Optic down. They chose the Albagra. They could not string together anything on offense. Punish for it in Boston. Just bought themselves a spot in winner's round two. That is a hell of a way to kick off your tournament. Wonderful confidence boosters them for them. And also, as it has been an up and down run towards this major. Kudos again to Boston GG there for Optic now. Loser's run begins. We'll find out exactly who they play. It's been a tough one there. 3-0, a close performance in the course the hard point. A close one there in the control. Search and destroy though. Beans was just a demon in that round 11. But what a series it was. Here on a Thursday. It, again, the discrepancy that you have for Beans and Awakening, how they just get a post up and chill as Vivid and Nero just get to go absolutely crazy on the map. But again, it's high IQ plays as well that we're seeing Nero and Vivid bring, right? They're going to give you spots in staying alive in setting their teammates up for success, doing such a good job. And I mean, Vivid, 26 and 31, and the guy had 16 assists. Vivid, he just throws up stat lines that are completely unreal. Unbelievable. Three Bs. We do give him an A-plus look for that performance. 2-12, 6-5, 3-2, a close series. Sort of exciting one at that. We didn't even get to see Mercado or that embassy, but there we go. That is the series in the books. Optic drop to losers. We will see Boston Breach fly forward here in the tournament. A spicy one indeed. Crazy stuff. I'm sure Boston will be very, very happy with that performance, the coaching stuff as well. For now, though, a treat for the fans at home. Beans is on stage with Lando. Yes, indeedy. Thank you so much, Miles and Chance. How about the Boston Breach coming away with a 3-0 victory here to Zoptic, Texas. Beans, I'll tell you what, man. 
first opportunity to be on the main stage. You got the crowd absolutely not behind you. In fact, very much against you. How does it feel to come out, come away with a dub like that? I mean, it's a it's a great series. Um, we played, I think, we played really well. It's a lot of like, you know, not pressure, but you know, first time on the stage, uh, crowd's crazy. Obviously, like, you know, I got a lot of love for the crowd. It is what it is. I got I got to play with them a little bit. I find it fun. But um, oh yeah, it was it was a great series. Close all the way. Obviously, had a great S and D, but yeah. Absolutely, man. Well, one thing that I do want to point out is when you came out on the main stage for the first time, your team's getting introduced, you hit the crowd with a little bit of a shrug. Does, does having those boos out there give you guys a bit more of uh, the extra fire? I mean, it's more for them, right? It's more for Optic, not for us. But like uh, like I said to the guys, it's just another scrim. You know, we're obviously known as a great scrim team, so it's just another scrim, you know? These are just people in the, in the scrim room, so just play it like a scrim. Absolutely, man. Well, one thing that we got to point out, right, was your performance in that game two, Search and Destroy. You put up 17 kills. You tied the Search Destroy kill record so far throughout this season. But I want to bring you back to a certain round. It was four to two. Optic Texas was in the lead, down to a 1v1, you versus Dashi. Was it that moment where you felt like the momentum started to swing, or was it a different situation? I think uh, there was a 1v1 or a 2v1 Dashi got before, which was for us to go 3 1 up, which I think was a big swing round which we lost, unfortunately, I, I, he, he killed me, so fair play to him. But um, yeah, obviously that round of, of pop three, it was, it was nice. Got the last kill on Dashi, knew that he'd be running around somewhere. Using my headset, it's hard to use the headset with this many people shouting, but right. you know, I tried my best and, uh, and yeah, I mean, we just got the job done, thank God. Absolutely, man. Well, one thing I wanna ask you before we let you go, one thing that is gonna put Boston Breach in the spot that you guys wanna be, if it's a player, if it's a map, a mo, whatever it is, if there's one thing that's gonna promote you guys, what is it gonna be this tournament? Uh, I think I think everyone knows. Obviously, we play Toronto now. Me vs. Scrappy is, is what everyone's been waiting for. Um, I want to take him down again. Last time, I have a feet up a little bit, but I really want to I want to bring it to him this time. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. Beans, appreciate you, man. That's going to do it from us here on the main stage desk. Take it away, guys. Hey, thank you, Lando. Hey, Beans getting the job done, then calling out Scrappy right afterwards. Said he had his feet up last time. This time, well, he's going to be ready to go. A big 3-0 victory, Nameless. Uh, honestly, didn't expect that at all, but they Dude. got it done. I mean, that that is surprising, right? I mean, I was looking at this series, and I'm like, Tan Talon alone, Optics should be able to come in and win this, but they are a lot worse than I thought they were, man. Yeah. I mean, seriously, these guys need a coach. Some of these moments that they're just throwing away, like when you think well, about the search and destroy in the round 11, yeah. I'm sure we're about to go into it, but I got to touch on it once again. <laughs> in that round 11, giving up the bomb plant right away oh, is bro, simply God. unacceptable. I, nameless. I, I got to say, a lot worse, but like, honestly, it was a close series. Despite it, it being a three, it was close. Ali, I mean, I think we can agree on that. I mean, there are series where it's a 3-0, and you know, that doesn't tell the whole, whole story. I agree with you to a point, but at the end of the day, I mean, Beans went 17 and five. Like you can't really call that a close search and destroy when you have one player dropping numbers like that and tying the kill record. Uh, in the hard point, it was close. It was literally just the fact that Texas didn't prioritize street. I was talking about priority heading into this Three series. Times, that Allie. Boston's one of those teams that struggles with it. Well, Texas handed it to them on a silver plaver where, like you said, Jay, three times they three gave times. up P2 street and gave up an immense amount of time on one of the money hills in that number one map. So it's just a tough series for Optic Texas to start up with. Tough series indeed. You get 3-0, now you drop down to the elimination bracket. You got to try and come back and make a run, sort of like, you know, LA Thieves did in uh, major number two. But one thing is for certain, Optic, they're the boys to be able to do it. But let's move into our scuff play of the game. And it's kind of a lot of uh, plays from our it main man, be. Beans, yeah. right? 17 <laughs> kills, matching that kill record. Nameless, he was on fire. I mean, the guy was going crazy, man. He had so many opening duels that he got into, picking up so many first bloods and also some big clutches. You know, he touched on it in that interview. It's like Dash, he had that 2v1, and then Optic got all the momentum and they were getting him back into it. But then he had a one versus one that he iced up against Dash, and the momentum went right back into the Boston Breach side of things. The man was going nuts. I feel like every time you seen him on your screen, he was just making fun. And what's crazy is heading into the series, I was like, that map number two is going to be big, that LS I was like, you know, Nero has a 2.6, Hook has a 3.1. I didn't see either of those players. I saw Beans, okay? That was <laughs> his show in that map number two, and I believe that was really the swing map for this series. As well. I got to say, man, for the rookie to come in, you know, we questioned there was three rookies, Hixie, Ghosty, as well as Beans. How well were they going to be able to do? Well, we saw two of them just face off against each other. Beans rose up to the occasion, and he looked absolutely stellar. He didn't just hide under, you know, his other teammates. He came out with a bang and said, 
I'm ready to go, baby. Not my first mage, but I'm looking to take it. Let's take a look at our bracket, though, because things are starting to shake up a bit. Study, go ahead and uh, break it down for me. Yeah, so obviously Boston Breeze getting a nice little victory over that Optic Texas squad. Clean 3-0. Now they have a matchup against Toronto Ultra. We saw how that one went last time. It was the very first match of Stage 3 for both of these teams. Boston Beach wanted a 3v4 because my man Beans was feet kicked up, brother. <laughs> Still got it, yeah. You can't have that today going up against Toronto Ultra team who took care of business versus that New York subliners roster, but... So far, the tournament, it's not really going how I expected, man. Not a, no, not how you expected it. That's okay. I like I like tournaments like that, right? Yeah. They kind of shake it up, shake and bake, baby, and uh, make things interesting. Well, speaking of making things interesting, you know we got those skins on lockdown as well as those blueprints. Let's talk about our Shinobi bundle now available in store. Hey, channel your inner ninja with the Shinobi Tracer Pack. You get two Tracer blueprints tuned for speed and stealth and a shadowy operator. And that shadowy operator skin nameless, hey, it's pretty goaded. I mean, that thing looks like a shadow on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be hard to kill, man, but this looks cool, man. I think so. I'm going to have to pick it up without question. Well, check it out. Our last series, our final series of the day, it's going to be coming up just after this. we got a lot of phase going against LA Thieves. I know it's much hyped up. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, that series will be underway.
Welcome back, everyone, to Major Number Three, the Optic Texas Major here at Esports Stadium, Arlington. We've had three series to watch. Now we've got our fourth and final one of our first day. We've got Atlanta Faze versus LA Thieves. LA Thieves, we covered it during the pre-show. Nameless, they received those champs rings. I think that's going to give them some motivation for today. Absolutely. I mean, these guys, last year, everybody's gone for a roster change midway point of the season. They figured it out. They went back-to-back -back championships, and now they finally get their rings. So they're coming here fully confident. This is a team that made a crazy run. That's right. And they got their new banner as well, which I know is going to motivate them. So that's going to be great to see them for today. But of course, they are going against the champs of our last major, looking to go back to back. So FaZe also has some firepower to back them up to chance. I, that's probably like the craziest storyline we have in winners round one is the fact that one of these two teams is going to start in the losers bracket in round one. Like that is just destructive for every single team that is going to be down there. And honestly, I mean, pick your poison on this one is going to be a battle. Well, let's start working through our teams, right? LA Thieves, a team that is absolutely to be feared and to be scared of without question. But I guess you can't afford to if you're FaZe. Allie, LA Thieves, what do we got for? I mean, they didn't unveil with just one banner. They unveiled two because they went back to back last year. And this year was a little bit worrisome. They had a little bit of a slow start. They didn't really have that game mode under their, their belt like they did in Hardpoint at the beginning of last season. But they make that elimination run all the way to the grand final. Couldn't close it out against Atlanta FaZe and then get their revenge during the major three qualifiers. And we're back in winners round one with the best of five for LA Thieves team to shine because guess what? They're a respawn team. I'm talking about those one, three, fours. LA Thieves, they are a team to get through and they also get better on local area network as well. And from what we've seen out of them is they're working on those games two and five as well. So LA Thieves, I mean, this is a terrifying round one, whether you're FaZe or anybody else. Uh, our number five seed and of course our player to watch has to be Kenny Davis. Oh, I mean, Kenny's a beast, right? Like, it's always the talking point whether can this guy figure it out and they will absolutely dominate. Well, I think we sort of moved past that. He's a cerebral player. Uh, individually on this team, everybody can make plays, right? And I don't really look at Kenny to come in and have to drop bombs anymore. That's not the player that he has to be for this team. And he's been fantastic. This LA Thieves squad, when I look at them, they are solid across all three games. It is a tall task to take them down, and something that they pride themselves in is always having one of the deepest map pools in the CDO. I mean, I think about even JCAP's teams back in the day always had a deep map pool, and you can tell he's brought that same narrative over to this roster. I love what I see out of this squad. And talking about Kenny specifically, I mean, it's really been the search and destroy that I think he's kind of been impressing me with this season. He's at a 62% opening dual win rate, so he's basically incredibly very reliable when he's getting in that opening engagement and also has a 1.27, and we're going to need him in that series now because mirroring him is going to be a BZ with a 1.48. So those maps two and fives might be closer than we think. Hey, you got the number five, number four seed, so I think it's going to be relatively close anyways. It should be all the way through. Maybe another map five for today. But let's start honing in on Atlanta. A phase chance. I'm actually going to kick it over to you. These boys are incredible. SD number one 12 win streak. And they can play comfortably now as well. It's not just the fact that they have completely locked up this game mode to the point where you're literally just expecting to die on one of the two maps that you have to play. It's also the fact that they just spent a year of almost nothing but second places and having that pressure on your back. They got rid of it. They can play comfortable. They got Slasher, who has to be the happiest man in the world now that he's getting wins again with this <laughs> roster. So they're playing with confidence. I think they're going to shake off the losses that they had without a problem. And one of those losses against Thieves, mm. they're looking for revenge. And as we were talking about it, our player to watch is going to be Simp for right reasons, right? Because he's that kind of game-changing player, right? I feel like Simp has been one of those players where he will fall under the radar for just a little bit, but once he figures it out, the momentum that he adds on top of what our what Atlanta phase already is, is terrifying, especially in Search and Destroy. I mean, once he's going, he's unstoppable. Yeah, I feel like when I look at the series, though, like, LA Thieves have the edge, for sure. I mean, when you look at a best of five series, like both those hard points, LA Thieves, four Four straight hard point wins against the Atlanta FaZe. Atlanta FaZe haven't been able to do anything to them in that particular game mode. We've seen LA Thieves working on their search and destroy as well. And they're, when we get to the maps and modes, they're throwing us for a loop when, when it comes to this series. And then in that control, it's been the difference a few times with these guys. And LA Thieves have been strong. They're top three this split when it comes That's to right. control. Yeah, number two in hard point, number three in control, but Simp, the MVP from last major two, I'm sure he's going to be bringing in the fire. You brought it up best. Hey, look, they're looking for revenge. Maybe they'll get it today. And again, I mean, it's a matchup that these guys are incredibly used to as well. So, like, we could talk about That's the right. maps and everything just endlessly, just for the fact that you know the play styles. You know who's ego challenging and when they're going <laughs> to do it. You know who's going to be the first into every single situation. Octane and Satcher have teamed together. They've played against each other a thousand times. Yeah. Like, there's not even homework that you have to do. You 
know what's going to happen it, in the series. It's a classic matchup. It really is. Whether, you know, the rosters might have shifted just a little bit, but Atlanta Fays, LA Thieves, like in terms of organizations, like these two, they go way back. Let's start taking a bit of a deeper dive into this specific series, though. We've got our maps and modes. And uh, Ali, I actually want to start with you. I mean, I'm not too worried about the respawns in the series. To be honest, I'm going to be leaning uh, towards the LA Thieves, regardless of the map, simply because Atlanta's kind of been lacking on their fundamentals as of recent with this split. I mean, they are the worst rotating team in the league right now, which I didn't believe I would be saying when it comes to the Atlanta phase, but it's a continuation off of last year as well. For the LAPs right now, I'm just looking at them for that map number two. Just don't get picked. You know, don't get blooded. They're the worst 3v4 team in the league, and don't allow the bomb to get down because Atlanta phase, once it's planted, it's basically a guaranteed win. I just think that embassy. We have to talk <laughs> about the embassy and get more excited. They have been saying. so utterly destructive on this map that even on LSC, where Atlanta phase is one of eight, nine times in a row, something completely absurd. They're so good at embassy that teams allow that to happen because they're undefeated on the map. They have destroyed every single team they've played against. I'm talking like I was, six twos and six ones down the board. They're elite. I was talking to Jcap in the back, and I'm like, are you guys playing embassy? Like, finally, will a team square up with them on this map? Because everybody's been getting rid of it. You could square up on MC, get the early challenge, just a little bit of more of a straight up map, and there's so much talent on the LA Thieves. They have a good opportunity there, right? But like Chan said, every team that's decided to do that, it hasn't gone well <laughs> for them. If there's a team that can, though, maybe it's the new and improved LA Thieves. All right, fair enough. Well, I'm kind of curious, is there any team that if we go to a map five, you have to favor? Atlanta, Atlanta Face, the team that has won 12 search yeah. yeah. I was going to say, yes. I was going to say, but it seems like we are hyping up the LA Thieves. Like, we do believe in their search yeah. to a certain degree. So, I mean, go map five, you would think, though, the chemistry, I think, as well as the composure from Atlanta phase is going to back them up. The history will back them up, too. Well, I think to that point, you know, when they get so excited about that embassy s and is what makes Atlanta so different on that map mode is that they really don't actually bring the sniper out that much. Like, okay. Selium has maybe eight shots on the season right now, where Octane, on the mirror side of that, to give you a comparison, has 27. So I feel like there's going to be a lot on Sam's shoulder specifically when it comes to a map like embassy, because if you have any hope getting to that B bomb site or even defending it, you're going to need a sniper in that top AC or that lower right corner trying to counter it. So I think that's what makes Atlanta so dangerous on that map and mode is because Selingham doesn't have to pull out the sniper because they find success without it. Okay. Well, look, it's time to put our names on the line. Let's go for our predictions. Uh, not doing too bad myself. I think it's going pretty well for my first major, but this time around it's a bit tougher, isn't it? Number five, number four. I'm going to throw it out there. I think LA Thieves, they're going to take the victory. I believe in phase. I really do. That map five is definitely going to be scary. We go to search, but LA Thieves, I think they're my team. What about you? Uh, taking Atlanta Face. They won the last tournament, and the idea of them ending up in losers round one is so foreign to me that I just I, I don't see that world happening. Okay. Ah, uh, boring. I'm going to go for the Thieves. I'm thinking <laughs> these for sure. All right. I'm thinking Thieves, man. I don't think they want to go through wow. that hell that is round one, loses <laughs> bracket one again. I think they come into the series confident. Uh, the last time they played them, they did get the victory here. We keep talking about Search and Destroy. They might not even have to win Asini to win this That's series. It. I got Thieves. All right, Thieves sounds good to me, but Chance, you're, you're all by yourself, brother, but I'm, I'm sure you're feeling confident, you're feeling good about it, FaZe. They're going to be a solid choice. Landon, what do we got going on on stage? Oh. Thank you so much, Taylor. Yes, indeed, Texas, it is time for our final matchup of the day. That's going to be an absolute banger. The LA Thieves taking on the Atlanta phase. It's quickly become one of the best matchups that we've got in the CDL. It's their fourth time facing off against each other this season, but now they meet in winners round one. It is time to meet our teams and we start things off with the LA Thieves. Let's meet them. So what's the plan? Same crew. But this time, we take everything. Looking to run it up, it is the L.A. Thieves! Octane, draw 
Raza, Kenny, and Envoy, the LA Thieves. This is the reigning defending world champ squad. They're trying to get that first W of the year. And you know what? I'm going to give you guys a player to look out for in this series. It's going to be Draza. I think he's the most underrated player that we have in the game. He can take over series. Let's see if he can do it. Let's bring out the other squad. Let's do it indeed, Nameless. Now, like we said, this is going to be a fun matchup. The LA Thieves Atlanta phase. It's going to be a blast. Let's go ahead and check in with the Search and Destroy Masters, the Atlanta phase. Up in my safe, I've been dreaming of pulling up in that rape. Check the stats, I ain't got too much to say. I got Gucci on my belt, but my pants sag. Wouldn't be surprised if my biggest hater made a fan page. You taking orders from your boss, you man made. Grown that getting touched up by the handshake. Don't think you hear me right, let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> 100 racks, 100 racks up in my safe. I've been dreaming of pulling up in that rape. Check the stats, I ain't got too much to say. Looking to go back to back, it is the Atlanta Fays! <laughs> Slasher, Abizi, Simp, and Celium, the Atlanta Fays. The Atlanta Fays not only home to one of my favorite new songs, but home to some of the iciest and coldest players in the game. And I gave you a player to watch. I'll give you one of my own slasher with 10 clutches on the season, five of those being 1v1, four 1v2s, and one 1v3. He's going to be your player to watch in that game number two. It's the Atlanta phase. I want to see the phase ups in the crowd if you're going for that red. Let's get this match started, Lando. Let's do it, Ali. Indeed, as we said, the fourth matchup of this season. It is about to be a blast. Atlanta Fays, LA Thieves, Bryson Tun, take it away, guys. All right, thank you very much, Lando. Yes, we are live. We are ready for this game. Some people have been anticipating this since the schedule was released, Tun. Me and you both, actually, yeah. as well. On top of that, we were very excited to see us casting this one in what should be an absolute banger. Of course, the finals from our previous major. We're very excited to see how this one goes down. And it's pretty clear, cut the picture that we've been talking about. The desk have brushed over it quite a lot there as well. Hard points, you think, in Thieves, of course, but the Search and Destroy Masters that are Atlanta phase. That game five is a worrisome thing for the side of Thieves if we do indeed get there. The game plan's laid out. Everyone knows which way this one should go in certain game modes, but the control is the real stickler for me. Whichever way that one goes, I believe the team who wins that wins the series. All right, bold call from the off. One thing I do know about this matchup, it's always fun, it's always entertaining. There's a lot of talent on the stage here in Texas. And speaking of Texas, I was actually told that everything is bigger in Texas, but the crowd noise has yet to surprise and amuse me. Like, Texas, are you awake in this venue? That's okay, we can do better. We, we can, can we get going. Do better. We'll get it going, we'll get it going. I promise you, this is going to be a good game and you'll be on the edge of your seat by the end of it. And out of phase versus LA Thieves, one for the ages, and it's crazy we've got this in the first round. Oh, it's insane that we get it. And it is also, of course, we say a, a good matchup and a rivalry in terms of how they do face off against each other in competition. But both these two teams, there was a lot of smack talk after last two. They went up against each other because it was because of Mikado. We're talking about Stegless, we're talking about all kinds of things, but let's see who's going to play the best on the day. Atlanta Faze, starting on the more favorable side, kills coming in for a easy to kick things off. Yeah, you are correct. The bad blood here it could make it a spicy series indeed. LA Thieves will be looking for this half point to begin with. It's all about the rotation of the spawns already flipping for them. Yep, happy to flip them by the looks of things. Sim spawning out will immediately give that information over towards the side of Atlanta Faze. Envoy will find two though. A little bit of scrap time on offer. There's number three. Nicely done. Selling will clean it up. Here comes the pressure. 23 seconds to go <laughs> until we head over towards P2. Atlanta Faze looking to posture over towards it. As the is one of the most prevalent slayers in the CDL. He is gunning. That six already. A cruise off the rip. We're not even in P2 yet. Selim is trying to find this last one as well. Should be able to clean it up. 7 0 start. Almost an 8 0, but eventually shut down by Kenny. Spawns are going to be the issue. That's a big kill coming in from Draza. Looking like a couple of the members of Atlanta Phase have made a rotation over towards P2. 
was working out for them. Draza was alone, still is alone. Envoy will find one or through the middle. Draza, Envoy working it together. It's back to back, three pieces for Envoy to break up in P2. Rotation locked in, phased out, a lot of work to do. And the phase thought they might have had that in the bag, not to be so. Time ticking up for LA Thieves. The pinch coming in from Atlanta phase. They have bodies in every single direction, but that's all they've got. Bodies hitting the deck, as they have not found a kill on the attack here yet. Salium's the only one who can answer back to that critic. Hedges control, well, might have known that is pretty much a full 60 for the side of the LA Thieves. Scoreboard check, have a look. Envoy is the one who is causing issue. He really has been clinical for this side. Especially when it comes down to rotations. We see him so early on those. He was there to help Draza out, which locked down all that P2 time. 10 seconds remaining. Every single one of those seconds over towards Thieves. Set up now for Faze. It was there for P2. Can it be better for P3? Oh, no, that's that big phase. already. Trying to hold desperately against the sea of slaying. But oh, oh, it goes oh, for oh. Thieves. It's almost perfect. Simp finds two back, though. And that's the third for Simp. The only man standing up to Thieves. And they're waiting for reinforcements. Simp has managed to do everything they can here. Oh. Okay, will fire back for this island. The trades come in. Atlanta phase eventually wrecked itself back. And it is a godsend from Simp. And they absolutely needed that. That would have been back to back. Perfect breaks coming in from Thieves. We speak about perfect breaks. It comes the second time of asking now. Can they manage to lock down this final 30 seconds? The breaks have been so impressive for Thieves. It's something we talk about in their hard point game. It's so crucial for them to find them. And when they do, they win games. That's two, three hills so far. Looking good for the side of Thieves. In terms of the breaks, it's a solid lead heading over towards Barbershop. The slaying isn't even that far out. It's just nothing going the way for Thieves. Uh, sorry, going the way for Atlanta Face when they want it. And now you can see the Thieves moving again. Almost going to be perfect team. Won't they end up getting the team kill as well? This time, Atlanta Face have it locked in. Can they hold off the push they know is coming? Third time the charm. That has to be the question here for Faze. Break, not going to come through Envoy, who has really been the catalyst for this side so far. So it's slow and steady, maybe wins the race here for the side of Thieves now, who are going to be pushing through the front street slasher, ready to lock this down, they're rocking a hard place. If you're Thieves, Kenny were the first one to fall. Good play coming in from Faze so far. This is some decent chunk of time, a busy cleaning up the front as well. And they get themselves on the board here, yeah, Bryce. That was crucial that they got at least 30 seconds here. There's 30 seconds more to play for. Yeah, they've been slaying back and forth between them, but still holding. There's going to be a lot of pressure coming through. Selling him, one step down the gap. Hey, Thieves is going to be in. He finds the first kill, but he's outnumbered. Fortunately, his teammate gets him there at the same time. Slasher running for his life, but Thieves still doing a really good job of racking up the time. Rotational gunfights now start to go down. Kenny and Envoy already here. Simp on his own. Simp already dead. Selling him goes to the challenge. It really has been rotations. That has been 50-50. But if you look at the scoreline, it tells you what Thieves have been doing well when they get round the okay well they find the holes, but only momentarily. It's easy to find another. Now looking like this rotation goes towards phase. Seems like they're starting to heat up into this game just a little bit, but the holds need to be better. They've got at the moment a busy on three. LA Thieves going for this big stack. They're waiting, they're biding their time, trying to get through, but they're not finding the kills where they need them. This has put them stacked now. They're back into the respawn, oh. and Abizi is starting oh. to take over. Six streak for him now, cruising the back pocket as well. And this is exactly what they needed. Regain the momentum, start taking it to Thieves. And that's the thing with Mercado. You can have one good rotation, one good 60 hold. You're back into the game. You're not going to get the 60 by the looks of things, though. 20 seconds of scrap time. Influential for both two teams. Abizi for the challenge. That was what? I want to say five, seven, eight seconds or so going over towards Thieves uncontested. Rotation though, not uncontested. You can see two members of Fizz setting up towards the alley side. Abizi on the seventh spree, looking to break it from the other end, but Envoy will deal with the other two on the other side of the map. Now Fizz, it's a perfect break that you have to now find. Thieves set up in a good place. At this point, I wonder if Atlanta Face might call in the cruise. They've got to get the tax in position, but it will move LA Thieves out of position if they do it. Abizi though, stacking in towards back alley. He's already going to fall. Envoy finds the first. The rest of Atlanta Face are finding nothing. Drives against one more. Sim finds a kill, but Slasher is miles away. Almost finds the second. But again, it's a hold for Thieves. And it's all about the pinch here for Faze. They have been able to set it up. Well, the setup has been there, but the kills haven't come in either end. The kills fall through for the side of Thieves. It's another really good hold. After the first couple of hills, it's been pretty clinical for both two teams, but is this hold going to continue for Thieves? Not quite. 20 seconds left to go on this hill, and Faze will pick up the time. And it was much needed. Thieves have been starting to run away with this, but now Draza locking down the car park as we head over towards P7. Thieves are the first one here, and this is an opportunity to get some good time again. Patience is now a virtue. 
Here comes the first. Can the team get the tax and grenade in place early enough? And they will. Salian finds one. A BD finds a second. And they're now swinging into it. Sim finds a third. Octane now alone. A sea of Lovely tiny terrors swarms upon his corpse. And they have broken into this, considering how LA Thieves have looked all the way through this hard point. This score is very close. And that comes down to Salian's crews coming in, obviously. But look at where a BD was. Blue side pushes through, finds one. All of a sudden, thieves have been pinched, and all of a sudden, it's went over towards the side of base. It's a wonderful break from them. And this is 30 seconds of time, which will somehow, some way, find FaZe in the lead. Based on what we've seen in this game so far, though, it's felt like thieves all the way through. FaZe have kept themselves in touch. FaZe about to take the lead. Well, they're looking for this. They're continuing to hold. And as they are on the cusp of taking this game into the lead, let's find out what they sound like in the comms with Atlanta phase. Listen in. He's He's still 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 long. Long. Where, where, where? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I don't know. I don't know. He's still long. Right, 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 they're going to be behind me, too. Yeah, could, I, 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 yeah, someone behind me. Stop me. Stop me. I'm deep. Deep dead. Oh, you have any. Yes. Oh, you have any. Yes. I have deep dead. I have a dark. 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 I have a Watch it, I'll get down. Could be top. Okay, just go. I point. I want to throw this. I barber cross. I barber cross. Deep people, guys. I think they're all point yellow side. I barber cross. I don't see anything dark. They're gonna be deep here. I don't see anything barber cross. Deep point. 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 Deep Hedge on me, one shot hedge, one shot hedge. Hey, one more tunnel, push through. Tunnel. Hedge on me, one shot. Yellow man, yellow man, I think. I'll team tunnel. I spawn up barber. Yellow man, yellow man. He's not side hill. Oh, I'm trying to help you both side. I'm on the other side. It's an out short, out short, I guess. I'm not saying bar reset also. Fuck, you guys play bar round. I'm not short, I'm not short. Nothing wants to see them in. I'm lucky challenge, hold on. I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. No one's short. Literally three on time. They're going bar reset though. Two bar reset. Short, 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 I'm about to go, short, 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 well, it's been back and forth. Atlanta Faze had the lead, but lost it on P1 and lost to P2 spawns, even with the streak that Selian went on. And that is two cruise missiles now in the back pocket for the side of Atlanta Faze. Can they use this to break potentially? Sasha now on top, Slasher dead. And this is going to be a hold by the looks of things from the side of Thieves. Got to slow down the push through alleyway. They're about to break 200. This is a good opportunity to put themselves within spitting distance of a map number one win. This might even be the last push from FaZe. They have to go and they have to go now. They can't really Can afford it. Go for it. Selim gets a team kill though. Kenny jump on the top. He's weak. He's going to be there. Can Selim find the next one? Kenny spins oh. and Selim gets it. The scrap time is good. This is what they need, but the Big rotation points. kills are better. Simp is here. He gets the kill. Oh. It's two for Simp. They have the rotation. Rotation locked in from Simp with two minutes plus in the hill. It's all been about the SMGs for FaZe when they're finding points they can get in the hill. They're locking it down. Thieves are forced away. Both teams breaking 200 points. We're over towards P3. A huge moment in this game. Thieves starting to posture. Here they go. They've got bodies. They've got kills. They're now swarming in. Selium desperately fighting for his life. Looking as you can see all the LA Thieves players flood through and he's alone. They're putting the pressure on him. Oh boy, he's not going to find him. But Selium staying alive desperately here. He needs to keep them occupied. The rest are on the way. The cruise missiles are now committed. Atlanta Faith went back into this hill and they're doing it with numbers and gunning. Selium still alive inside the point as well, allowing the rest of the team to come through while Steve's focus. Both two teams picking up about similar times so far in this one. The final few gunfights. Kenny will win one. Does he know he's behind Ooh. him? My goodness, Kenny. And that's going to be a huge 50 or so points for the side of Thieves. They're going to be with a touching distance. They have the rotation phase. One more opportunity to find a break. And then you need to be perfect. The fact the cruise missile might help them. Here we go. Tanks and Nate will be committed back alley. You can already see it going. He's quitting. The boost is hit. He doesn't find it with a beat. He breaks in with two regardless. LA Thieves have been rebuffed from the barber shop. The haircut are not coming today. Draza fighting for his life. He knows he has to hold this door open. The rest of them are pouring through. Simp and Kenny trade out at the end. Envoy now flies into the point. Guns are firing on all cylinders from all of these players. For the moment, Thieves have found some ingress and it will be Selium. And now Thieves are too far away. They have to go. Big gunfights going on in the middle. Draza will find one. 37 seconds on the clock there for FaZe, they broke 240, it's in the ascendance in for them now, Thieves have got to go. Oh boy, going through but he's down, Zip with two, Zip with no, he doesn't get it. Got to go, go. in second, and FaZe, FaZe take the hard points. Thieves had it most of the time, but it's not about how you start, it is about how you end.
And that is a dagger to Thieves from the outset. And you gotta feel like the rotations from Thieves, majority of the way through, were looking good. But they just couldn't lock the time down. Simp and Abizi going off where needed. Simp dropping two minutes and 22 seconds inside of the hill. It's a tough one to take for Thieves and that one, Draza never really got going. Neither did Slasher on the side of Faze, but ultimately it comes down to Simp and Abizi finding these breaks with the SMGs towards the latter stages of the game. Thieves had a hot start, but didn't really count for much in the score department. The answer will be no. Yeah, kind of a crazy game all around, realistically. It felt like it should have been way better for Thieves into the score earlier on. But we'll go over some more things that happen in the map. Before we go forward with analyzing it, let's have a little rewind back to our Scuff play of the game. These are the final kills that came through. A beating with two in the end. And you can see the panic on Drazen's face here. He knew he had to hold it. His team was spawning out. And the thing is on this one, if you push the right direction of your base, if you lock down Cantina and also lock down the alley, if you're Thieves, you spawn in the middle of bloody nowhere. You can see immediately look Draza up there, all the way back towards the courtyard, over towards the, the spawn side. Selyan finds those two, 20 seconds is all you need here for phase. And look at Sim immediately, through the middle of the map, putting the pressure on. Thieves here, you can't just run through this, you've got to run through the guns. A player's like Abizi, a player's like Sim. And at this stage, it's Thieves sprint forward, just hope for the best and Sim. It would have been an absurd three piece to end the game, but it pretty much did. Selyan, Locking the time down. Just good hard point play at the end from the side of Atlanta phase. And map number one will be a massive, massive dagger to Thieves. Who just couldn't convert some of their good work, to be honest with you. It was a strange one. It felt like rotations work in their favor. It felt like a lot of the breaks were going in their favor. But considering you look at the kills and you look at how much they got out slain, an 11 point game is still going to stink. Look, when you got Selium dropping a 1.8, we, we haven't even really touched on this as well. Three cruise missiles from Milan of Faith. Even when they were losing the rotation, their players were finding streaks left, right, and center. And they used those in critical moments. They waited. They played around the artillery they had found the entire time. And for LA Thieves, considering the disparity in the slaying, they could be upset. They ended up losing it. Yeah, that will be a, a, a stinger, to be honest with you, especially with how this map's going to like, lay out the series this time around. We've got Embassy Search and Destroy now coming up. Thieves and Thieves actually are both undefeated on this map. But the 2 0 for Thieves doesn't really count for much when you're going up against Phase. It's going to be a very difficult one. But that was a map I, I expected to go towards the side of Thieves. They don't manage to close that one out. And all of a sudden, you're staring down the barrel. Even if you can find one more of the hard points here, you, you at least see a map number five here against Phase. Yeah, and that's kind of the crazy thing. Like we spoke earlier about this, right? We said LA Thieves, we favor them in the hard points. Obviously, you can't look past phase in the SMD. You just can't. Their statistics are ridiculous. They're setting streaks. They're setting records. And even when we spoke to Thieves earlier, we spoke to a little bit of their camp. We kind of caught them through and they said, hey, like, what do you do against them in this kind of match? Like, how do you deal with it? They go, well, we'll just challenge them. Yeah, well, you have to. You have to. I, I, at some stage, you say to yourself, okay, well, look, these guys have got perfect records. And as you mentioned, we were talking to Shane about it. They're sitting at 7-0, but when was the last time they played? Is that still there? Have they worked on it? Because they're so good, nobody's challenging it. Is the competition level for Embassy Search and Destroy still going to be there for the side of Atlanta phase? The numbers do indeed speak for themselves. A 12 game win streak on Search and Destroy is, I believe, a CDL record. They are pretty much the best SD team that has existed in the CDL era. And now, if you're a Thieves, you're heading into a map two that phase have not lost. You are 1 0 down in this series. Loser's bracket is starting to creep up on you just a little bit already. Hey, they did pretty well down there last time. I, I don't know, you may well be heading there though if you can't show up yet for the rest of the series. Search and Destroy coming up. But as said, it's Embassy. Atlanta Faze have been lights out on this map from the word go. Haven't seen it in quite some time though, Bryce. And that made it the difficulty when we were breaking this one down. We said that's why it was so incredible when Thieves lost that first hard point. Because everything is telling you s and is phases. s and is phases. The Thieves, though, they'll be looking to break this blessing. They'll be looking to get rid of the mythical streak that Atlanta Phase are on. Let's see what they can do. Well, that was four hard points in a row up until that map where Thieves went up against the side of Atlanta Phase. 
They lose that one, and while FaZe is searching to destroy Streak, if it wants to come to an end here, that would be good for the sign of Thieves, but busy with the first blood. Grenades up towards P3, shutting down that power play. Keep an eye on Envoy, though. He's the one who could potentially do something here. He doesn't see him, but he's not going to see him, so he's going to get traded immediately. He didn't check his left hand oh. side. You don't check your corners. Captain Price, he says exactly what you need to do. Kenny now left in a one versus three. Flash, leave him. <laughs> leave him. Let, let the BT get over there and find the last kill, but I think they are going to square up here. It's a fight. Slash has a better position. Take all the time in the world. And Atlanta phase open up proceedings with first blood himself for BZ. And Envoy, he makes the call there to make that push, which is always a good one. But no information as to whether a player has pushed over or pushed out from up top PD. Doesn't check it. That's a 50 50. I mean, in that sort of situation, you're pre aim and thinking, okay, somebody could be coming across this cross at any stage here. So that's why he doesn't check his left, gets punished for it. Well, I want to say realistically, everything Abizi did there worked out beautifully. Not only was he patient when the door was opened, he ticked that one into his mind. He said, hey, I know a player's going to be in there. As soon as his teammate got traded, he turned, killed Envoy, turned straight back to Charles Raza. He knew that player was going to be there. The patience pays off. Three in the first round, Atlanta phase up. But already an aggressive defense here coming in from Atlanta. Tiny Terra's lingering around the toilets at this moment. Time of easy with the stun check will just continue to survive. But the problem is here for Kenny. Yeah, you spot one. Did you know Simps there as well? What you do now is this bomb's gone down towards the B side. If you're thieves, you just have to hold tight. Kenny doing a great job holding him up here. Octane They're about to him. with the sniper banging as well. He's got Kenny blocking for him, but he has to stay alive for it as well. Kenny, you're trying to find them. The BZ will get it. Sally will get the second one. First blood again for a BZ. And then they feed to scrambling. The only thing on their side is the clock. 20 seconds left to go. One player down. But that is a clearance. That is a retake. And a BZ is now on five. Just every time you watch it, you're like, oh, I wonder if a BZ will have a bad surge and destroy again. Well, just, uh, I mean, I must be stupid for even considering it. It's a ridiculous every single time. The stats that this man can put up. Two first bloods to his name already. The first blood, the s and king of the CDL is 5-0 and oh to kick off the game here against the LA Thieves, who look like they're reeling right now. Octane towards the back there with the sniper. That's the kind of situation, if you can find one, yeah, okay, that's fine. But you're going to get pushed immediately. As soon as this three of them in PD, Faze like, right, well, Octane towards the back, fly at him. Just fly at him. A lot of pressure coming through. Kenny tried to hold them off as long as he could, but this round has started. Late Thieves looking to take control, but it's first blood for Atlanta Faze again. You can see Thieves trying to get back in position for it. Trade going down, back and center. And more kills, and it's now only going to be Kenny left alive in a one versus three. Is there a hope? Is there a redemption? Is there a miracle on this map? And he finds the first. Well, there's one side cleared. But good luck at this gonna fight. Oh, okay, there's one. 1v1. One one. He doesn't know where Slash Did he not shoot him? Did he shoot him? Did he shoot him? He might know. He Kenny, might know. Kenny for the recall. Oh. And no, Cinderella, you will not go to the ball. There is no glass slipper here on this SD. Atlanta phase. Hold it down, prevent the clutch. Something that Thieves really wanted. It's maybe a bullet more for the side of Kenny to find that round. And that is the first even creak we've seen from Atlanta Faze in this one so far. Potential 1v3 was on the cards. They'll switch their minds back on now. They will still be happy to be up 3 to 0. What's going on on their defensive side? A lot of grenades typically do head over towards that cross, and they're coming from the mid code here. The start sent over. Is anybody here from the side of Thieves to answer back to this? As Abizi starts to get aggressive, as has Drazi. He'll call them going up the ladder. Celia will deal with him. Here oh. comes Abizi. It's now a 2v4 for Thieves. Kenny finally gets one back. A little bit of lifeblood. Simp hunting as well. And this is patient. This is calm. Thieves want another pick before they do anything. Atlanta Faze are setting up. And they'll be hearing this, though, if you're the side of Thieves, or will you? Yeah, you will. Kenny goes up the shell. Kenny will just be eviscerated immediately. And now Octane, left in a one versus three. It is just quite simply masterful so far. From the side of Atlanta Faze, literally nothing that Thieves can do against this four to zero. This is arguably a bit boring. Faze just looking so good right now.
And we said before, we know why this came in. We know the Chow was going to be made. Hope that they haven't improved. Hope they haven't got better, but they're still every bit as good on this map. They are a force to be reckoned with. But realistically, how do you veto against a team that just refuses to lose S&D? It almost feels though like Steve's are playing a little bit scared. Well, right, rightfully so, but they're, they're not challenging anything at those 50-50 points. So you think of that mid-cut that you get up towards the toilet side. As soon as FaZe are pushing that, they're kind of just giving it up at all stages. Thieves are, are not putting themselves in a position to do something about what FaZe are doing. Now Thieves are set up up towards the B side. It's an easy push once again. Yeah, okay, they've got eyes this time. Draza gets aggressive, finds the kill first, but for Thieves. Exactly what they needed. For Atlanta FaZe, the map control is not there. All Thieves have to do is play this carefully, get the trade right, and you get back into it, and Draza goes flying out and slash, almost gets the second gun everywhere. Sally will take him down, back to a two versus three. LA Thief still hold the advantage. Difficult spot. Simp and Selium. But if you're Envoy here, you just need to hold this cross. Nothing too crazy. Selium out the top window. You'll see one. Oh, did he see him? I'm not too sure. It's Simp. We'll find a kill to Envoy 2v2. And now it's all evened up. The only thing for Thieves is time. Can they find it? And oh my goodness, Simp finds another Octane left alone for the clutch. What can he do? Where can he go? Oh, the call has come through from Sip. He's already seen it. He's flying at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thieves, full advantage that time. But it doesn't matter. Sip says, all right, I'll take care of this one, lads. You can relax. 5-0 and oh now to phase. The Tiny Terrors really living up to their name. S&D has become a no-go game mode for every other team in the CDL. Well, the question was, is somebody going to child him on Embassy as Nameless was asking for? Well, here's the child, and, uh, well, I don't think we see it for quite some time. Simp now on a 5-3, the grenade's going over towards the cross. BZ will be blooded this time, though, it's Draza with another one for the side of Thieves. we will take the full sail against Atlanta Fears when Embassy says to destroy to tie this series up. Still moving, cruise control in hand, actually going, oh! oh! That's not fair! Octane was ready, but he wasn't ready! And now Draza left alive. There are streaks on the map. He does not have the bomb. He does not have the time. He does not have the teammates. And down he goes. The streak continues. And Chatter from Embassy, and you shall feel the wrath. We've just seen a map become an auto veto for the rest of the tournament. You don't tell them on Embassy. You don't do it. We'll never see it again. <laughs> we'll never ever see it again. Every single round in the CDL went went that down. That one's not coming through against them anymore. Can you veto S and D full stop? I don't think you can. Atlanta Bay is just looking like mythical beasts on the map when it comes to this game mode. The stat line tells the story. It's a donut for Octane, which you'll hate to see. But honestly, when it comes down to it, <laughs> when you're going up against Faze, it's plausible that that might happen to some of the best players in the world. Two more for Abizi on the first blood counter, which is just running off the scale. We're running out of numbers and objectives to describe his search and destroy prowess. That is now a very dangerous scoreline for the side of the Thieves. Not one without something they can possibly get back into this one. But the problem for them is, if they want to win this game, they will have to end the SD streak. Yeah, they really will. And let's face it, realistically, Thieves only got nine kills in six rounds. Not fun. Not fun for anybody. But hey, what happens for the rest of this one? The Thieves make this comeback. We'll have to find out at map number three. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We are live here at the Esports Stadium, Arlington. And it's been a great major so far. Maybe not for Thieves in that last map, but other than that, fantastic. Yeah, yeah I don't think we'll really want to see that one again. If you're on the side of Thieves, I mean, we, we, as we mentioned, we did have a chat with Shane backstage over the process of where you went with on the videos. We saw, say, okay, yeah, maybe they haven't played in a little while. Okay, so we see if we can do something. But our typical uh, Embassy Search and Destroy has not been that great. And well, we got a perfect example of that there. Phase now two to the good, but still, reverse sweep could be on the cards. It could be, and it'll probably come down to the big guns on both sides. Slasher and Octane will be facing off this time, and I know Octane dropped a donut in the S&D, but typically when we see him do that, he comes back roaring into the next map. And Control is a map that we can definitely see go towards the side of Thieves, both these two teams well-versed in this mode, as you would expect. And they've already played each other on Hotel twice this season. We're sitting at one apiece after those two games still. But LAT overall 11 to 5 record, Atlanta 9 to 6. Thieves will still fancy this. Control coming up, map number 4 is a winnable one for them as well. It's still a question mark over that map number 5, but will we see? And if a BZ can keep this up, it is a worrisome trend for the side of the LA Thieves. 1.19 and the half point is not bad, but search and destroy is where his bread is indeed buttered in. Well, I mean, that was just so tough for Thieves to try and deal with it. But Control is a different game mode, we're into a different map. How is this one going to go? Have Thieves got the reverse sweep in them, or do FaZe just throw them to the Wolves yet? Yeah. Here we go. Redemption, glory, all on the line. First few kills, though, will go the way of FaZe. The Control is a long old map, and it will not be decided in that opening break. That's a three-man stack for FaZe over towards the B side. Oh, and Octane Nelly reads it. Does read it, a BZ dunk. Now with a headshot multiplier, you'll take that one. Now Thieves will probably default back themselves over towards A. Slasher, ready and wait. And they've actually got a few here. Gonna have to stop that clock. Get on the A, Thieves will do exactly Actually, that. Raza finds a kill as well. And with those kills coming down, Thieves are probably gonna push towards B now. Give up A, this is huge for them. Yeah, a little bit of threat over towards the B side. They know where Thieves are gonna be spawning. They've got bedroom control there as well. This is potential for Thieves. They've locked them in. Only Sims got a kill coming out of this one. The first tick is now going through. It's a stack for Thieves. They have broken the back of Atlanta phase, and they are ready. That second tick is gonna go in. It's a big challenge. Slash looking for it. Sim finds one onto Octane, and Sim finds all three, because of course he does. A four streak for Sim stops the B push. And that's still good from Thieves, though. If you would offer them that opportunity, you say you only get two ticks, they snap your hand off. That's not a bad push whatsoever from the side of Thieves. Unfortunately, it's a slash a child in the middle, like kind of somewhat distracted. They can't do much from there, but A progress now well underway. Faze having a look at this one though. BC will find one in the draws there. The push starting to come in here from Faze from multiple different oh. angles, simpler than another two. There may well be four ticks over towards the side of Thieves, but time is gonna slow down yet. 35 seconds for Thieves to try and find a tick. Been a lot of talk this season about a BZ, about Selian running up the numbers, but Simp ready to go again. A seven streak for him. He is everywhere on this map. He's gonna get caught, almost turns and burns. They've got Not B. quite. Got that B is going to be captured. It's good for Thieves. It doesn't look great when a player's on 7th Street, but it doesn't matter. The ticks are what matters, and LA Thieves only need one. And that's a massive overstep from the side of FaZe there. They push towards Kitchen, they know they're going to spawn B-side. They don't win their gunfights. It's an overzealous push, push from the side of Melanda FaZe. I'll get my words out eventually, but now they have it to lock down. It is doable. We've seen it done from either two of these teams before. Kitchen controlling out the side of FaZe, lives in their favor as well. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much confident for FaZe. But can they hold? Thieves are stacking every corner, looking for it as well, but Sim wins the gunfight. And that means Thieves have to wait a second again. Octane will find one on a busy. Raz will find the second slash. It has to make this kill to keep the numbers there. And he makes it. They can now pinch back onto it. Draz already found Selium. Slash is just staying alive. The tick's already gonna go in. He has to chow. He has to jump out. He gets the contest. Trying to fire in every single direction. Amazing. And the BZ arrives like a hero made out of gold and stops Thieves. 11 v 7 in terms of the lives. Massive from Slasher. Takes his time, jumps on when he can, and gives the BZ the time to put himself into a position now. It looks like it may well be one dimensional push for the side of Thieves. 30 seconds to go, they gotta move, they gotta move quick. On oh boy, flying in here, looking for a BZ, but it's too good from FaZe. Four players left, 23 seconds, the Thieves want this. They could taste victory on this map, the tiniest of margins, but Slasher and a BZ, have they just done enough? Oh, that was the child he needed. He knew Selium was there, but sometimes it doesn't matter. 3v3 on the site. 
Oh, they've got the only one to be Envoy last. He finds the first. Looks for the second. It's no good. Five ticks for Thieves. But they will be re-watching what Slasher and Abizi just did. They pulled the win out of the fire. And if that doesn't make the highlight reel, production will be very upset. And the thing is there, this is why we try not to talk about KD too much. Slasher dropping at three and five in that round with 500 damage. It's not quite the lowest in the lobby right now, but it's not a big scoreline. It's not about the amount of kills that you make, though. The fact that he finds one towards Kitchen is what ultimately wins them the round. Finds the kill towards Kitchen, pushes in, gives a BC and code time. Everything was because Slasher defended well. Now it's Steve's turn. So there is a benefit here. If Thieves can hold their defense, they've got five ticks. That's all they've got to do. Keep playing these rounds, keep playing these ticks. At the moment, Atlanta Faze is setting up to try and get their first ones in, but they are not winning the gunfights they want. They will eventually get into restaurant, but still pressure coming from LA. What is going on in this crowd? What is that noise? I'm losing my mind. Faze are inside the point. It takes now, rattling through. Careful not to give over too much of the map, though. You can see already, Selium starting to overextend over towards that B side, but these want it back. Gotta be careful, gotta be careful. Simp finds the kills as well now, and they're looking for it. Envoy with a huge kill on the Selium. It. Yeah. it may have looked like one kill on the mini map, but doing that saved them from any sort of B pressure. The easy one is done. A secured. Can they get to B? Big from Octane there to find two kills to shut down any potential flank. And you can actually see Slash has made another huge play there. He holds down bedroom side, fully expecting Thieves' players to find the push through there to get control. And now all of a sudden, if you're Thieves, you do not have a lot of purchase over towards this bedroom side. Atlanta Fizz are slowly closing that vice over towards the B side. Here come the shots, here come the pushes. Selium with one to the back, boy and Drazo though, answer well. They're waiting for them. Selium trying to stay alive. Obviously, snaking is hard out, but it isn't going to be enough. A reset is in order. LAC's will reset the battle line. They will draw their line in the sand. Octane going to deflect all of that around the corner at the moment. Not able to get the third. Simp will break the back. But it's still a long way. The spawn is in kitchen for phase. It slows them down. And Thieves keep getting caught out when they're pushing through bedroom. They're trying to push a little bit further just to push them back towards kitchen, find some kills as the, the side of Bayers come off the spawn. And they've been caught a couple of times. Cellian Bottom Light is going to now back down after he finds another one at the Kenny. So they're just trying to clear bedroom. Thieves are offering those opportunities over towards the side of Bayers. Now they're dug in the trenches. The sights are up. Sasha, big shots into Draza. Opportunity here for the side of Fizz. Look at Envoy though inside the bedroom. He's the player to try and save Thieves here if this goes wrong. He's already got one. He's got one onto Abizi as well. Simp fighting from the back here. They know exactly where Envoy is going to be. As he flies out, Simp finds it. But Kenny will get the trade coming through. Selium gets another. At this time, they have found their way onto it. They're already fighting through mid as well. Octane versus Slash with a gunfight coming through. Second tick is now slowly getting there. They have the bodies. Atlanta Faze have made the moves. Two ticks are in. The third's about to follow. This could be a 2 to 0 lead, but Kenny will find the push. Envoy is there. He needs to find more. They need more. Give yeah, the side of Thieves draws it. We'll get one. One, one, and it's going to be a busy. Fierce 2 to the good in the series. 2 to the good in the control. By the hair on their chinny chin chin. They get it done, but my goodness. Thieves were in control the whole round until they went. And that is unbelievable. Envoy was in the position, but they knew. They were gunning, they were not missing. Simp is 19 and 12, by the way, 15 non-traded kills. And for Thieves, a little bit of panic and despair will now start to set in. No rounds on the s &D. So far, no rounds on the control. It's beginning to look like a potential whitewash, especially in these last two maps. But Thieves, but all the fact that they're two to zero down it, a couple of gunfights here and there might look a little bit different in you go on to win the rounds. You go on to win both. Now the push over towards the A site. Thieves didn't get this luxury of extending this time as early as they would have liked. The BZ will find one on the flank and FaZe will prostrate themselves to try and find a retake. Yep. Here we go. It's simple. Get in the way, hold it down. At the moment, LA Thieves won't overextend this. Find a player going through, but they're not going to get it at the moment. Sim just comes flying in. He's challenging everybody he wants to. Eventually, will be taken down. LA Thieves did spread out around, Dave, but they're not even getting it. 
Salium will find two as well. This will slow down Thieves just a little bit more. Now they smell blood in the water. Here they come. Abizu will find one. He's going to find a second here on the Draza as well. Salium towards the back. Can they do anything to stop them? It's three from Abizu. In and out. Not captured by the side of Thieves. And phasing the ascendancy at the moment here, Brycey. A minute to go for Thieves to try and find something. And Thieves weren't expecting it. Most teams will give that up at that point. They will say no more going to A. Set up, get ready for B. A B, he doesn't care. And it looks like they're going to go for it again. Slash is going to find the first one. It will eventually be traded out. More players here from Atlanta Face. The BZ again. He finds the second, not the third. Kenny holds them on. But they get A. But they are down in live by seven. One minute 42 on the clock to not be humiliated by FaZe at the Major. Slash are holding down the back end. Roy will find it. We know when it comes down to control, it takes one good break. And then we can maybe find Thieves back into this series. But right now, they have nine lives remaining. Octane towards the back will find two important kills. Abizi, though, because of these lives remaining on the side of FaZe, because of their confidence, he is absolutely delusional as he flies around the map. It's a two spree for him, Abizi is frying, Fizz holding on as Octane gets taken down towards the back as well. Thieves have got to do this the hard way. They have six lives remaining and they must spend them wisely. Five lives remaining. LA Thieves are shocked. They have not expected to be destroyed off of this map at every turn. Can LA Thieves find some magic? Is there a fairy tale in the writing for them? They have to find a way forward. They have no lives left. And here we go. Three lives. That's two lives. That's one life. It's all over, surely. Envoy, the last one alive. And he's trying, he's hoping, he's praying, he's gone. And Atlanta phase, the major two champions have made a statement. Do not come out of today. We are built different. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, Biz just beat the hell out of them. Beat the absolute hell out of them. Scoreboard, baby, scoreboard. I'm gonna throw that one up on stream, Charlie, because that is outrageous. 28 and 17, 26 and 17. I mean, Sims just, like, they're talking to each other like, well, I mean, look, what, what else do we do in that situation? They have absolutely bodied them. Three to zero. Yeah, okay, map number one was super close. Comes down to the wire. Maps two and three, the absolute opposite of that. Slash is just chilling. A busy 27 and 16, Sim 28 and 17. The tiny terrors take over map number three. That was a statement performance from FaZe to come out at the major. And I'm, I'm sorry, I thought it would be closer. I thought it would be a lot closer too. I, was I mean, the half boy set us up wonderfully. 252, 239. It teased us. We're having a good time. It really did tease us. A, a, a very, very close map number one. Other than that, nothing to write home about. I, I mean, Thieves turned up onto the stage and didn't really do much else. I mean, for all that we can talk about Thieves and maybe not performing to their best level, FaZe in that situation, the search and destroy, yeah, okay, you expect a victory, but that was as one-sided as you could possibly hope for, and they do not slow down heading into that control. That, as I just said, is a, feels like a statement performance. Yeah. They haven't just 3 0 anybody. That was thieves they just 3 0 These two met in the grand final last time. They just blew them away. They really did. And, and here's the kind of thing we spoke about in the control, right? You could see the confidence in the players when they retook A. They were challenging everything, but enough from us. The game is over, so let's throw it to the stage with Lando and Slasher. Thank you so much, Bryce. Yes, indeed, Slasher from Atlanta phase joining me after a very, very interesting 3-0. to zero. Austin, I gotta say, man, we were hyping this up, right? It's the fourth matchup, but you know, we've seen you guys constantly in grand finals. You guys came out and made that look easy. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, we've been saying it online the whole time. Online respawns are different. No sound EQ. We're a way different team, and we just showed it right there. Also, people seem to forget who built that camp. I know how they play. I taught those kids how to play Call of Duty. So don't forget that. All right? Like, let's get that straight. I got to say, one thing that we were very confused about, at least in the green room, 
was to see the Embassy Search Destroy in the map set. Were you guys like at all surprised that they decided to play you on a map like that? No, I knew they were going to play us on that map. Uh, they were running out of ideas. We beat them in every S&D possible, so they were just trying to throw a curveball out there because we haven't played Embassy in a while, and they got 6 0 in two minutes, so. Ooh, some wise words, some big words coming in from Slasher. I got to say, man, right, we, we know it, right? You guys are on the Search Destroy win streak. You're the one who built that in the first place, right, with the LA Gorillas. What is, it, what is the recipe for success when it comes down to consistent and constant Search Destroy success? I mean, I think it comes down to we have a good coaching staff. We have great S&D players. Um, I feel like I've always had a really good mind for the game mode. I've made everybody, pretty much every team I've ever been on good at that mode. And then I have a BZ simp and sell. So it just makes it easy on me to call some strats and they go out there and do their thing. Absolutely, man. It's like, BZ, I need you to go get a first blood. Just go do it. And he'll absolutely do it every time. I want to say it. We already talked about it. You know, a bit of a rivalry game. Your history, for, you know, with the LA Thieves, your guys' constant matchups and finals. After a win like that, does it feel like a rivalry still? Uh, I mean, there's definitely some rivalry there. I always want to play against those guys. I've said it before. Um, I love matching up against them. And, yeah, but we just wiped the floor with them. So, I don't know. they got to come back to the drawing board, get a little better, and then maybe put up a better fight next time. Any words for the FaZe fans out there before we let you go? Uh, yeah, we appreciate your guys' support um, always. You know, yeah. appreciate you guys. Thank you. FaZe fans in full force. That's going to do it for myself and Slasher here on the main stage desk. Take it away, guys. Man, I think the only thing I can say at this point is, wow. You know, one of the matchups I thought would go the distance for sure, Map 5, was an absolute beatdown chance. I want to give you respect, hand it to you to say your words, baby, because you predicted face. You and, went with them. Yeah, such a tough call to make, picking the reigning <laughs> champs to, to win the thing. Look, as far as I'm concerned, we just learned one thing in this series. Like, the entire league has just been bashing their head into the wall trying to beat FaZe at a CeeLo. Finally, someone was like, all right, let's try out Embassy. Let's just give it a shot, see how it goes. Yeah. We got our answer. That literally might be the last time that like Atlanta FaZe has to play that map all year. Because again, every single time, it is a slaughter. Yeah. We're never going to see it again. <laughs> We're never going to see it I mean, when it again. comes to search, one map <laughs> is just absolutely chalked in yeah. the series against Atlanta FaZe. <laughs> and honestly, dude, there's a lesson in every defeat. And I picked LA Thieves coming into this series. My lesson is I will never against Atlanta phase again. That no. was master class. You, you can't. And, and at this point, they look like, you know, maybe one of our front runners to take the entire event, honestly, with the yeah. performance maybe, that they just maybe. had. I mean, seriously, I think <laughs> maybe, that's yeah. no surprise, right? Going back to back will be special. Nameless, I want to ask you though, as we go to our box score, I want to look at the overall score line and what's really the only interesting map that we saw, right? Was 250 to 239. There was a point where LA Thieves, I thought, were taking map one, but yeah, they I slipped mean, through their fingertips. I mean, we saw, right? It was on that final rotation. Selim just gets up in behind them. Uh, the hard points are just going to be murky with these two squads. We've seen Mercado a few times. Last time LA Thieves in the online portion of qualifying stage, they were able to take it 250 to 180. This time around, Atlanta Face are just on point. Selim, the guy was unkillable throughout that map. Yep. Unkillable. Indeed, it's something we expect from Sally. I mean, his stats were incredible, too. Maybe that Mercado map, if it goes to LA Thieves, just real quickly, I don't know, Chance, do you think that changes the series at, at all? It goes to game four. I, well, okay, <laughs> go to. I mean, I think the thing for Atlanta Faze, they've been so good at searching and destroy that if you lose a single respawn, like, yeah. you're cooked. That's GG, yeah. it's over. And even in control, they got 3 0 So, no, the series, even if map one goes a different way, ends in the same result. All right, well, let's start recapping today. We had four great series. Let's go back to series number one. It was Toronto Ultra versus New York. Subliners. This was a great one, in my opinion. It went to map four. Toronto Ultra, though, Ali ended up taking it all. I mean, it was really just the edge and the fact that Scrappy, I feel like, really put his foot down here in the first series. It's kind of historically that Toronto Ultra, at least his squad, you know, at our majors, they've had some really slow starts, you know. They would have a great qualifier and come into the major, and then we wouldn't see any of the greatness that we saw previously. And I think they're trying to change that tune a little bit here. This is a big win against New York Subliners that, although fell a bit short during major three quarters, Qualifiers are still major one champions, are still a very viable squad. They win it in a 3 1 fashion, and Kleenex still looks as consistent as I thought he would after Major 3. And of course, Nameless, you talk about Ultra winning on Hydro. That was very massive, uh, you know, clearly, right? That's a big map for them to take. Yeah, I mean, Scrappy made a huge play. He did there at the very end. You know, he's sitting bottom dome, finds a couple of kills. Uh, it looked like New York were clawing their way back into it. But, you know, throughout the series, we talked about the post game. Uh, New York just gave them way too many opportunities, too many mistakes were made uh, on their side today, especially in that search and destroy fortress. I thought that was a big opportunity for the New York subliners. We saw some over chows, Kismet threw open, saw Hydra running out of bottom mark. So just not enough today versus Toronto Ultra. I mean, even on that map one, they got outslayed by like 15 kills and still kept it within five points, right? So Ultra looked pretty sound.
Moving on to our second series today, Seattle Surge versus LAG. One that went the distance and chance. At a certain point, I thought LAG might make the big upset. There was always hope. I mean, you know, it's fearful for Seattle when they go to a game five just because, like, they're having search and destroy it. Like, they're great now. They've been so much better, but it's still, like, that seed of doubt is always going to exist. Yeah. But they took care of business. I know, like, it's the outbagger sort of effect of, like, you just drew offense for the final round. Yeah. It's going to be like that sometimes. I just think that game four was, like, a statement game. And I'm yeah. like, all right, I know Exceed was peacing with the sniper, but we're just going to put him in the dirt on that map for and carry in that momentum. So Seattle, they've been the better team. They just came out and showed it. That's right. They end up, in fact, the victors. They move forward, but it was very good performance from LAG. The composure from both were incredible. And Pred, Pred went absolutely nutty, buddy. He was insane. Loved watching him get the three-piece on the, uh, the map number five. Uh, in fact, going 11 and five as a whole. Pred, someone to absolutely fear on the battlefield, which should be no surprise to I think anybody who watches. Series Series number three, though, it was uh, well, it was another three. -0. Optic Texas versus Boston Breach. Nameless, I know you were very disappointed in the performance of Optic. Honestly, though, I think you go back and you look at the series score. I mean, it was close, 252-12, 6-5, 3-2. but a close 3-0. I mean, it, it, it was. When you look at those last two games, like, I don't know, man. It just felt like Boston Breach was sort of in the driver's seat, even when, you know, Optic were having a little rally in the search and destroy. As soon as Beans won that 1v1, I was like, ah, oh, this is this is looking grim for them. I feel like for Optic, man, just a lot of mistakes once again. They really do need a coach. It has not been the same. I mean, e even for the result, I think by the time we got to the map three, it just seemed predictable. Of like, yeah. they're going to complain about the map, and they're going to yeah. have zero success on offense, even though that it's the map that Optic chose. Like, I I'm not a fan. Like, obviously, it's like 80-20 for defensive teams, but Optic, well, at the bottom of the league when it comes to actually playing the objective on the map. They've never had success. They had an opportunity, though. And they scored up again. Yeah. Well, I mean, but, hey, you know, case in point, though, Beans, though, right? The rookie coming out and making some magic happen. He played incredibly well. Ali, we take an overarching look of our round one matches done. This is what at least uh, winner's round two is going to be looking like. But uh, Elim round one's looking pretty stacked. There's there's two polls I get from that elimination round one. That's going to be the LAG Vegas Legion. Yeah, I feel like that's an opportunity for Vegas to kind of get their get back because they were in that top eight. They were looking at winners and LAG plays spoiler there. So that'll be a banger of a match. And then Optic Texas versus London Royal Ravens. I think that might be one of the tougher pulls you could have gotten going into the elimination bracket simply because of the way London Royal Ravens look to the tail end of Major 3. Yeah, I'm not saying play. they're favored, but I'm saying that if there's any upset potential, it's actually in that match. I agree with that. London Royal Ravens have an <laughs> Very strong finish. Tomorrow's schedule start off LAG versus Vegas Legion. That's going to be an elimination round. Los Angeles Thieves against Minnesota Rocker. Optic Texas versus London Royal Ravens. Ali just broke that one down in the course to finish off. Uh, or excuse me, New York Subliners versus Florida Mutineers. And then our elimination round two. So we will be seeing some teams runs end, unfortunately. But that's just the way it goes, Nameless, when it comes to these majors. Yeah, and, you know, thinking about tomorrow, it's going to be insane, man. A lot of these teams, they really need points. You'll That's get right. points, you're not making it into champs. And, you know, these teams saw the team they're going up against 3 0 today. So it could get interesting tomorrow That's in front right. of the green wall. Yeah, a lot of 3 0s. Allie, it was a wonderful day, though. Final thoughts before we get out of it here. It was a wonderful day, and I can't wait to get to tomorrow. Five matches, so buckle in. It's going to be a long day. Chance, what about you? A big day. Looking forward to it. And I know LA Thieves being in losers round one again is a <laughs> terrifying sight for yeah. everybody that's in the pit. Well, it looks like our major number three has concluded for day number one, but we still have three more days to get through. It's going to be a lot of fun. Join us tomorrow starting 1.30 Eastern. We'd love to have you again. Story. I was born for the glory, through the heat and the rain, can't deny and ignore me, I'm bred for commitment, signed up for a mission, yeah it comes with the price, it's all in the description, my time has arrived, I can't hesitate, nothing is in my way, knocking down barricades.